Yeah. What is it, Steve? You, you were playing my interview. Oh, oh, I see. oh, you came in for uh, kudos. I see. Okay, very good. All right. Well, here he is. Uh, I didn't realize. I want my praise. <laughs> you want what? I want my praise. You want your praise. Okay. My praise, my good words. <laughs> okay. So Steve Grillo went over to interview Jonathan Harris, who is uh, Dr. Smith. All right. What was Dr. Smith doing in town? He was in. Uh, he was at Television City. It was just promoting, I guess. He was yeah. promoting what? That, that it's that new uh, restaurant that's across the street from Radio City. Lost in Space Restaurant. No, it's called Television City. Oh, I guess I they have all old TV shows playing. Probably gave them a couple hundred bucks on show up. Oh boy! Right. <laughs> the, the, the people that showed up were so scary. You could tell they haven't seen like the light of day. And Lost like, in Space yeah. fans. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I felt whoa. bad for him because they just whoa. 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 No, but I've been freelancing with some people. I've been freelancing. I've been um, freelancing. freelancing. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> do you have any ta do you take any acting lessons? Um, no. I I'm was speaking actual. to a friend of mine who is in the business and I was telling him about you, you know. And I said, they said, well, does he take any acting lessons or anything? Is he trying, you know, if he, is he really serious about this? And I said, you know what? No. Well, he's not my strong. Yeah, I don't think he is. And like, <laughs> he, like everything he does, he does half ass. Yeah. He's really not into it. He wanted if it can come easy to you. Sure. It's like, why wouldn't you take some lessons? I mean, I can't afford them. Oh, that's not true. What do you mean that's not true? I don't believe it. Those classes are... How did you afford college? Um, I paid it on a, a like a payment plan. Yeah, so there you go. They don't these those acting schools don't have payment plans. Sure they do. How do you know they don't? Because I've known people that's gone. What? I've known oh, people that's no gone. I've known people that have known people that's gone, gone to the classes and it's usually I know people that's gone up front. Yes. And he's big as well as me. Scott the engineer is more motivated than you. <laughs> and he's he's a There's turtle. not a cheap acting class anywhere. No. Nobody. Not this city. I mean, it's just like, you know, hey, I'm, hey, I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> so my friend said to me, well, does he go to an acting class? Does he do anything? I said, no. He goes, mm, well. So it's sort of like a hobby. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. How old are you now? Just turned 25. Yeah, 25. No career yet. <laughs> 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 Whoa. Whoa, 25. Whoa. John, even you took some acting lessons, yeah. didn't you? Well, yeah, I went to a private instructor, but right. HB is like, it's like so cheap. It's like, yeah. it's like 100 bucks for, you know, you know, for a whole semester. Yeah, he, he don't want to go. Yeah. yeah, right, Rob, you remember? Yeah, I mean, I, this is what I'm talking about. He he didn't research. He's out every night researching, but not, not uh, oh, yeah, acting. Yeah, researching but. parties. He wants to party with actors. He I can't really be one. I can't avoid it. He figures if you party with actors, you must be able to act. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging out with a lot of actors, and they don't seem any different than I am. I can't afford Jägermeister and acting lessons. <laughs> so, one has to go. Right. So, I figured it's the acting. How can you network? Oh, I rub oh. up against them. Yes. <laughs> I feel Rubs their off. greatness. Well, you know they dropped out of college, right? Right. I know. Never even well, finished that. On. That was a joke. <laughs> but mm. I don't blame him. He's only got one semester to do when he graduates, and he drops out. I know why he dropped out. Because I think his final semester had to be had to like study a language, <laughs> and so he freaked out and said, "I, I, can't, I can't do, do it." That. Imagine you go through six years of college, you're one semester away from graduating, and you drop out. What does that tell you about yourself? What does that tell you about you, Steve? Loser. Right. Paint it all over you. <laughs> What's that like? It's horrible. I mean, you know you're... Most losers don't know they're losers. He's got the engineer don't know it. And fight it. Well, Stay I just try... You know, just, just, he went through six... He went through all those semesters. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just one semester he needs. Longest college career of anyone. What a waste of money. And then dropped it. Do you write on your resume, six years of college, but no degree? Um, Do you make it seem like you graduated on your resume? Just make it, yeah, yeah. Uh, pre-word it. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I, I sort of went to Hunter. Uh, <laughs> pre I pre-word it. Well, what I, do you I, mean you pre-word it? I just put Hunter College, Hunter. and that's pretty much it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Pre-word it, though? I, what does um, that mean? I'm up against the wall. I don't know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> like a true actor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they need. People who are up against the wall and won't know what to say. Just start bur burbling out anything. Wouldn't it be cool like on Letterman if some guy was sitting there, he was being interviewed, and he just said something stupid. And he, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm up against the wall. I'm up against the wall right hey, now. I'm up against the wall. Yeah. Aren't you glad you came in for your special credit for your interview? Sure thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting up there all perky. No, I just never get a guy who says, like, now I want to be an actor and doesn't well, embrace it. Like, a, 
I, I just kind of fell into it. You know what I'm saying? Where? But well, Grandma Sylvia is like, I, I never thought of acting. I always wanted to. <laughs> fell into it. I, I did. I just, you know, it was you like. thrown at the bowling pins, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was his job. See, that's what he means by falling into it. <laughs> he fell into it. He got a commercial finally, and they picked him up and threw him into a bunch of bowling pins. Because he tells me, I got my first commercial. My I was like, greatest role. Hey, maybe the guy's pretty good. Because, you know, it's not easy to get a commercial. Then yeah. I found out they needed a guy on rollerblades to be thrown into a bowling pin. Yeah, and uh, they didn't think anybody else would do it. No. He was the only no, guy they got. No, that's just a bit A lot of people came down on audition, and so they had to get thrown into bowling pins and <laughs> right at the wall. <laughs> Not everybody had this skill. You should see how come it's so easy to get people to do a snuff film? They want to be an actor so bad, they'll do anything. Yeah, anything to get in front of the camera. So what do I got to do? Get on my rollerblades and throw myself into those bowling pins? <laughs> no problem. What's, What's my, my motiv motivation? How about a paycheck, you jack out? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Today a bowling bin Tomorrow a sugar bowl <laughs> What is the subtext? <laughs> what is my true line? <laughs> what am I dinging? You can take an acting lessons right Fred? Yeah Yeah I mean two years I mean if you're interested in it Do it Yeah it How helps. much does it cost To take an acting lesson? I mean it's been so long Since I did it well, I had a, it was like by three months or ballpark me. I, mean, I, I, I had a private couple one. Bucks, couple hundred I had a private bucks. one for like fifty bucks a session. Right. You know, which is he could afford that. I know. Yeah. He never even investigated. Let me tell right. you. Take ten but lessons. I just invest five hundred dollars. Who are you asking? Who was I asking? I just know people who um, have done it, and they've always said they've had to pay three, four hundred dollars a semester. Yeah, which they I were can't probably afford. in school. No, they weren't. They took um three, four hundred dollars a semester. That's it. I thought you say three or four grand. <laughs> you, you could afford that. Well, you know. You really don't have any motivation to take any acting lessons, let's be honest. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to be bothered. I'm a natural. <laughs> <laughs> Very natural. It just would help you, man. I mean, if you're really going to try and make this your living. Well, it's, it's just, I don't know what I want to do. I've been like, you know losing sleep over this uh, it's, it's very uh it's very, of course it's very, it's i mean you're directionless yeah i mean sort of just like in limbo you're like almost homeless yeah He's pretty losing much losing sleep over nothing yeah yeah you have no career now you're an act now you're calling yourself an actor he's going for I, headshots don't ask yeah that he can afford yeah acting lessons he can't wouldn't you rather just you know how a, long i saved up for my headshots for how long about four months so you got them so yeah. get some acting yeah, lessons and acting lessons you could have saved up for but no <laughs> you're a slug <laughs> Here's some chick who wants to meet you. She must be unmotivated. Come on in, Gary. Say, Join the party. Wait. Wait, I'll get to the chick in a minute. It's just funny, Howard. Yeah. It, now, Steve, I mean, if you took the money that you spend on pot and put it to acting hey, class, uh, hey. you could have gone, you know, five oh, Thank you. Yeah, to to tell I you the research. truth, I, I don't know how much you think I smoke. But a lot. A lot. You're wrong. You always Whoops. have. I, I always have. You wonder why? Because it lasts me so long. I I, I spend about. <laughs> noise, noise. <laughs> no, 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 let me hear this. Let's turn that off for a second. Yeah. I I spend about maybe thirty dollars every three weeks. Thirty dollars. That's. So I don't you, believe that. That's the truth. But uh, I'll, I'll buy an eighth, and it'll last me almost three weeks. You got great pot. But John says there's this class that even uh, Gandhi was telling me there's this class that you pay a hundred bucks for like six months. Yeah, it's at HP. Yeah. That would be three I, months without pot. Not even. It would be only nine weeks. Yeah. yeah. So stop pot for nine weeks. <laughs> oh, thank you. And go to the class. I mean, I, I don't. It just seems to me you know gonna, I, I will now. You know what? I just never even. I think we we even had it. to find out this for him. Yeah, he's lazy. That's me. Uh, you don't show innovation. Even in getting and, my food, you don't innovate. And how long will he go to acting lessons before he can act? Uh, 25 years. <laughs> and then he won't graduate. Right. Right. <laughs> Almost. I won't finish. My professor says I'm doing good, but I have this study of language. He says I'm a natural. <laughs> So why am I here? <laughs> so why, this will at least give you a chance to get up in front of people and act. And see somebody else act, maybe. Yeah, and see how you do. And see how it's done. Practice auditioning, you know, get involved with the acting community. I don't know. It just yeah, seems like scary. Yeah, uh, but the, the thing is... Mm. Like someone I said to me, he said, oh, you want, because I talk about you sometimes. I think maybe I can help you. But so someone said to me, well, does he study? I go, study? Um, throw me in front of the camera. <laughs> Let's start. Ah. Yeah, you just want a job, but you uh, want to be John you know He wants to be a star, <laughs> right? Right away. Right. Once you go on the WB, they seem to take anybody. I would <laughs> <laughs> go right there. Seconds. 
the thing is, like, I never thought of acting. I always wouldn't wanted was more interested in the production side of yeah. what goes on. And so you're not even doing anything but about you that. Don't do anything but you know what? It's it's sort into the of production side. He wouldn't know how to produce anything. But I'm not even that. He knows so how to ring like a bell. PA and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He knows how to ring a bell. He <laughs> worked on my movie for uh, four months. Dude, I learned five so months, much. And he learned how to ring a bell. And he's the guy who yells. That's what does he yell out? Why you done this, Ed? You'd hear that voice. I learned. Why you done this, Ed? And I got to tell you something. I could have been a lot better in the movie, but it unnerved me every time I heard. Why you done the set? And I said, I got in the movies and I got that idiot yelling quiet on the set. Sounds deed. <laughs> I mean, it really bummed me out. <laughs> like, I'd walk off the set and see him standing there. You know what he learned? Yeah. Gay did what good. What critique about other sets he's been on. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, the buffet on our first movie, Private Boss, was much better than this buffet. Grab services table here on location is not as good I as got the one little in the studio. They don't even have trailers. <laughs> I thought Gorilla would, you know, tell me, hey, after your movie, I hooked up with some people and I'm, I'm working on another movie. I'm going to be doing some, you know, behind the scenes stuff. All right. Never happened. If he was interested in well, production. Well, that's where I kind of really wanted to... Yeah, what happened? What went wrong? Why didn't you talk well, to I, I, Gambling I, Dan what? certainly had. Gambling Dan's now in the movie business. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to be a PA. Yeah. What do you want to be? Well, production assistant on the movies means that you have to put in 600 days on the job okay. to get into the DGA. All right. Okay. And I just that don't... I, I don't want to years. invest three months of my life working six days a week... 14 hours a day getting $100 a day. I just, that's, it's not what well, I'm... What are you doing here? You're getting $0 well, well, a day, 24 hours a day. I, I, I know, but I just, I, I would PA in a movie, it's just, do I want to leave this to PA in a movie? I don't know. <laughs> uh, this. You're busy getting me breakfast. This is glamour. I know, but I, you know... <laughs> but I also get air dimes. Yeah, yeah, it's you a don't. lot better to go out and say you're on the Howard Stern show. Yeah, I get you. I'm Steve Grillo. <laughs> Uh, There's some chick who digs you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get him, man. I don't know what the game plan is, but I, listen. I'm, I'm just as to... confused as you are, believe me. <laughs> no, I, I'm clear. No, he means about himself. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think you're more confused. <laughs> Joni, you're on the air. Hello. Yes. Hi. Well, I've seen your entertainment show. Yes. And um, I thought Steve Carrillo was attractive. We like him. Well, thank yeah. you very much. You think he's an attractive man? Yes. And you would like to hook up with him? Yes, if possible. Hmm. This show is like Grillo's heroin. He's like yeah. addicted to it. Get off it. Can't, can't get off it. Back. It is. It's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> do I actually want to invest time in developing a career, or do I want to go here? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with Hello. her. Yeah, Angie. Yeah, hi. What's up? Uh, I'm I have a thought for a gorilla. He can try out, though. He has to try out. You have a part for him? Yeah. What, what do you do? It's a new play to begin soon, Weekend of Death. And we have an audition tonight at West 42nd Street, the Roth Theater, between 10th and 11th Avenue. Was it an off-Broadway thing? Yeah. So if he's, a he's already in some off-Broadway thing, Grandma Sylvia's funeral. And besides well, all that, uh, Gorilla doesn't want to spend a lot of time on your production. No. How long yeah. is the play? Uh, he doesn't really want to audition. <laughs> no, I would love to audition. If it's a five-minute play, I'll do it. Uh, he's he missing that because this is a good one, and I have a good part if he wants to try out. I absolutely would. It'll be 6 to 10 tonight, does last time for auditioning. Uh, well, oh, that's John, could you get that information for me? I, well, what it, he's already got secretary. No, I, just, I, I, I would... I you want to put her on hold, get her number or something? I'll call her back. Get, wait, wait. So where does he where does he have to show up tonight? Well, now everybody will be there. So what? Second Street, what better? Say again. We're putting it on in the Producers Club, but we're, we're going to have auditions in the uh, Raw Theater, West Forty Second Street. The Raw Theater. Right. Well, I'll go Raw over there Raw and get a Raw job. Raw I will. All right. Okay. Right, thank you. Bad. I have a part for him. All right. Okay. What's the part? Uh, he's supposed to be a surgeon, but uh, a surgeon he comes across as a r regular guy. Okay, well he can okay. do that. That's for me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know he'll be. You should audition here. Why don't you come here and let him let him audition for you? Yeah. Dr. Uh, Bull. Right on the air. Well, I could do that, but. Uh -huh. Hello, I'm a doctor, but I'm a regular guy. Excuse me, my hair is falling out into your chest. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, I can't operate on you because all my hair falls out during the operation and it's unsanitary. Nice. Yeah, it's a good murder mystery. He'll be, uh, I think he'll be good for the part. He's got to it. though. <laughs> no problem. If he wants to come tonight at the last All right, thank you. You're welcome. Nurse, nurse, Annette, Annette. I interviewed hair. somebody. Ralph remember? thinks Grillo's lazy. I mean, Ralph's lazy. Yeah, so, oh. yeah Ralph is calling you Ralph. lazy. That's really bad. No, 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 Grillo, don't Hi, buddy. <laughs> what is it, uh, Ralph? You know, he had a... Grillo, you there? I'm um, here. Yeah. You had a great opportunity on that film. 
the people you were in with and the position you had, I mean, you don't even realize it. People would have killed for that position as a PA on that movie. I, I, and, Ralph, and I, did, I really... You would have done movie after movie with those people. You know what, that, Ralph? That's how you move along in that but, kind but of... But, Ralph, if, if you want to, like, say, be in hair, why would you go and do, like, shoes? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't... I don't well, make... it, it, it's all tied into one thing. If you're on a movie set, I mean, if you're a PA... No, yeah, PAs that, that's, are your, that's your first experience. Right? Yeah, I mean, they can't... What, what, they, what, what, what do you want to be in the movie? Well, I, I, okay, uh, PA, PA's goal, okay, yeah. is to be to get into the DGA. Okay, I, mean, I don't want to like. That's not so what, what do I you want to do? Yeah, but, but I, I Steve, don't know. You got to be realistic. You just don't say I want to be in the DGA. I mean, how do you get there? I mean, Ralph is making sense. But you know, he really but doesn't it, want by the to way, do anything. By the way, Ralph's in bed right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ralph only works for me and picks up my clothes once a week, and the rest of the you week you pay him to be your friend. I know. Well, yeah, you I, I basically I, I have a paid friend. <laughs> He's my bitch. He's a that's his yeah. job. He is a gigolo. And I'm, and I'm, his, I'm his queen. Oh. That really yeah, pisses me off. Sugar I'm his sugar daddy. Like I'm sure I'm going to be supporting Ralph the rest of his, of his life. life. Yeah. I know that I've got that monkey on you my back. You know what Ralph is going to be? <laughs> what? You know how there's all these people walking around now with mm. the Princess Di. You know, there's the guy who's shredding her paper. Right. There's the guy who has her That's drapes. Ralph. He's the guy. She holds my nuts with a spoon all day. Oh. <laughs> That's his job. He warms it up. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, you, you're right, dude. I, I got, I got a tape for you to see, man. What oh time? yeah, oh, man. The Pamela Anderson. Yeah. Oh, love it. What Pamela? What are you talking about? We got a, some guy sent us this tape that supposedly was the tape that was stolen. But it's all it is is Tommy Lee doing Pamela Anderson. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's like a porno. Did you see it? Yeah. I saw the whole the thing. The sexiest goddamn and thing I ever saw. And I give it to her. She's a little girl. She handles all wait, wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Can you see it? I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Pamela Anderson is the sexiest yeah, woman on the baby. planet, man. She's real dirty, Especially right? Oh, is she dirty? She's being done by somebody, and she's holding a video camera. Uh, but Pam's coming in in a couple of weeks. Tommy and Pam really do are, are in love with themselves. Yes. Because they yes. all they do is walk around with a video camera all day, especially Tommy. Taping. And they tape each other making love, walking I around. I have a friend like that. And Pam's in, like, bathing suits. And then, like, they she's, never dress. She's at home taking a bath. Tommy comes right in with the camera. He's naked. And sometimes he even puts on weird facial makeup. And, right. and like And he just, like, he follows her around the house with, the, with and naked. And, you know, you really get the, 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 all of his tattoos. It's almost like he's wearing clothes when he's not. <laughs> yeah. He's got so much ink on him. Yeah, and, and it's and, and Tommy is huge though. That's the only bad part of the videotape. Oh, really? This yeah. One scene. He's got the biggest oh, thing I ever saw. That's Wait, he's wearing shorts. Yeah. And he can't keep it covered. <laughs> no, he oh. can't. <laughs> it's really unbelievable. Those two are too good looking to have too much fun. Well, I tell you something. Like she's just hanging around the house, and like you know, she has her hair up and no makeup and stuff. She looks like. Like a dream. She's an angel. An, an angel. On a lousy video camera. On a lousy video yeah. camera. You with know, bad lighting. Yeah, they're not even trying. Yeah. You can understand why Tommy would want to be in front of the camera, but Pam's in front of the camera all day long. Right. And she's got to come home to Tommy with the camera in her face, too. Yeah. yeah. It's like dancing. I think that's a different thing, though. All right, yeah, so anyway. She wakes up in the morning, it's there. Yeah. Let's get back to uh, Gorilla. I'm, I'm lazy. No, no, a, you're not lazy. But, but Ralph, just, can I say something? I let him think. Let him, let him finish. Go ahead. Gorilla, you just don't see the whole the whole picture. I mean, you you don't know what to do. You you gotta. Yeah. If you're in an environment where everybody's working and doing film work, you can see what you want to do. I mean, there's all kinds of positions that that you just you're just seeing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I mean, he had his I opportunity. Say, I want to be an actor. All of a sudden. Yeah, I noticed that Gambling Dan made the most of every opportunity he had. Well, they love him. And they just kept giving him more and more responsibility. The entire time we were doing the movie, Steve got up to working the door. I bet you Gambling Dan ends up being a producer of Absolutely. film. Absolutely. I guarantee Absolutely. it. Oh, no, I, I think Dan will have, Dan's already got a great script going. Right. There you go. And you're still doing nothing. I gave you the opportunity of a lifetime. That's, but that's not true. When you're saying I didn't make connections, I did. You did. Uh, you I made make connections. You don't impress anyone. <laughs> that's so you know a lot of it. No, I, I'm still... Like I'm he, still calls, he calls Lenny Bloom, the guy who wrote my film, he uh -huh. calls him all the time? Uh -huh. Not all the time. Well, what does that do you? Not all the time. I, no, What's well, Lenny going to do for you? He's not going to do anything for you. Was he going to write a movie for you? What? You want to hear, hear a great story? You know that movie yeah. that's out now, Boogie Nights? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The guy's first movie he did with Gwyneth Paltrow is called Heart Eight. Yeah. The guy did exactly what Grillo does in a movie set, right? Right. And he started hanging out with the star of this movie he was working on, whatever right. it was. And he befriended the guy. He wrote a script. The guy liked his script. And, and the, he just made a movie. I mean, yeah. It's a PA. I, ha I opened the door up for Grilla. I tried. It's not. Listen, I got. Uh, like, I'm not going to waste my uh, door opening abilities anymore. You're, you're, like, you're, you're too used to like 
you, you just expect like because you're around Howard and stuff you, you just think it's going to happen boom for you like tomorrow somebody's going to hire you to be an actor because you're on the show and, and, and you well it didn't happen for him it's, it's just not going to come yeah. from that right well that's sort of where I got the idea Although Ra- if you want to talk about Ralph Ralph's more messed up than Gorilla yeah, well, yeah. Gr- Ralph's got a lot of talent and he sits around watching movies yeah. and then correcting everything yeah, that was critiquing. Done. Yeah, I'm totally unfocused. I mean, that's my problem. <laughs> right. that you sound just like Gorilla. But at least, but at least uh, Ralph doesn't pretend to want to be an actor. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I, I mean, I can see, I can see he's unfocused because so am I. <laughs> but at least you're making a living. Yeah, you know, he comes out of. I remember we went to the, see the last Batman movie together. Ralph says, "Oh." They did that all wrong. Oh, <laughs> now, here's how it could have been fixed. I, I could have done it so right. Yeah, but you said, meanwhile, you don't do anything. Yeah. I'm working on my script. <laughs> uh, Larry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Howard? Yeah. This Steve Grillo guy, he, he, I don't, why do you keep him on? I don't mind him. I like him. I don't mind he stays here. I just feel bad for him. I just feel bad for him. He's like, hey, Grillo, how does it feel to be Howard Slave for the last how many years you've been on the show? Feels great. I got a nice apartment in the city. I got a pretty girlfriend. Um, and then you drop out of college with one semester left? And yeah, so okay. Uh, I suck. Wait, wait a second. You dropped out, Gorilla? Well, I, I didn't drop out. I can go back anytime I want. Well, what are you going to go back? He dropped out. You dropped out. Hey, you know, I, I just chose not he to went go to, this He went semester. to college for one for, for six years and then had one semester left to drop out. Hey, Howard, he doesn't have enough money, I guess. Yeah. He, he's expecting you and Robin to fork him over more money. No, I'm not. I always do. I would never do that. Oh, shut up. You suck. Hey, Howard, let's get a safari <laughs> match with a ring and let me come down and kick this guy's butt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla. Hey, yes, Paul. You spent like six years going to school, and what do you? How much time do you have left? I have about four classes left. Hey, so why don't you just finish it and get that done with? Well, it's either I. Well, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> you know why? Because they want him to take like Spanish or something, and he's freaking out. He thinks he's too stupid. He wants to be an actor. D- do no, he just doesn't want to take any challenge in life. Dude, one semester of Spanish is freaking you out. It's two semesters of Spanish. So do it. That do it. Too you much. can be Spanish girl. <laughs> yeah. In fact, learn Spanish. It'll help you with your acting. It will help him with his New York accent. Right. <laughs> Get rid of it. Hey, Howard, this yeah. is Paul from Boston. I'm an actor up here. I'd like to audition for Steve Grillo in New York. <laughs> hey, the bottom line is one thing that I learned in acting school was, and I'm from Jersey, get rid of that... Get rid of his twang in his voice. He's never going to get cast. He's going to be cast in the nanny. Yeah, and he's developed an annoying voice like you. And <laughs> thank you. And another thing is, thank you. It's a reinvestment <laughs> process. You got to put money into yourself. And right. What the heck is Grandma Sylvia's? Actors do that if they need extra money. That's not a real acting job. I never said it was. Oh, you, you know, you got to do stuff to get money. And you know what? You got to do a lot of freebies because how are these agents, you just going into the office, they're not going to hire you. You have to do stuff for them to see you in. So you're working, huh, Paul? Well, uh, yeah, I'm working for my one-year-old daughter. I gave up the acting to take care of my daughter full time. Right. Homo. <laughs> Shut up, yeah, Rob. All right. <laughs> Everybody gave up that successful career. He's a nanny. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Anyway, uh, let me get to your interview with Jonathan Harris. Thank, thank yeah, you. I don't know how we get distracted. Thank oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> All right, here he is, Jonathan Harris. It's short and sweet, but at least he was friendly this time. Well, good. Yeah, this is Doctor Doctor Smith from Lost in Space. Here we go. How you doing? Are you sexually active? Huh? Are you sexually active? Isn't everybody? <laughs> Did you say oh dear, oh dear? That's never anything that I said, but I will say, oh, the pain, the pain. <laughs> Were there any homosexuals on Lost in Space? I haven't got a clue. Any homosexuals where you live? <laughs> Do you miss Sean Denver? <laughs> yes, I thought he was a wonderful talent. A very unique talent and a very unique sound. Very sad. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Very nice interview. <laughs> well, that Thank guy's you. voice is great. Uh, he says he, he claims he never said, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, the pain. <laughs> Oh, the pain. Oh, <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah? Yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Tell everyone what happened. Well, uh, the what, wait a second, what, Dad? Um, what, Dad? Um, 
Uh, would you like to tell a friend? Uh, would you like to tell it, Fred? <laughs> um, uh, tell everyone, Fred. Give him a well, chance. Ha. Um, I got on the train this morning, right? Yeah. And, well, actually, I didn't even get on. It pulled into the station. It pulled in. And yeah. the conductor got the out of the conductor. car. <laughs> the conductor. The conductor. The conductor. The conductor. The conductor. The conductor. What happened with the conductor? He just got out of the car. He just yeah. got out of the car. He said, uh, on. <laughs> he, he just got A H. Car. All right, let him talk, Gilbert. Hey, sorry. All right, go ahead. So the conductor got out of the car. The conductor got out of the car. And he got... <laughs> oh. What uh, happened? Uh, oh. And he, saw, he got out and started to walk away. Right. So my dad turned to him and said, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> the conductor left the car. All right, come on. Let the guy finish the story. Stop okay. it, really. Go ahead. That's not right. He got out of the car. My dad... Um, Go ahead. Just I haven't it. even said um once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> he got out of the car, and my dad said, "Where are you going?" He goes. I ain't moving this train till all these damn homeless people get off. It stinks, and he made he made every homeless person get off the trains, and it's freezing out. Some people, some of these guys don't even have shoes on or anything. He made them all get out of the car and shut down the whole car. Until so you hear what went on in the subway this morning? Oh. They made oh. all the homeless people evacuate oh. the train, so that normal people who pay for this service could take it without being uh, scared out of their mind, or you know, because people aren't using the subway anymore. They they're afraid. Mass transit's a joke. Can you blame them? And what Gorilla said is true. Oh. They got out of the car. Well, they got out of the car. The conductor, I'm not moving this car. <laughs> and, and my dad you, said. And my dad said, hey, where are you going? You're the conductor of the car. Why are you getting him out of the hey, car? What are you huh? doing? Yeah. What are you doing? What's he doing with the car? I'm getting out of the damn homeless. I mean, uh -huh. I'm a passenger. He's the conductor. I have a and right to be in the, in the car. car. Yeah. Yeah. The conductor was leaving the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when Giuliani was running for mayor, he said oh. he was going to uh, oh. get rid of squeegee people. Oh. And oh. I have seen oh. less of them since he became mayor. Oh, ha, ha. We know the squeegees. Oh, 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 oh. Ha, ha. And the conductor got on the street and he talked to the squeegee people. And then my father says, hey, where are you going? Ha. ha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take... Hey, I heard you were... Uh, some guy sent me a... It seems Gorilla's an actor now. Mm. Like, everyone on our show gets in plays. Gorilla's in something called Grandma. I really think they're actors, though. I know. Gorilla thinks he's an actor. Somebody, someone, you know, one of these guys, I guess it's off-Broadway or something... They figure, hey, maybe the guy will mention it on the air if I put one of the dopes in the uh, play. Yeah. So they put Stuttering John in this play called Tony and Tina's Wedding. And John evidently is horrible in it. But it doesn't matter because he gets to mention it on the show. That's right. And But John now has this feeling that he's an actor. Yeah. He went out and got headshots done. Yeah. His girlfriend is dating an actor. Yeah. That's why she's with John. And his girlfriend actually, I think, is an actress. Yeah. And she's even calling John an actor. Right. That's what he is there. He's not stuttering John. Right. He's an actor. She wouldn't go out with stuttering John. Right. She's going out with the actor. So then, so some other guy said, hey, I'll hire Gorilla. Yeah, Gorilla. And some guy sent me a review. He saw Gorilla in this Grandma Sylvia's play. <laughs> says, he says, I've never seen a stiffer performance <laughs> in my life. I, be, I don't even... And uh, he said that he actually thinks that Gorilla might have taken some speech lessons because he, he kind of doesn't have the accent. Ah. No, he I just... you sounded all right. Well, yeah, I, 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 I'm able to uh, enunciate at times, yes. I'm able to <laughs> enunciate at times, I guess. <laughs> so evidently, uh, he's in that. And, you know, Gorilla... This is, I heard a rumor that the whole cast hates you because you make more money than them and they found out because you opened your check around them. I didn't. That's the I whole didn't. thing. I didn't. I, 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 didn't. I, I don't make more money than them. Yes, you do. I heard oh. that what happened was I guess everybody lines up for a check or something. Yeah. And uh, Grillo opens, you, you don't understand. I, opens his paycheck envelope and starts screaming, you know, because he's so excited about how much is there. All I did was go, retard, why would you... T you want, first of all, those idiots and the rest of the play, they don't... They don't they're, no, they're no good. Thank God I have walked this week. It's an amateur play. <laughs> oh, man. And what um, do they think? They have no, they, the reason they're hiring you is for publicity. Absolutely. I, I'm well absolutely. aware of that. For, I, absolutely. I, for publicity purposes. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't believe I make twice as much as everybody else. I, I don't. So I heard you opened up your paycheck in front I, of everyone? I, 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 no, it wasn't in front of everyone. It was, I don't know what happened. I really don't. The only thing that I could trace it back to is when I first got my paycheck, I was excited to get a paycheck, and I was just like, wow. Yeah, and did you, you flash it in front of everyone? I didn't know. I, I didn't guys flash did nothing. it. I didn't I flash it. I didn't think he flashed it. What I got, the story was that his reaction was so incredible, they thought he must no. be making more than us if he's that excited about his check. Yeah, you got to understand, this guy works for free. <laughs> so you do make more than them. No. Tell the truth. No. 
<laughs> don't. don't. Name. He don't. Do you swear to God? Swear. What? Did you swear to God? <laughs> You're gonna. You are. You just shut down the Broadway show. Oh. <laughs> what? No, what? I didn't. I yes, don't you did. How do I shut it down? <laughs> Trust me. Well, if you don't make more money, then that's fine. It is fine because I. Right. I don't. All right. I don't. <laughs> I just shut down a Broadway show. I just gave you a plug. Uh, I yeah, I know. He's so funny. He told me the other day that he brought his entire family. Yeah, my my mom came down. My grandma. Let me tell you something. Why I can't shut down an entire Broadway production? Because let me tell you something. The people in that play are lucky to have that job. Yeah, where are they gonna go? Where are they gonna go? Well, they're gonna, they got a part waiting on Melrose Place. That's true. Yeah, they're they got going other anywhere. options. This is just what they decided. But, to but do. you're brought in. Well, you're not brought in as an actor. You're brought in as someone who knows me, and maybe you'll get a, a connection. You should be getting paid triple what they get paid. You are what you call I, a I, I, I can you're see it that way. But but I, you, what, listen, do those people in the show realize that if they take out a newspaper ad, how much it costs? Yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah. They so do. you're a newspaper ad. I, I know that, but I, I've, I've been in the show for three months and. You like nothing. So you was make said. more money than a I know, deal. No, nothing was said. Tell them to and, get and, with it. That's why. Like, tell them to work for free here, and maybe I'll plug the play for them. What are they nitwits? I I I look it's at it that way. It's not their business what you make. Exactly. Exactly. And they, they the have no right to react to it. And you know what? Uh, I want you to get a raise. Okay. Or right. you got to quit. <laughs> yeah. Or you quit. <laughs> okay. Can I guarantee they'll play it? Can I can I plug it? Yes. What I can? That's right. You get a raise, I'll give you two more plugs. Okay. Okay. Deal. Grandma Sylvie's funeral. That's right. Dribbles Gale. Dribble. Dribble because Gale. You just, because it pisses me off that you're only getting double what they make. I want you to get triple what they make. <laughs> and a limo. <laughs> and a limo. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't believe my good wardens. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> if my friends can see me. And, I, 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 and when you get your raise, you have to show your check to the castmates. <laughs> Your fellow guest. Hey, the first check should be one of those giant checks. <laughs> yeah, big giant check. <laughs> that like they Ed present to you at the end of the show. Yeah, because now welcome to the real world of acting. <laughs> acting. Yeah. <laughs> acting. Yeah. That's some job. What are you doing now? What do you play? I um I actually play two roles. I play an Italian two brother. roles. He takes the one you got paid double. <laughs> I, I well, it, it, <laughs> pretty soon he'll be doing every part. Yeah, I, I play an Italian brother-in-law, and, and I also Joe play a, a grandson. A grandson. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say? Let me hear some acting. Oh no. Um, <laughs> uh -oh. You want you want the Italian part? For All suit. right. <laughs> For <laughs> suit. <laughs> Give us just a little For suit. Suit. It is the East and Grammy is Grandma Sylvia lies in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, d describe um, the scene. Well, I'm up on stage with my wife. I uh, hurry because and, we have a busy show. And I'm giving, an, uh, like, I'm giving a little speech. You have a wife. You look uh, like a yeah. nine-year-old. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have a wife. And I'm giving a little speech to about your wife. Yeah, uh, to the audience. And what do they do? They uh, put um, gray hair makeup on you or something? No, I just wear a suit and a tie. And you look like someone who's married. Well, the, the girl. The funny thing is, the girl who plays my wife um, is really young. And um, part part of the uh, joke is she has like one arm. She has a fake arm, and like they use that. This is some play. A vague arm. A vague arm. What? I feel bad for Steve, but Why? I, I have to show you everything because it's my job. What right. There's this really funny letter that the publicist for the play wrote to Doug at E, pitching them on doing like a gorilla special on E. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, really funny. I, I've been there for three months, and they have Doug, a gorilla is on the loose, but why is he smiling, and why does he have business cards that identify him as a booker on The Tonight Show? That's that's part of my other character when I play oh, I grandson. See. That's like, As you know, Grillo plays Todd Grossman, one of Sylvia Grossman's many colorful grandchildren. Oh, I see. They're trying to get publicity because uh, what happened is Grillo got in the play. Yeah. And we told him he can't plug it on the air because Tom Chiasano said he couldn't plug it on the air. <laughs> but Tom's mean to the interns. He really is. He he likes to do that. Tom is a dick. I, I mean, gorilla has been working here for four years for free. So let him. Free. I would and I would have let him plug he's it. He's the but first person here every day. I know. He's Tom's, such a good kid. Tom's got a system. Right. Which I haven't been able to crack yet. Yeah. But he does have some sort of a system that he bases Gorilla's plugs on. What yeah. Is that? But I don't know what it is. I think Gorilla's. He, Tom's got to draw the line somewhere on plugs. Right. So it might as well be Gorilla. Yeah. He reads me like grab. I, I have to, in Tom's defense, he. Oh, oh don't oh, kiss no. I, no, no, seriously. Don't even go there. No, but Tom paid for my dental work. Oh, that was right. That's right. Oh, yeah? He did. He I, paid for my. He still pays for my right. dental. And you know how Gorilla <laughs> rewarded him? How? By not showing up to an appointment that Tom had to pay for. Oh, oh. Really? Yeah, I, I did do that. He forgot to go to I was, I was in Florida. <laughs> Stupid. 
I screwed up. Tom also gave that. you rollerblades because oh, and he gave me rollerblades. Yeah. 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 So Tom is very generous <laughs> and a bony ride. Instead <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of a bus fare. <laughs> it's always funny where you draw the line on plugs. <laughs> <laughs> like for a while it was Stuttering John couldn't yeah. get a plug. Yeah, he was tough on Stuttering John. And then he and then like Stuttering John was here long enough, and then there was like other interns he could bust on. And Tom just. That Once stuttering John. Had, uh, Look, really, there's always someone that Tom has to draw the line. I don't, just, I don't just, don't just bust on Steve. I think I've been real nice with Steve. You know, and I and Tom needs to boss someone around on the show. No. He doesn't get to boss this anyone. This is his. Uh, yeah. This is what yeah. he controls on right. the show. Because no one really. The plug. No one from this show really goes to Tom for right. any kind of. You know, any he kind of boss stuff. Really, any input on <laughs> right. on the uh, content of the show. So Tom's big input is. Which interns can get a plug, yeah, right? Yeah. That's me. Yeah. So, ah. Beat up on the interns. So, Gorilla, you don't uh, allow? No, I, I do allow. I do allow certain things and others I don't. Right. I mean, I wasn't going to let this play it's advertised for free. Yeah. Right. You know, and with, with Steve, that. And when Steve has special, you know, events that, ha that happen, you know, then um, that don't cross that line, then it's okay. Did you go to Tom and ask him if you could plug it? I, I went to Tom and asked him if I could be in the play. Oh. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that, that that was okay with him before I actually went ahead. You work for it. free, of course it's okay. Right. I know, but I'm not going to do something that they don't feel comfortable with. <laughs> like if they don't feel comfortable with me acting in the play because they ask. Do you ask Tom if he can wipe every day? Ah. <laughs> Tom, can I wipe? Are you comfortable? Is, is that with okay? That? Are you comfortable with that? I'll like, hold it in. They asked me to be in the play. They asked me to be in the play because I work on this show. <laughs> so I'm not going to do something that they don't feel comfortable with. <laughs> How long have you been here? Four years. <laughs> four years. Four years like today. And every three months or so, I, I go to Gary and say, Gary, is he really still a student? Yeah. He's still no really one can believe it. I was going to say, right. he's been in school longer than he's been here. I think yeah. he's still in high school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I and then Gorilla goes to me today. I can't believe we're going to California. So I said, what do you mean we, white man? <laughs> what are you talking about? He goes... Oh, yeah, I'm going, then I found out Gorilla's paying for himself to go out to California. You're kidding. I didn't know that. Yeah. I just found that out. What are you doing? I need to get what away. What do you think's going to... You I need to get away from I what? Need, I need to... I've been working seven days a week for the past three months. I just need a break. A break? You're going to come out and, and work with us? Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's a, a break? break? Dude, I, I, there's nothing more that I love to do than work for this show. Really? All right. Well, we can hit the jackpot with then you. Don't ever pay him. I have a wish Jackie would pay for himself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had, I had a little extra cash. It's my Christmas present to myself. All right. All right. And you know what happened, man? What? I was just thinking about this this morning. Loved Gorilla. Loved Gorilla. But, you know, when I was single, I was alone all the time. Now that I'm married, I never get a moment to myself. Right. But he said he was coming out, and I felt bad for him, so I'm letting him stay in my room. <laughs> no, I was but, like a roommate. <laughs> oh, I, I, man, I do, big I, mistake. I do have an apartment. And, I do have an apartment there. Someone let me an apartment. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're not going to stay with me? I, I will, but until... Well, no, that's I, okay. I'll stay in the weekend. I just hadn't thought, like, what if there's only one bed? What? I'll sleep so in the bed. So you sleep with him. Wait till he gets drunk in the middle of the night and calls his ex-girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he did to you, right, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> All night, on the phone. I love you. Oh, <laughs> is it over? Is it over? I love you. Do you love <laughs> me? You. No, uh, I wasn't making out. I don't out. talk to him I anymore. wasn't making out. <laughs> I love you. I was making out a little. All right, you were trying to sleep? I was and a nice guy. I had two beds in my room. I let him stay, and all of a sudden, I hear him, like, dialing quiet. <laughs> and what time is this? It's like 3 in the morning. Oh, oh, oh man. You answer the phone. Pick it up. I knew you there. I wasn't making out. I wasn't You're making kidding. out. Wasn't that no, the New York yeah, yeah. show? Jackie was nice. Drank you drank all, drank all the booze in my room and then. Oh yeah, right. And then what you, called, you drank from the mini bar? No, no. Oh, he cleaned out the mini bar and got drunk and then called his girlfriend and she wasn't there. And then he, like was grilled naked and, like on the phone. Yeah, and he's begging her to. You know, I'm trying to sleep. Oh yeah. Oh, please, please. Up then she picks up the phone and he's and he's getting upset with her, but he's trying not to wake me. But it's me and him in the room, so of course you can and hear every word. And across that little night. Nice oh, please, I, I have a burning desire. <laughs> Burning these all your bleeds, big of the phone, bleeds. But he's whispering, you know how you whisper, oh, but yeah. you get angry? Yeah. No. I mean, I know you, you're going you out with that. that guy. You would do that to Jackie? Why are you going out with that guy? In the <laughs> mini bar, <laughs> that thing. Why would you do that? After he spent the entire drunk. night with the girl from New Orleans. All right. It wasn't with anybody. I'm the lie to her. I swear to God. You were with the blonde girl from New Orleans with the great body. I didn't ask you to take a dab off. While we're at it, if anybody has a copy of the sex show that ran on MTV this last weekend. Yeah. Gorilla's girlfriend was on his, talking his about ex his ex girlfriend was on discussing, I guess, what they used to do. Really? I, I don't know what she said. I really don't. I, she told me a couple of things that she was good. You know what? There's too much gorilla. That's enough. okay. All right. No problem. I'm just burnt out on you. It's the gorilla cool. special that he asked for. I don't know if it was Jackie going way too long with his story about gorilla sleeping there but next door. You're asking me. No, but I mean, you're really good for me, man. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but.
If you want, you can come down and see, uh, see me and Grandma Sylvie's funeral. All right. I will gomb you. Go see a fifth performance. <laughs> I will gomb you. I will gomb you and get you 50% off of the price diggies for anyone else in your family. But the guy said, uh, the guy who wrote the review who saw you, he said you were stiff, but he was also stiff because there were two hot chicks in the play with you or something? There's a couple of hot chicks in yeah. the play. And oh. I make out with them. Do I, I, I do. Both, both. Both characters, I do kiss another girl. This is a whole new trend. Like, Broadway shows putting people from our crew in the play yeah. so that they can get <laughs> plugged. Then they get the worst actors. You don't think you're an actor, do you? No, not at all. Oh, he's, he's so funny. He's taking he's acting lessons. about his character. No, yeah. I, had to, I had to drop my acting class. You never acted for us. Let me hear you say What's something. Oh, you want me to do my line? Yeah, do your line. Uh, There's I, one I, line? I know. Well, it's not. No, it's my little speech. Just do uh, your whole speech. I know you're going to cut me off right there. No, I'm not. Look at Grandma Zylvia. That is grab. <laughs> My family, the Ianucci family, owners and operators of Ianucci Surplus Marble Imports Incorporated, a registered trademark, would like to offer their condolences to the Grossman family by donating an 18-foot marble statue of Our Lady of Mount Carmel to St. Lucy's Parish. It's going to be erected on the front lawn of the church. Who would like to see this? Are you acting now? <laughs> Our condolences. That, I mean, that's the way you do it? No, I do it a little better when I'm in <laughs> I don't have you better. I don't, I, I don't have you people, like, breathing down my neck. I'm not in my costume. <laughs> yeah, I'm much better. Character. Go ahead, to continue. I'm going to have the jigs next It's going to be erected on the front lawn of the church, <laughs> and the engraving is going to read, in loving memory of Sylvia Schilner Grossman. Thank you. And we all hope that you could attend the Ianucci erection ceremony. Thank you. You see my talent? Thank you. May you come to the Ian Nudie <laughs> from the marble and the oh, stuff. <laughs> oh man! Thank you, thank you. That sucked. Thank you. Who wants lunch? I never said I was an actor, but you asked me to read my lines. No, and you tell me you're an actor. <laughs> what are you? When did I say that? I, you told I me never, you were taking an acting lesson. I, I was taking an acting class in school, but I had. You told me you t had your acting teacher come and see you. So I, yeah, my I, one of my professors came down to see. What me. do you think, <laughs> professor? <laughs> professor, <laughs> like <laughs> Professor Periwinkle. <laughs> you like, look at this, a real play. <laughs> and no. probably like the guy's probably like a guy who struck out on yeah. you know theater and stuff. Yeah. And like all of a sudden he's watching Gorilla <laughs> mangle the English language and get and get twice the paycheck of everyone else. What do you think? I'm like a bolt Brando, don't you think? <laughs> 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 did the guy say what he thought of you? Um, yeah, he, he thought I, he, he liked it. He liked, did he like you? This guy was like, a, like this, the school fired him. Oh. Because of the budget cutbacks. <laughs> he, was, he was a really, really <laughs> good... Was the Bavesa? Yeah, he was a really, really good uh, Actually, they fired the Bavesa because they came down and saw how, see how well he taught me how to act. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah. like, did the director work with you and stuff? The director, I, what, the day before I went... The director wanted to meet with you. <laughs> the director worked with me, like, the first, before the first show. Really? That was it. That was it. One show. He said, there. He, he really? went back, he goes, read your lines. And, and I he thought you were great. No. I, 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 he didn't even, he didn't even want me to go on, to tell you the truth. So he was probably insulted that they were putting you in his play. Yeah, well, not, it's not in his, they, he was right. like, I don't know this kid, so I had to go do a monologue for him. And he was just, okay, he could do it, you know. Yeah, but he monologue, monologue did you? You know what an insult it must have been to the director when, like, Gorilla shows up and they say, you have to put him in because he's yeah. from the Howard Stern show. And the, and the kid gets up there and he's like, uh, what do you want me to read? I, uh, I'm nervous. Here's Would you like monologue. something from Long Day's Journey in the Night? <laughs> or probably Shakespeare. I'm kind of like Dustin Kaufman. You know who? Like B or not B? <laughs> Dustin Kaufman. <laughs> Dustin Kaufman. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> I'm acting here. Back off. Give me some lunch. That's you what you're lunch. good at. Absolutely. <laughs> now you shine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. I want you making triple. I'll triple? give you. I'll get you two or three more plugs. Okay. All right. All I right. Want you, I want them to triple your salary. I'll talk. He's to so funny when he comes in and he talks about how now his character's really working. Now that you know when he delivers his lines, he gets laughed. Yeah. Well, there was this <laughs> character. <laughs> What's my true line? <laughs> like my other character, I just have to go around and pick up checks. Do we, be in character and say, "Boss, now I'm going to go get lunch." Stand up. Stand up and do Stand it. Up. Let me see. It. Let me see you deliver that. Boss, now I'm going to go get lunch. <laughs> Very wow. good. Very nice. That was acting. All right, now go act like your character and get me lunch. All right. You know what was funny? Because he did. He had trouble with the character who has to pick up all the chicks. Oh, yeah. Because he, as Gorilla, has trouble going up and talking to women. But as his character. Well, he did have trouble being his character. Yes. I did. Because you had no experience. 
I just I have a problem just walking up to chicks. So let me see how you pick up chicks as your character. Do that part. Do that scene. Uh -huh. I usually, well, I get to like smoke a joint. All right, I just smoke the joint. joint. Make smoke like... a, pretend you're smoking a joint. So what's going on? How you doing? I'm Todd Grossman. Nice to meet you. You know, and just start a little conversation. You from New York? Well, yeah, I live in L.A. I work for the Tonight Show. Yeah, just you know, I rap with them and try to get a conversation going, and then right. just like use it. All right, very good. Are Look at my lungs. Are you doing lunch. it or is he? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> See, I, I want to hear lines. I walk up to him. Hello, I'm from uh, tonight, Joe. My name's Todd Grossman, and I'm from California. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's good to see you. It's like, uh, would you like some broccoli? Maybe I, could... <laughs> I can get you some. Hey, pick up nice Robin. Team, right? Todd Grossman. Pick up Howard. Right. He can yeah, I'll be a woman. Pick up Robin. America. Oh, I'm not. I'll be Miss America. Go ahead. You're Todd Grossman. Go ahead. Hi, how you doing? Hi, nice to uh, see you. <laughs> Todd Grossman. Hi, Todd. My nice. name's Sally. Sally, nice to meet you. How yeah. are you today? I'm very good. Oh, come over here. Uh, let's have anal sex. <laughs> right now? You're turning me on. All right, go get me. Can you go get me lunch? <laughs> Come on, hurry up. All right, I'm gone. Snap too. <laughs> Some acting. Act like you're hungry. Because uh, I'm having trouble getting into my character because I can't go talk to women. It's hard for me to get into my gabbing to I don't play just practice do on that. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having trouble. Mm. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Everyone's an actor now, and John, really, stuttering John, really thinks he's an actor. He, you, he never brought you his headshots. You see, no, let me see those. Catalog of <laughs> you know pictures funny? he's had taken of himself. He's way above Grillo. Really? He's never do what Grillo's doing, but he's doing yeah. the exact same thing. Right? Is that what he said? <laughs> oh, he said that. Don't, don't put him and Grillo in the same sentence because and Jack, between you and me. Your wife ain't much better. Hey, hey. <laughs> Come on. My wife has her acting debut this Sunday, I'll have you know. Uh, yeah. Where? I just got this uh, cat I wanted to read to you. It's fun. All right. Hey, Howard. Grillo's an actor. I've heard better acting when Jackie pretends to be happy for the success of your book. Yeah. <laughs> it must be killing Jackie. If Grillo really wants to prepare for his future, he should concentrate on making your baked potatoes so he can read himself. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. Yeah, Grillo did some reviews, but I, I defy you to get through them. They're just <laughs> awful, and you learn nothing. It, uh, where are those, Gary? I mean, what are, what are the many pages? Preview page one. Oh, here, I have it. Never mind. Here's Grillo reviewing Beer League. But it, I'm telling you, to get through it is, it's it's hideous. <laughs> and you learn nothing about the movie. <laughs> Hey, this is Steve Grillo with the Raw Review here on Howard 100. You can't even say the word raw. <laughs> the raw, raw, raw Review. It's a raw review. The Raw Review, Steve Grillo. <laughs> News. Guess what? This week I am reviewing Artie Lang's Beer League, starring Artie Lang and the Karate Kid Ralph Macchio. This movie <laughs> that just came out, we all uh, were waiting for this for a long time. This movie stars Artie Lang as the lovable fat loser from New Jersey with his uh, straight man uh, counterpart, Ralph Macchio. <laughs> and um, this movie is about a, a Jersey Beer League, where uh, these guys take it pretty damn serious. Coming from Brooklyn, I understand that. And um, he has his arch rival from high school, this uh, some Italian guy. I don't know his name, but uh, he's pretty... <laughs> oh, oh, it's just... And, like, he's describing the story. And, oh, my goodness. Oh, it's just hard. It should be over already. Hey, I like the movie. Oh. Here's why. Yeah, Come when on. are we going to get to the review? Oh, it's, it just goes on and on and Let on. Let me hear. I, I could hang on every oh. word. Urban looking. And, um... They uh they battle it out on a Jersey Beer League for the uh rights to play in the league. And um I will uh, go and tell you that uh this script was very well written. I liked it. It was uh beyond funny. It had some it actually went somewhere. It had a beginning, a middle and an end. What? It had oh, Wow, way to go, Artie. What a rage. <laughs> the story had a beginning, middle and end. That's what you pull out for the blur. It had credit. <laughs> You're the absolute fucking worst movie reviewer I've ever heard, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, I mean, Dave, for the rave. Our only has, rave no one can understand. It has a beginning, middle, and end. Why do you name your sex, your column, or whatever it is, raw? You can't say the Roar. word. Raw. Roar. Raw re review, women. It's the raw review. Okay. You're, you're bad at this. I love that I'm not good. You love that you're not good. I love that I'm not good. 
No, no, I'm dead old. I don't know what the fuck to do. Give what? Me <laughs> See, I what? think that, you he's know, drunk. the fact that he's encased in a time is is holding him back. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't blame the kid for trying, though. Stuttering John's the announcer on The Tonight Show. Why not? There's I no, mean, what right. did you think of Artie's movie, though? I still don't know. I'll play the rest. Uh, you know, uh, two people that were uh, at each other's throats, which is a uh, controversy, which uh, makes a movie pretty goddamn interesting. <laughs> and um, it, it was fucking funny. And uh, most of all, it was really funny. Isn't it cool that we have a movie reviewer that's really in touch with young people? Yeah. I, I also think he was looking for the word conflict. It's a controversy. Uh, controversy. controversy. Conflict. Guys, like, yeah, controversy. I'm, I'm loving this review. Oh. <laughs> because it had something I enjoyed very much, which was the pitching machine. Pitching machine was my favorite part of the movie, just because at the end when Artie was in the car with her and he almost got into a car accident. He By the way, Gorilla doesn't explain where the pitching machine is. Right, he thinks I'm it's a real pitching machine. Talking about a pitching machine. Yeah, like like if you didn't see the movie, which probably most people <laughs> and, didn't. And then can open a game in. <laughs> uh, what I like about the movie is pitching machine, and then he just like he doesn't yeah. explain it. And then pitching machine, <laughs> pitching machine was in the car and they crashed, and it's then the worst fucking review you ever heard. That's the worst review you've uh, ever heard. It's a good review, pitching but it's machine bad. Is good. He says, be careful, pitching machine. And um, that made me laugh, which was a good thing. But um, I'm very uh, I'm very proud of Artie. I think Artie did a great job. I uh, enjoyed this movie thoroughly. Um, I like the fact that uh, oh, there was at least a... Uh, I told you, you want to kill him. He's going to give away another thing. That's what I'm afraid of. I mean, oh. he's just horrible. That's nobody, it. nobody is still tuned in. Don't in worry. The, in the paper, I'm putting, it was really funny, Steve Grillo. That's it. Thanks, Steve. And that's a good thing. That's all I wanted, really. Titty scene in the movie, which uh, was during the bachelor party, and the ping pong lady actually performed uh, her uh, art very well at that point. And um, I would, know what I would give uh, this uh, four out of five potatoes, Artie. Good job. Although I was watching uh, Dirty Work uh, recently, and um, I think you, your acting's a little better when you're fatter. So uh, you should really strike while the iron's hard. Uh, it goes on more. Well, and hold on a second, dude. Yeah. Dude, everybody has a couple of takes before they get a good. Dude, one. you go on, you say like this. <laughs> I just saw Artie Lang's Beer League. I enjoyed it. I give it four out of five potatoes. That's <laughs> great. Very if I high that, rating. You have fun right now? No. Uh, that's okay. It's it's nauseating listening to you. <laughs> well then. <laughs> and then you say, <laughs> you know, the movie is about a beer league, and if you don't know what a beer league is, it I is can a, tell you from Brooklyn. <laughs> it, it's softball teams, guys, regular guys playing softball and taking it way too seriously. Well, I, I enjoyed the lead that. actress. She she played a girl from Jersey very well. Artie was excellent. Name. And the story was great. And uh, go see it. I recommend it. Boom, oh, over. That's great. If I would have done that, you would have hated it. No, but I'd have... Uh, I'd know what you were talking about. I wouldn't have had to tune out before you got oh, But it had, it had uh, bong it, girl. And the bitching machine. Now. The bitching machine. The bitching. The bitching machine. <laughs> Are these odd rival whose name I don't remember, but he's some Italian guy. And, uh, yeah. I he know performed the bing bong art very well. <laughs> Here he is reviewing Lucky, Lucky Number 11, which at least Artie's movie you care about. Like, right. like, I don't even know what lucky number 11 is. I don't even know what I even said. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Check one, two. All right, it's on. <laughs> hey, this is Steve Grillo with the Raw Review here on Howard 100 News. This time I'm going to be uh, reviewing the new blockbuster release, Lucky Number 11, starring Josh Hartnett, Bruce Willis, that hot Asian broad, Lucy Liu, or could I say Asian? Is it Asian? Oh, I can't say Oriental. Oh, I mean, he's, he's, he's boring. <laughs> Dude, all right, so I'm boring. Let, let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Boy. It's my oh. channel. I can't let it go. Don't let it go then. Cut it off you just now. told me to let it go. Then. Make what? up your mind. Should he let it go or not let it go? Uh, I think he should let it go. If it sucks, then cut it off now. I say we limit you to a minute. <laughs> Whatever you want, bud. One minute. I'm on your team. One minute. <laughs> Can you do a minute review? Okay, but, but you got to... That's what it is. Steve anyway. Grillo's one-minute review, and they cut it off whether you've made your right. point or not. Uh, yeah, you just keep going. <laughs> we'll cut it off in a minute. There you go. Have a ball. Do something. Well, we're doing plenty. I you know. I'm doing nothing. Have fun. Listen. I'm listening. Press play. What? Uh, hey, Steve, i got to go. Just work work on this. Make it better. <laughs> wait, wait where's, the, where's the review? I, I can't take it. Come I don't want to hear it. Let me hear what oh, he has to say about right, right. number 11. So, oh, yeah, the hot Asian broad, Lucy Liu, and um, that pompous ass, um, what's his name, Ben Kingsley. Yeah, I will not call him that S word. 
because he's a jerk. But anyway, lucky number 11. Uh, even that kind what of... What S-word? Sir. Sir. But, yeah, but I'm like so the you average know what? listener cool. now. Just, uh, yo, they call me... Grillo, Grillo. Yo. So you made something interesting here. You said, I, will not, I don't like Ben Kingsley. I don't know one person who doesn't like Ben Kingsley, but you don't like Ben Kingsley. W explain why he's a jerk. <laughs> and your okay. review. You call him the guy a jerk, and then you don't say why. Why don't you say it? Oh, thanks. I'll write that down. Well, yeah. Write that down. Listen, listen to this guy. Help. Listen to this fucking guy. Wait. This is a really complicated, very layered movie, which uh, is uh, pretty much a revenge movie, where uh, Josh Hartnett and Bruce wait, 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 uh, wait, is wait, wait, a lucky uh, number three. Yeah, I will not write anything Very down. layered movie, which uh, is uh, lucky number 11. This is a really complicated, very layered movie, which uh, is a lucky number 11. This yeah, I will not call him that S word. Because he's a jerk. But anyway, lucky number 11. This is a, why is he a jerk? But, duh, I'm, I'm wrong, okay? But uh, You don't really feel he's a jerk? He is a jerk. I didn't want to say sir. And why? Why is he a jerk? Sir? That's the fucking... You have to call him sir. Oh, that's why he's a jerk? Because he's sir? He didn't give himself he didn't... the title. He, he got a title. Yeah. Well, he was Gandhi. That's why. Hmm? You, don't know, you don't know why you call him a jerk, do you? No, I do, sir. He's a uh, British royalty. He's a dick. So is Paul McCartney a dick and Elton John a dick? They're oh, all sirs. Um, no, they're not dicks. But they're he's sirs. I know, but he's a dick. Well, why, why? why is he a dick? I don't like him. <laughs> but but why, why don't you like him? Do I have to have a reason? Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah you're a movie yeah. reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like fucking. I don't like him. You don't like him. Why don't you like him? What haven't you liked him in? What is it? But did he no, molest you? He's a dick. Did he molest you? You heard he's a dick. Did you work? No, in a, did you work on a movie with him? What? Did you work on a movie with him? No. So you've never met him? No. But you heard from somebody else he's a dick. No, probably from like uh, Entertainment Tonight or something. Oh, you <laughs> You mean you just fucking leveled the guy? Yeah. And you don't know why. You realize I don't when like he, him. <laughs> you realize when he was on The Sopranos, he was acting. You know what I, I mean? don't like him. Hey, I don't like him. Don't like him. <laughs> what? I don't like him. I don't like him. Ha ha. Okay. What I don't like him. What was it about? You said about The Sopranos? <laughs> no, Gary said that. And then you said something. No, I said, yeah, we're going to Listen to this fucking guy. Yeah. Listen hey, to this. Hold on, really hold on. complicated, hold on, hold on. very hold on. layered movie. What? The, um, the, just in case, so you know, one of the other big complaints in the guys in the ba in the back office was like apparently this movie has a, a big surprise ending, which Grillo gives away. Surprise! So like, he, he apparently <laughs> tells you everything yeah. that happens in every movie. So review. when we were playing I'm in the office the yesterday, the intern goes, "Fuck! You just gave the movie away. Now I can't go." <laughs> what movie? Well, Lucky uh, Number Slab. I'm oh. used to that. You're used to that. Yeah, well, I've done that before. What? The aliens? You don't remember? No, no, we don't remember. Yeah. Ending the aliens out. All right, thank you. I, well, I, I got to hang up on you. You're making <laughs> like you're making less sense than usual. Uh, well, go ahead, I don't, dude. Uh, I, I I'm just trying to make you happy. No, you're not. Well, <laughs> go back and try again. Yeah. All right. Try to make me happy. Are there any other reviews? <laughs> No, no. I wish you worked for the New York Times, <laughs> which uh, is uh, pretty much a revenge movie, where uh, Josh Hartnett and wait, wait, which uh, is by Lucky Number Eleven. This is a really complicated, very layered movie, jerk. But anyway, Kingsley, yeah, I will not call him that S word because he's a jerk. But anyway, Lucky Number Eleven. This is a really complicated, very layered movie, which uh, is uh, pretty much a revenge movie. Where uh, Josh Hartnett and Bruce Willis pull one over. Oh, I forgot. Morgan Freeman stars in this also. How do I forget him? Everybody loves Morgan Freeman. Yeah, they stay. Yeah, he, he's not a jerk. He's not Morgan a jerk. Morgan Freeman, okay. Kingsley is a jerk. Oh. I want you to that S word. What is it, Ralph? I saw, I saw Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> it's a complicated movie about a ship in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a di didactic? That uh, that jerk Leonardo DiCaprio Gabriel's in it. Who's an idiot? He's an idiot. He's a jerk. Oh, yeah. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's a zerg. <laughs> are you having fun, bro? That's all I want. Oh my God, these are great. <laughs> the movie love, review. There you go. I love it. Help a bro out. Everyone oh, are loves you, it. Are you are you crazy? This is cool. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, I can't take it. They gotta it, be I short. Well, then don't take it, bro. I'm uh, I'm trying to have fun uh, and uh, <laughs> help somebody out. 
<laughs> Help somebody out. Poor gorilla's looking Me. for anything. Yeah, I know. Me. The news that his story on gorilla is like completely broke. Oh, is oh, it? Yeah, pretty much. Because he stopped being an electrician. He was this close well, to getting. Nothing to do with it. Really. He was close to getting his electrician's license. He had. We walked away. <laughs> well, that's, that's when you quit. To do with you know what's funny? He used to be an electrician. Now his electricity's turned off. Yeah. That's got nothing Isn't that to do funny? <laughs> Isn't it funny how once he was working with electricity, now he can't even get it in his house? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what's the matter? What's the matter? Well, what happened um, to the whole uh, like region thing? Is... What? What? What did you say? What happened to the whole electrician like, thing? Um, not me. What happened to your like, Uh, Great program, just not for me. No, a... <laughs> what can I tell you? What are you doing I, I didn't now? I like it. I hate it. So now you have no money. No money. Did you like? Do you like money? <laughs> you got to like money. <laughs> if I had a nice, uh, what I really need is like some club or something. Give me a job. I'm a great bartender or a waiter. <laughs> You're like Jeff the drunk. <laughs> yeah. You want to hand out flyers? With two good arms. <laughs> yeah, with two good arms. And a, uh, Let's listen to the rest of the movie. Right yeah, please. No. Yeah, uh, Morgan Freeman, no, Bruce Willis and um, Josh Hartnett, they uh, they get together and they pull one over on Morgan Freeman and Ben Kingsley. And uh, Lucy Liu plays the uh, the love interest, which is always fun, but she doesn't even get anywhere remotely naked or even <laughs> sexy. But she's got a sexy face, but it, it doesn't work really because you want to see her naked. But she's too much... Naked. Naked. I want to see her naked. She doesn't remotely get me. This is the roar review. Hey, Gorilla, you know what you can do? You can uh, apply to grocery stores and watch the back door. Yeah, I know. It's pretty much all I got right now. I had a fucking electrician who was this close to the license. Um, they make like 80 bucks an hour. Yeah. Hey, man, it wasn't for me. Hey, is Nothing's eating for you? you? Yeah. I have a burning desire. You know, I, was, I was in your business. I can't do that now. I used to make Howard's potato, and then I went to be an electrician. And I miss it. I miss making the potato. No, I just don't want to be like that. It was so good. It was so much fun. Because I made a potato, and then I got to hang uh, out with the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just want to hang out and get paid for it. Wait, wait a second. That, 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 how, about, right. how, about, uh, how about, like, you're on movie sets and stuff? I mean, can't you get work there? I mean, you're with... Yeah, I can. I've got a movie coming up real soon. So what are you bitching about? What I'm bitching about is I just want... I need more money. <laughs> At 40 hours a week, an electrician can make about 150 grand a year. That was oh, a you're good kidding one. me? That, that's like as, as a no. PA, 40 hours a week, we make nothing. That's good. See, I'm trying to figure out what makes him happy, because he was here yeah. yesterday. I had an appointment downtown, so I took the subway with him. We were talking, and he's, he's like bartending right now at the San Gennaro Feast, but that's going to be done. So I said, well, you know, you just finished that movie with Jodie Foster. Right. And he goes, yeah, and there's another movie. It's going to be a seven-month production, the biggest production in the history of New York. It's a Will, uh, Will Smith film. And he said he might get on that. And I said, that's great. He goes, I hate PA work. And I'm like, well, I don't know what he wants to do. Like, what do you want to be? I would like to have a job where a lot of people give me money for, for, for being, uh, you know, like, or entertaining. Or would he like to run a studio? Would, I would. What, 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 I would like to run a studio. Because <laughs> I, 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 I know a lot about movies. I watch them. I, uh, How about this? I just I hang around and you guys make fun of me. Yeah, I, I want to be on the show again. The show. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm thinking of leaving the show. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, that's how he got, that's how he lost his job here. G Gary, I'm thinking of leaving the Joe. When, when are you leaving? So as soon as what Gary, told, I told, I said, tell Steve that we understand he handed in his resignation. We've already replaced him. He goes, well, no, 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 no. I was just thinking about it. I go, no, no, no. No, no, no. He gave me a date, Howard. I mean, yeah. it's not as bad as it may. The guy gave me a date. He goes, as of this date, I'm gonna leave. And I said, okay. And then I replaced him. And, and then he, he came back and he goes, I have second thoughts. And we go, no, 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 we hired someone. Already. I know, I mean, it was, you know. I'm leaving the brazoo. <laughs> Dude, well, I want a brazoo right. electricity. <laughs> I, I have a burning desire to understand electricity. I'm digging for a second time. No, I never had that. <laughs> Wait, Gorilla, why'd you leave? Would you, what, would, would, would you have to, another burning desire to go to? <laughs> no, I didn't do electricity, but uh, I left because uh, I wasn't getting uh, health insurance or overtime. For what? I didn't do anything. <laughs> what are you talking overtime about? Overtime for baking potatoes? I gave it 30 hours a week. It I took me 30 working. hours to make this potato. <laughs> Hold on a second, bro. <laughs> I was working over 50 hours a week and getting paid for 30. Oh. Okay, and uh, they were health insurance or nothing. I didn't know what you did. Well, I didn't know what I did either, but I got paid for something. <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's that's a pretty strong argument when you go to Tom's office. I like that he needed overtime. Money. Well, I don't know I what I do. I left. <laughs> Tom, I don't know what I do, but I know I need more money. <laughs> I don't know what I do, but I want more money doing it. It's taking me 50 hours. I'm doing it in 50 hours. Hey, wow. I hate to kick a dude when he's down, but the news department is working on a story, so i, I got to ask you, are you on the verge of being evicted? Yep. Oh. oh. Artie? Ah. <laughs> Artie, can you take him? That was a good one, what? Ralph. Throw it in his wife. For the four. will be here on um, Tuesday. Steve, for the oh, four. Marshall. For the oh, four. Marshall. Oh, yeah, but Marshall's kick you out. Oh. Wait, for, the hold four, on. for the four potato review, Steve, I'll give you one month's rent. <laughs> <laughs> but how is Steve? What do you mean? The, what do you mean the Marshalls? Um, I'm having uh, money problems. <laughs> See, Howard, just, I, I mean, I don't know too much Dude, about you it. you want my recommendation? Um, Go finish your electrician thing. Yeah, we're on the way no, to Easy that's Street. A, that's too late. Because that door is closed. He must have been horrible at it. Were you? No, I wasn't horrible. At Did it. you get fired? I hate it. You get fired? I can give you numbers to guys that I work with. I hate it. I wasn't bad at it. I can come and a lot of a lot of people don't like their jobs, but they they do it. They do it. They do it because they need money. Well, whatever. <laughs> I uh, I opted not to do that. <laughs> Howard, do you know long? You, do you know how long? You don't have to. You don't pay rent before they evict you. I mean, you must not have paid rent for close to a year, right? No. How long has it been since you haven't paid your rent? Um, last month. They don't evict no, you. No, they don't. Evict Come on, you really. Really. Yeah, yeah. I would say. I have, I have, hold on. No, hold on a second. Nine months. Hold on. I, I have five hundred dollars in July. <laughs> if we come and, uh, up with some money, would you get August breast implants? September. If we come up with money, would you get breast implants? <laughs> Look at my dibs. Yeah. You would? Are you kidding me? Gotta keep them for a year. You gotta keep them for a year as and get dibs. As long as I don't have to uh, borrow money from anybody else. Hey, hey wait a second, Howard. Hold on a second. Yeah. Have you seen Gorilla? He's, He's got tits? He's pretty fat, man. He's got tits already. A hundred grand? Yeah, I got, I got, uh, man. Yeah, I'm talking about a D cup. Yeah. How much, hey, Gorilla, how much is your rent? Um, well, Honestly. my half is a thousand a month. How much? You're half. <laughs> you're married. Half. Yeah. We go halves. Well, your wife's getting kicked out too, isn't she? No, but she pays for everything. Was she leaving you? No. But I, she, I, it's like I have to put up or shut up. It's kind of like wait, 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 wait. Are you getting kicked out or is she getting kicked out too? Or is she throwing you out? No, we're both getting kicked out. And so, how much is the rent? Two thousand a month. Yeah. So where do you live in the city? Yeah. Well, what? If you don't have any money, why are you living in the most expensive place in the world? Move out to fucking Jersey or Long Island or something. You don't have to be right in the city. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I never thought of that. Well? <laughs> <laughs> but he's right. Yeah, you're the one who's getting kicked out. out. All right, so you know it. So what are you doing about it? No, obviously I'm getting kicked out. Ralph would like to live in the city. He doesn't have the money. Yeah, I'd love to live in the city. I don't understand, though. Your wife can come up with her share of the rent. Mm hmm Yeah. Next story. So I don't understand what's happening. You mean she comes up with her uh, rent and then you uh, don't? This, uh, uh, the end of the movie. Uh, uh, all right, you know what? I got to go. You don't want to know. It's yeah, I don't want to know. In fact, I got, I got homeless you guys here. Me. I got homeless Maybe guys we here. we should have Grillo come in for a lap dance. It's complicated. He's homeless. I've got a complicated situation. I'm almost homeless. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it's great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Steve, thank you for the movie reviews. <laughs> Everyone says you should continue doing them, so I agree. I I well, love his movie reviews. Uh, <laughs> they told me not to think about it, so I did it. You like him at this length? No, I think he should be limited, but see, somebody told him not to prepare at all. I did. Exactly. No, no, what you didn't want was him being allowed to do retakes. Right. Uh, he uh, has... Howard, here's, here's what I think you should do. Just... Just let him ramble for five minutes, and then just take it and cut it no, up. No, I just want I want him to I want him to have the pressure of a minute movie review. Right. When he rambles for five minutes, it's all good. I yeah. got Jordy Foster to call in. Jesus Christ! Anybody acknowledge that? Uh, we did acknowledge. That. I think. Uh, I think yeah, that maybe at that you didn't ask her one interesting question. Yeah, I mean, we didn't learn a thing from that no, interview. I I saw you we learned the that she was wearing the same clothes. I saw you wearing the same clothes. That <laughs> I well, saw you on. I couldn't ask for anything else. Why? Like, do you yes. like the lick, bro? <laughs> well, thank you, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> All right, hey, uh, he's been drinking, right? You've been drinking, Steve? No. Are you sure? You should I be. I woke up. You should be I, loaded, man. I think the show would be great if, after every movie review, it was followed by a roundtable discussion about your finances. <laughs> All right, hey, Steve. Steve, I got to go. You are our movie reviewer, and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Right, goodbye. All right, but thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Steve. Uh, uh.
Uh, uh, I'm, I'm taking numbers that you guys are breaking the chops of the reviewer that liked my film. <laughs> I'm a professional actress to get naked, so that's not going to happen. But at least there was a hot girl in the movie. I don't know. So anyway, this movie is very layered, very complicated, very, very... Uh, it's uh, got a very complicated uh, plot, which uh, I followed and enjoyed. Very All right. We got to take a break. So anyway, Gorilla had to speak to some college, which I how he got involved in speaking to colleges, I don't know. He's how the, were you invited? You're the least well, articulate of the show. Okay, I'll take that. But um, I'll take of course that. you'll take that. It's true. <laughs> so well, it's, <laughs> it's just like it's a college radio convention that they have every year. Oh. And Gary was doing it, and they... They, they and what does Gary do there? Gary speaks about, you know, producing the show and stuff like that. Gee, I wish I had a tape of that. Never mind you. You do. I, well, <laughs> well yeah. you should have a tape of it. I don't know if it's on there. But, um, and they asked, they, they wanted someone to speak about internships, and, you know, Gary said, what about me? And they asked me, and I did it. Well, you are an intern. And what happened? Christine was out there with her friends? Yeah. It was her school or something? No. No, it was that. Christine heard about it. And she put it together. She actually uh, went out and <laughs> wrote bad questions. I think she keeps Gorilla around to goof on. Oh, exactly. Oh, mascot. And all her friends were asking goofy questions, and he was getting really it, burned. It huh? was worse than just all her friends. She planted a bunch of her friends, but then she didn't feel she had enough. So as strangers walked into the room, she said, Psst, come here. And she said, could you do me a favor? We're playing a joke. Could you ask him a question? So she just rounded up playing old strangers. So oh. I handed them cards, too. Are you embarrassed? Because like, this was a big moment for you talking. No, it wasn't. I didn't think it was a big moment. I expected it because you guys wanted to do this to Gary. No, we heard that you that you didn't have a clue that this was happening. No, no, no Robin, that Robin, let me say Robin. this. The day before he gave this speech, yeah. he was very nervous. And he said, I don't know what I'm going to say. I have to go home and write my speech. And he said, I might get goofed on. Because just, just this it's happened just, before. Oh, he had. So I expected it, but I didn't. I, I didn't. I thought you guys were going to do it because yeah. last year Sandy was supposed to do that to Gary, and Sandy was talking to Fred about doing it. And you were probably thinking Christine was swooning while she was watching you. Uh, Absolutely not. You were trying me. to impress her. No, 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 no. I, I'll tell you. I was. I was like kind of bummed that she came out. I <laughs> came. I was like, because I, I knew I was probably going to make a, an idiot of myself. But I. Just, well, let's find out if you did. Let's I'll just, tell you one thing, Howard. If he was expecting it. He certainly didn't act like a guy who was prepared. Right, because he was getting thrown. Now, this is Gorilla's opening statement, which he had on a... Uh, ripped out of a loose-leaf notebook. Oh, and, no. and No, it was on the back of a fax. On the back of a fax. All right, so, yeah. so he had he had written a, an opening statement. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. The much-anticipated uh, Steve the Gorilla. The great orator. Here. The great orator, Steve Gorilla, <laughs> addressing exactly. a, an audience of young college students. So I was really, really nervous. Oh. Right. Big dry mouth. And oh, it's been great. It's been an excellent opportunity. Uh, I'll turn it over to Steve Gorilla first, and then we'll turn it over to John. They'll just tell you a little bit about who they are and how they got where they are, and then we'll just open it up for questions. <laughs> how they got where they are, which is nowhere. <laughs> how they got where they are. <laughs> well, the guy comes in here at 4 o'clock in the morning, works for free. Somewhere. Nobody respects him. <laughs> how he got where he was. Somewhere. Yeah, he got here on the subway. Good night. <laughs> That's interesting. Big buildup. Like, we don't just take anybody. Yeah. And how we got to it. In fact, we didn't even want to hire Gorilla. Gorilla had to qualify. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, both. Um, I was going to start out with a joke. Um, joke. This whole walks into a bar with a poodle underneath her arm. <laughs> no. Um, no. Uh, my name's... <laughs> I'm totally uncomfortable. What are you doing? He, non sequiturs. Nobody understands what he's doing. There's not a laugh in the house. Not a laugh in the house. All you right. don't hear a peep. Well, uh, it's like a morgue. <laughs> uh, I thought I would lighten it up with a little bit of uh, jokes. Humor. 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 So they'd open up with a little jokes. A little jokes. Guy walks into a whore. Guy walks into a bar with a portal on his arm. Uh, no, just kidding. I'm sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> lost confidence halfway through it. I, I didn't have confidence. To begin I, with, so. I have, yeah, but why'd you do a Jackie impression? Why don't yeah. you just go up and talk? That's all. I just want to hear what you do. That's what be you yourself. Yeah, and you I mean, at least have a joke. If you're gonna say I'm gonna start off with a joke, do it. If you're gonna do it in Jackie's Commit. voice, have a joke. Commit to it. Hey, but you gotta explain yeah. it. All right, I've never done this before, so. Yeah. But you never spoke to people before? <laughs> Not in front of a big audience like that. <laughs> Not in front of a big audience. <laughs> be yourself, even. If being yourself is like the lowest thing in the oh. world. <laughs> I was going to say, even when Jackie's a step up, be yourself. Right. Oh. Gorilla, and I started out about two years working on... <laughs> um, working for the house. Wait, what did he say? Wait, wait, Frank. I, uh, Calm down for a second. I, just, I want to hear every nuance of this. Is, he, is, is that he, as loud as you can make it? Did he say, I'm sorry? 
No, I started oh. out working on something. Wait, wait, wait. I walks into a bar with a poodle oh. in his arm. No, um, my name's Steve Grillo, and I started out about two years working on... Thanks. Um, working for the Howard Stern Show. What are you thinking? What's that? I was just... <laughs> I don't. I don't remember the situation. Why? Hey, you a loser? I think he was pausing for applause that wasn't there. No, I, my name is. No, Steve no, no. <sighs> I got no. <laughs> I couldn't talk. It wouldn't come out. I wouldn't do. But what was the thanks for? Did somebody? I don't know. I just. I, I. Maybe. But they didn't shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for not shooting me. Oh man, that's great. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> and I started out about two years working on. <laughs> Thanks. Um, working for the Howard Stern Show. It started out where I just I was listening to the show one day and I found out Howard had mentioned the um, the address of the radio station. It was on Madison Avenue and Hunter College is only on Hunter. Lexington. So I decided to see where it was and I found it's only ten blocks from my school. So then I heard wow. Gary mention they were looking for internships <laughs> and uh, interns and I um Indoing. sent in a resume and unfortunately I didn't get called the first time but I didn't get discouraged and that was like in March. <laughs> what a resume. Um, t the best part to me is how he discovered where we were. He's like a great yeah. explorer. Yeah, Columbus. <laughs> he uh, was at Hunter. We were on Madison. Bosco it was Grillo. only 10 blocks away. <laughs> Magellan. <laughs> so I started out with my scouts. Yeah. It was it was resistance. I got out my gumbus. <laughs> <laughs> my gumbus. Where's my gumbus? I had a lot of resistance. Uh, <laughs> a lot of gumbus. I didn't get discouraged. <laughs> I didn't get this garage. I saw it was March. This is, he's going through all this for a, a, a job that pays nothing. Imagine when he has to look for a real job. I did not get picked the first time. Yeah, for, to work for free. Much to my chagrin. I don't know if I'd brag about that. I sent in my resume. I'm not a gwitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not a gwitter. I have it was only the 10 blocks away. <laughs> <laughs> I could find it. <laughs> I could find a building. How did they get in the Howard Stern show? I turned right at Lexington. World, here I come. <laughs> you know, he's been waiting a month for this. I haven't been waiting. And it's so much worse Is than it you worse than you thought it was going to be? Uh, yeah. You didn't think it was going to be no. this bad? I know. I, I anticipated this. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Lindsay, 597. Five, oh, we haven't even gotten to Christine's questions yet. Uh, uh, All right. <laughs> She's probably dancing back there. <laughs> so, it, um, um, I'm real nervous, obviously. <laughs> I just say I gotta. How many people? How many people are watching? Him? This is some speech. It's, it's, I gotta tell you, it's only like forty or fifty people. Right. Oh. Are you really nervous? A big crowd you, like you got that. a pee in your pants or something? <laughs> no, I just couldn't talk. I was uh, whatever. I was dung died. <laughs> I was dung died. <laughs> I was dung died. <laughs> I didn't get discouraged, and that was like in oh. March. So it, um, um, I'm real nervous, obviously. <laughs> so uh, come, come the following. See how you bowled us over. Yeah. <laughs> September, I heard they were looking for another internship, so I sent another resume and a, a, a letter, which luckily got Gary's attention, and I got called for an interview. And finally, I was. You know, <laughs> this is the only letter we got. <laughs> I was excited to get the interview, and I tried to be, you know, professional and stuff. And I walked in. <laughs> and professional and stuff. Stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I tried. I tried to be professional and stuff. But I had the, the stage fried. Yeah. <laughs> be, you know, professional and stuff. And I walked in, <laughs> and Gary had a totally shaved head. And, like, that was the first time I had seen Gary. And the only time I had seen him was on TV, and he had, like, really long, curly hair. And here I am looking Gary in the face. And he's bald, and I, I, I almost bit a hole in my lip, you know, from trying to stop laughing so much. <laughs> yeah, I guess when you do, it, that's that's the one good thing about his speech. He is on it. When you see Gary the first time in person, it is. <laughs> no, he saw me the day after, not oh, the first time. I see. Ever. <laughs> I think when these people just see you. Yeah. You, 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 get, you get hypnotized by the teeth and the gums yeah. and the. You sort, and of the get, you sort of get caught up in that when you yeah, talk. Yeah. Keep talking and turn. <laughs> <laughs> the teeth and the gums. Because you can't believe it, right? It's it's kind of distracting at first. Yeah. And did you have your mustache shaved off at that point? No. No. No, just the bald head. Yeah, and, and then all of a sudden bad. his face is like he even more his, prominent. He had his bald head. <laughs> And he's big deed. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like the hardest interview that I ever had to go through because <laughs> every time Gary looked away, I like kind of chuckled. <laughs> so I, I did this. Um, <laughs> now you're rolling. <laughs> I um. They're with me now. 
I, I did the interview with Gary, and it went really well, but he had um, um picked someone else. But um, he seemed to be interested in me because, you know, he said... Because... Said, <laughs> 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 it's like listening to a retard. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait till he relaxes during Q&A and the uh, profanity uh, starts. Oh, really? Uh, you know, really, you can't even talk. Okay. okay. So, so some people aren't and able to articulate it. No, but I mean, your, your, well dream, your dream was to be on the radio. No. Not at well, all. you said when you came to us, you said you want to be on the radio. Yeah. I want what was in that letter you wrote to Gary? They got you an interview. I just I said I wanted to work. I would I would very much like to work for the show. Basically, the show. I wish we could get that letter. <laughs> no, no, it's the show. Hey, where's his letter? Oh, come on, <laughs> it's gotta be the tapes are bad enough. Let's just stick to the tapes. The tapes are great. Play the tapes. How he, you, you can see why he got rejected. You should have read the letter to the audience. Yeah. You should see why he got rejected. It was like the letter from a mental patient. <laughs> you know, he said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that Steve's reminding me of this, we get a lot of, we get a lot of, um, I get a ton of people asking about doing internships, and I tell everyone, send in a resume. Uh, this was back in the early days, and I, I remember vividly now, Steve sent in, he had torn, you know, two pieces of paper out of a spiral notebook, cut the edges off, and so they all went like that. Why, why do you guys do this? What, just explain what's going on? No, why do you guys go to college? What is this again? It's it's for the International Broadcasting Society. Why do you do this? Because it's good. It helps people. I went to a, a seminar it like helps this. Did yeah. you think this helps people? Yeah, I do. All right. You know, with a pair of scissors, and That's it was funny. handwritten with a lot of cross outs and everything. But you know what? I remember the. Jo it was a really heartfelt letter about how he really wanted to be in radio and how See? much it meant to him. And even though there were a lot of other people whose resumes were uh, were were typed up really nice. There was something about Steve's resume like that Gary. was really like... So Fred, this is my staff. <laughs> Gary sounds wacky, too. I know. He took a letter that was handwritten with cross-outs. <laughs> <laughs> because it made him feel superior. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you want to show someone who at least shown a little initiative and, like, got their resume printed up? Yeah, you guys wouldn't know anything about somebody who was, you know, who really wanted the job and you knew would come in every day and lacked some other skills. Besides, what we were asking him to do <laughs> was, wasn't anything huge. He was monitoring So you say you, he had limited intelligence. No, I didn't say that. And you felt that. comfortable with it. No, not at all. That's what you're saying. No, I didn't. Maybe I, you don't mean to say it, but that's what you're, you're saying. Hey, I selected it because I saw this guy had limited intelligence, and we weren't asking said, him to do anything that great. I said he lacked some skills, but he had a lot of heart, and I knew he would do a great job. It sounded like he lacked all skills. No, yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> he ripped out a piece of paper. He could read a clock and get here on time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I did good choosing, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just knew that he would die to do this internship and would do a great job for us, even despite the fact that the letter went like that. <laughs> Gary cracking well, himself up. I, I did that and hoped to get his attention because I figured everybody else right. was going to be sending these like incredibly typed up resumes that were. Couldn't you at least not have cross outs on it? Like, wouldn't you want to write a note without cross outs? I don't. I, yeah, I guess I would. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't have no idea. I'll never forget one of the lines in this letter was, it was something but about... Why would you put cross outs in a letter? Seriously. I don't remember if I, mean, I Wouldn't did. you at least like say, I better rewrite this. I have cross outs. I'm I, writing a letter. I, I, you know what I did? I, I did it in class. I was in class and I just wrote it and I came right over here. I just wanted to do it. That's it. I just did it on the spur of the moment. Oh, I see. There was one line in the letter that had that said something to the effect of, "Gary, I got something." It was like heavy on my heart to no. work in radio or something no. like that. Yeah. I, I said, I think I said I had like a burning desire to like I hear, a burning desire like in my heart to work on the show. And you can't even talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, um, did the interview with Gary, but he said, you know, look, we still have some other stuff in the office that needs to be done. You know, give me a call in a couple of weeks. So I called him back and I started out on the show by um, logging tapes that weren't <laughs> logged. So I did that from about... <laughs> logging tapes that, that wasn't logged. I was logging tapes that wasn't logged. Well, why would you log tapes that were logged? <laughs> I don't know. November to January, and then when that was done, Gary said, look... His story well, he's given every detail. Yeah. I logged November to January. And I took the tape, and I put it into the tape player. Well, and I'm sure after a college kid hears this, they really want to be on radio. Uh, yeah, I got to like write down some stuff about Howard for like six months. I'm a logger. I wrote in the log. Fucking open, so why don't you go work in promotions? And I did, you know, because I... I wanted to work for the show, but I wasn't going to give up, you know, doing it. So <laughs> dream. while I was in promotions, I remember there was a lot of the interns there that were like, 
and promotions, they do a lot of promotional events outside the radio station, like concert halls, giving out bumper stickers, and it's kind of like crappy work, but <laughs> everybody didn't want to do it. And remember, I was the only person that... Everybody didn't want to do it. See, I go ahead and hand out bumper stickers, but I had to log it. They got a lot of crappy work. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do good work, like work for free. Yeah. See, I, have I about, want to work my way up to working for free. <laughs> I, I have to admit something to Steve right now. I didn't I didn't remember this story when he told it to me. Yeah. Steve climbing the corporate ladder. <laughs> and and uh, if I sent him to promotions, it means that I just didn't want him. Right. But I must no, have liked he, him and brought him back. Right. Because usually that's where... He grew when, on you. When somebody, when somebody wants to work for me, I send them over there if we don't no, want No, no, no. You said I was done logging the tapes. And you said, look, we have nothing else for you to do. You know. nothing, <laughs> nothing else have for you to do. <laughs> If not nails. Gary used to complain to me. Hey, Steve's a Guido from Brooklyn. Oh, that's not true. Oh, go on. That's not true at all. Far from being Why a Guido. Why would I do that? I'm Far a from being a Guido. Far from being a Guido. <laughs> Find out for everything. And no matter what it was, how stupid it was or anything, I was always there signing up for it. And I was always <laughs> asking people if they needed help. Or, you know, I, was, I tried to get my face and everything that happened at the radio station and eventually paid off because it was an opening on the Howard Stern show and Gary saw that I was always helping everybody out and Cause he's on my he days. asked me to come on. Because what? Because he's on my vase. You gotta my get your vase, vase was in, in everything. Your vase is your virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I got my face in uh, my face. I was in Zia. I was here. I was there. I was up. I was down. I was ooh. I was ah. I was here. I was in every crappy thing. I my was in every face. My Any face. Grab a job, but my face was in the grab. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, All it's me. tough because I have to be there at five in the morning and With I don't face. have a social life anymore, but it's the best internship. I think that anybody can ever get. Oh yeah, and I don't have a part of it is because life. these guys are the best. Oh, you were out drinking with Christine all night. Okay, now, now that I got a place in the city, I'm able to have a social life. Oh. Yeah, people to work with, even stirring John as much as you bust my balls. But um, <sighs> really, like work, like my um, I guess my title would be um, news intern. I news news intern. News intern. Boy, you're really now you're yapping up a storm. I'm starting to loosen up. Coming out with the news, I pull like interesting articles out of the paper. That's the scariest part. He's working for you. <laughs> Pulling out interesting articles. <laughs> you should see what interests oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> him. What, what interests him? <laughs> hey, do you ever use anything he pulls out of the paper? Occasionally, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> one day you ought to just pull out what interests him. Well, you heard him try to do the news one day. You yeah. know oh, was what was interesting if his life depended on oh. You want to interview him for your book? Maybe he's gotten better. <laughs> For her, and you know, running around for Gary, and I guess my most important, most famous job is doing Howard's potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so an internship. He does that good. That he does very well. We're training him to be a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> that can like stress from like doing menial work to like even helping Howard out, and I've got I've been lucky enough to you know I'm not exactly involved like they are, but I've interned for you know Bud Bongo. I did a uh, research for Howard's book, and I had the luck of um. Um, interning for the pay-per-view, which was probably the best experience of my life. Oh, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably, you know, internships. I like. I know a couple people that have graduated already with a communications degree, and I said, what are you doing now? And I said, well, I'm looking for work. I said, you doing any internships? And they said, well, no. I said, why not? They said, you know, unfortunately, my school doesn't stress that. I'm even that. bored of myself. Oh, oh man. <laughs> That's unbelievable. You're, you're missing. He's already used the word stress wrong like three times and he uses it wrong throughout the entire interview. What did he say? Um, I, you'd have to roll it back. Stress? I don't know. He, he he's a he's a blur to me. I love the I said and he said. Yeah, yeah. Then, so he I said. said so this guy said. this guy says he's gonna do an internship. So I right. says uh, you're gonna graduate. Did you do an internship? He, and says, he says no. no I didn't so I says uh, I says to him uh, yes. And then he retorted to me about <laughs> it. <laughs> and then I made a clever rejoin the bag. And I wanted to stress to them. And then when it's stressed, you see, I had a stressed howl. How is this internship helping you get into radio? Is it really? Well, well I, I, said, I have a good resume, I guess. Yeah? Well, this is the top-rated radio show. Oh, okay. I was able to go out and find one on my own, but my school... If your school doesn't 
go and offer it to you, I would definitely stress go out and look for one. Stress. stress. Because my school, I, I didn't stress. know that you can get an internship. He used it right. No, no, that's how he did. In my school, until I actually got an internship, and I had to go through all these different channels to go and say, look, I have an internship. Oh, what do I God. do to get credit? Are people sleeping at this point? Yeah. Oof. I mean, are they like zoned out? I guess so. Yeah. Uh, they must be. They, they must. They must be. They must have the same face that the audience of Saturday Night Live has after they <laughs> they do like a thirtieth bit of the night, <laughs> like, like woozy. You know, and it was really hard. But you know, I had to bust my balls, and I actually got, you know, delegate credit through the school. This is a, this is a speech to college kids. I had to buzz my balls. I had to buzz my balls. It I had to dressed. go through channels and buzz <laughs> yeah. my balls. So I said to myself. Steve, do you buzz your balls? And I said, yes, as long as I bring my vase down to the studio. If they see my vase. Yeah. <laughs> but if, if they don't stress it enough, I'll go out and get it on my own. Because to me, if I didn't have this internship and I graduated with a degree, I don't think you'd get anywhere. Huh. But like, you're able to work with the people. Steve, I didn't do an internship. Well, that was back in what? Sixties, oh. Stone Age. Oh, it was back in the, oh. it, was, it was almost 1980. I mean, I was 1976 I graduated college. Well, you know, you're a very talented guy. Right, okay. You didn't need to do it. All right. All right. Hey, I, I, I got a lot out of this. I, I got free hair for my for my head. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm able, I see it as I'm working with the best people in the industry and nobody else is any better. And I, it, it kind of sucks because after this, everything everything else is going to be pretty boring. So um, like I guess speech. I'll uh, turn it over to Stuttering John now and he could try to say something. He could try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good line. <laughs> video. Take a long time. Uh, you actually, have to sit uh, through his speech? Well, John's speech isn't long, but I think you should go right to Gorilla's question. Yeah, all right. Let me take a break and then we'll go right to where Christine's friends ask him questions. <laughs> guess what I was lucky enough to find in our files? Oh, Steve Gorilla's letter? Oh. Yeah. Oh. You can just go over them as spellings, but go to page two of the highlighted area for his heartfelt uh, comments. This is what Gorilla wrote to Gary to get the. This is the handwritten letter that has uh, about. Let me just see what Gary stomach. accepted it. <laughs> you have to see this because you should see the amount. We circled every. Every misspell? Uh huh. He misspells resume. You listen to he. Dear Mr. Delabate. <laughs> I am going to try to get right to the point. Yeah. My but name is my name is Steve Grillo. I'm 19 and attending my second semester at Hunter College. I have not declared a major yet, but I am leaning toward communications. I am writing W R I T T I N G mm -hmm. this letter, hoping you will feel my sincerity. S I N C E R E T Y. Sincerity. I am an avid listener of the Howard Stern Show. I have already submitted a resume, R E S U, with a thing over the U. Oh no! Yeah, the, the little the accent the is over accent the accent is over the U. Now throughout the now, but you got to see that this is the fun. I got to print this in a book somewhere. <laughs> Give it to me. So R E S yeah, you can put it in your book. R E S U, and over the U is the accent mark. Now then he says, he, the then he says resume here, and this time he decides to put. He puts it over the U and puts it between the E and the S. Because <laughs> he's gotten to resume. So he has a two apostrophe things coming out. <laughs> Here's the word writing again with two T's. All right, let's see. Oh, I like this one. I wake up every day listening to the show, thinking about the experience. Ah. E X P I E R E N C E. Oh, Eggs. Dyslexia, man. Well, Come on. No, it's called no, going to a dictionary. Stupidity. <laughs> like I, told I, said, you, I wrote it in class. I wrote it. I woke up every day listening to the show, thinking about the experience I could get from being an intern. Like I said before, I know I have to start out at the bottom. And what a better place to start out on the bottom than with a show that's on top. Yeah, yeah, yo. I know I could tell you what a hardworking and devoted person I am, but I'm sure you'll hear that all the time. I'm also sure people. Uh, there, just to say they work for the Howard Stern Show. I'm not looking for fame right now. I'm looking to learn. I have this desire inside of me that eats at me every day. <laughs> you're a sick so little, you're a sick little dude. <laughs> What's I have this that? because it just sounds so <laughs> ridiculous. I what, have this desire inside of me that eats at me every day. At me, at me. It's an Elsa. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he, he told me he's in here. His stomach's getting all nervous because we're goofing on him. Oh, how bad is it? It's pretty bad. Well, what do you have to feel like you have duty or something? No, it just it feels like I drank battery acid or something. Really? It really hurts. You might have an Elsa. Yeah. No, I, I've been through that whole process of people checking for like I take. Yeah, it's called going to the doctor. Yeah, yeah, someone stuck a tube down my throat and they like X-rayed my stomach. I don't have one. Really. Not yet. After this, you'll have one. Yeah. 
Just burn the whole thing. Then, right then now. he gets. Then he writes. I submitted my first resume. Now the word resume is broken down into two words. <laughs> R E S U with the thing over the U now, and then M E so, is a separate word. So it's resume me. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying everything. I figured maybe one spell. of them got to be. How do you right? spell the word admit? A D M I T T. No, no, that's wrong. Uh, See, you spelled it wrong in here too. It's one two. I, I have a very bad problem spelling. A D M I D. Like I. <laughs> at the mid All right, let me continue with your uh, lecture because I, I like to know what my interns are doing when they go out and speak in public, representing the show. Oh, boy. <laughs> now it's question and answer. People are going to ask gorilla right. questions. Gorilla, how long have you been uh, practice? How long did you have to practice microwaving potatoes? Before? How long did you have to practice microwaving the potato the potatoes before Howard let you do it? Got the job of hero. How long did you have to practice microwaving potatoes? Well, that's sort of like a job that's like sort of handed down. It started out with stirring John, but Howard caught him in the bathroom not washing his hands and then doing the potatoes. What? So he sort of like got really pissed and he wasn't allowed to do it anymore. And then it was handed out to Ganji, but Ganji sort of like, he's unmotivated to do things. So Ganji uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> down to me and it seems like a, de like, you know, a demeaning job. Is that the right word? Yeah. Demeaning job. But, uh, sort of it like can't be any more demeaning job. <laughs> Cleaning toilets is a step up. But you do handle it well, at least. The other guys can't even get it together to do it. I love how he's putting down the other interns. Right. Angie was I was not just kidding motivated. around. That know, but it's got me notoriety, and I'm in Howard's book, which is a number one bestseller. And I'm the low man on the totem pole, and that's the low man on the totem pole's job. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You're talking about voice before. Are you the voice behind the Zima commercial? <laughs> no. What did she say? She asked if I was the voice on the Zima commercial. What's the Zima commercial? It's, it's that new beer. That it's a commercial it's we run clear. a lot. It we run like, that? It sounds like real. So, okay, so he laughs at that. I okay. thought it was cute. Fun. It's huh. cute now. I'm not, but yeah, I think they did get that idea from me. What's the Zima? Did, you didn't see that for the new bar? That that new, um, <laughs> that's funny she said that. That that uh, that new commercial. It's it's. This is all going on in front of an audience. I know. I can't believe people stayed. I can't believe parents are sending their kids to these lectures thinking they're going to learn something about radio from these guys. Who else has a question? In the orange. What did he say? I have no idea. Uh, do you uh, aspire to become an on-air personality? And this is the gorilla. Huh. Um, I wouldn't exactly. I'm not exactly going to be. I I can't stand spinning music or anything like that. Oh, but what I he doesn't like that. No, I don't. Right. No. Well, what do you expect to do? What uh, do you expect to do in radio? I'm not sure yet. Oh. <laughs> I think he expects to deliver the mail. Yeah. yeah. The spark to be is like something like involved in a radio show that like like the Howard Stern show. Even even in TV, I'm taking t some TV courses at school. So as far as an on-air personality, I I don't know. I, like right now, I I'm interested in like like a lot of the TV stuff that I'm doing in class. So I think I could probably take it anywhere right now. Oh so, boy! Cook Letterman's potatoes. <laughs> I'd like to cook Letterman's potatoes. Yeah. Or maybe Jay Leno's potatoes. I'm not fuzzy. You really don't know. You don't have a clue what I, you're I, doing. You know what? I just had a feeling that I was waiting for like the bad question, so I was like, really wasn't paying attention to what I had to say. I, I was just like, <laughs> it was I else. wouldn't pay attention to what you had to say. I'll <laughs> uh, be quiet. Jay says, "What do you want to do in radio?" He's like, "Well, I could do uh, taking television courses. Well, I could take it anywhere." Courses. So, why don't you go do a television internship? Do you want to be in television? The guy said, "What do you want to do in radio?" I have a burning desire I to do television. <laughs> I don't know. Dear Mr. Letterman, <laughs> I have a burning desire that eats at me. So here is my best e <laughs> Uh You know what? I thought about speech classes and why sound like everybody else. I, I think my uh, <laughs> accent's pretty unique and original. So yeah, yeah. at least you know if you hear my voice. You know <laughs> Not if you're from I Brooklyn. If, if you sound if you sound like everybody else does, what's the fun? <laughs> yeah. You were starting to get a little angry. Oh, yeah, I, I did, but I just I had no idea what to say. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you were not interested in uh, Christine Scott Vinter. Then I, I, I was wondering why I heard on the air that you were like calling her like three thirty a.m. Uh, no, it's not. Wow, they're goofing on you. The whole audience is goofing on you. Brutal. <laughs> what? Because I wanted to find out where she went. <laughs> now they're asking him why at three in the morning he was calling Christine yeah. Scott's intern. Where are you? <laughs> I, I want to find out where she was. Where, if where, you're not where, interested, where, why are you calling her at three in the morning? <laughs> Isn't it time for news? Clinton has it easier during the Whitewater discussion. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh boy, oh boy. I'd like to thank all of you for making this a really great day for Steve. Oh, <laughs> well, there it is. Uh, Very good, Steve. Uh, nice job. Uh, <laughs> you all shook up. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. You're not going to go back there and sulk now, are you? No, I'm not going to sulk, but I'm definitely not going to have a good weekend. All right. Oh, it's going to last all weekend? Oh, bad yeah. Feeling. Maybe by Sunday you'll forget. I, I can't shake these things. <laughs> I'm very sensitive. Christine's waiting for you back there. She'll comfort you. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's waiting to ignore you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you crying? No. He is a little. I'm crying. He is, right? Did he really? I'm not crying. No, I don't cry, man. Come I thought, on. That's good, man. You get some appearances out of this. People man. want to see you now. Oh, man. Right? Isn't that right, Gary? I am equal to Dajan. Get your teeth out of here, will you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can, yeah, Steve does appearances. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah, nice job yeah, answering those. available. Things. I thought his speech was funny. I think he should do question and answer wherever he goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, very good. Thanks for sharing. Uh, there it is. Uh, Steve the Gorilla Gorilla. And go do that speech again. How to be an intern. Speech. Yeah, it's good. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we have to teach Christine if she's going to do something, she should record it properly. That's and not thing. only that, somebody should have written the questions for her. Yeah, her yeah they could have been. Weren't a, great. They weren't. Did she write those herself? I guess well, so. she's not I didn't funny. Even know she was doing it. <laughs> she is not funny. She's pretty. She's not yeah. supposed to be funny. <laughs> Why didn't she tell us she was doing that? We would have written the questions. I don't know. Yeah. Again, you don't know. Again, you're out of it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, never on top Did of Did you know shows. that she no. was doing it, Gary? No, I didn't. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Again, he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Keep what is his stuttering, John? I have a, I have a, t I have a professor have on the a, air who just, a, a, I just can't believe that girl can't spell. He thinks he's like a, you know, a middle school spell. Well, first of all, how amazing is it? I'll have to ask the professor. Uh, professor? Uh, excuse me, one second, one second. Let me get the professor on here. Professor? Professor, how amazing is it to you that this guy's in college? Uh, it's, man, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, listen, let me say to me, as someone who te you teach college students? Well, I have, uh, I'm now predominantly in high school. Yeah. Um, we Where gorillas should be. Pardon? Where gorillas should be, high school. <laughs> right. All right. Hey, we got a lot of them, just trust me. <laughs> we're, we're in trouble this generation, aren't uh, we? It's bad. I mean, the spelling that I even get in high school, we have on computers, and we do newspapers, you know, in your book. We have mm -hmm. spell checkers with uh, a couple of programs that we use. And even to get the kids to even use that, oh, it's you know. difficult. It's unbelievable. I mean, you know. You Imagine gotta... you're applying for a job and you don't look. You, you see, you're, you're struggling with the word resume. Why don't you look it up? Well, hey. What and the, his only excuse is he wrote it in class. Right. Oh, Lord. Which, I mean, in class where you should be paying attention. Well, why can't they have a pocket dictionary? I mean, that's what I did in college. Dear Gary, I want a job. J-O-P. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, right? Are you sure it's like, you know, someone that's not in the elementary school or middle school? I mean, that's that's how bad it's So I guess, I guess you're perfect at everything, right, ma'am? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's why I, I try to carry a dictionary with me. But actually, I used to enter in spelling contests, and I used to be pretty good. Well, good for you, ma'am. Oh, Gorilla, come on. It's pathetic. <laughs> it is pathetic. But I have a problem oh. spelling, you know. Yeah, but we're also talking and everything else. Well, How do you get it? What school is that again you go to? Hunter. Hunter. Hunter College. Hunter. They're, they're going to graduate him, you know. I know. Bang. That's bad. Bang. Jeez. Where are you from? I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas. We're up here for a journalism uh, conference at Columbia. Hey, don't even try to challenge this woman. This woman is a full professor. <laughs> don't even try and challenge her. I, I love bet it. You're you flat, lady. What? <laughs> What'd you hey, say? Lady. You bet she's flat? <laughs> like, I, like I tell my kids, man, if you can't spell, then you can't get a good job, especially in journalism. Oh, he's not going to get any job. <laughs> he works for free. What job are you? I bet what? you, I'll bet you end up in the mailman's office just like your dad. Nope. <laughs> Want to bet? Sure. You're going to be a mailman. Nope. Way no way. You're going to be a mailman. Hey, my Why? dad's a retired mailman. He can spell. I bet you your dad can yeah, spell. You know, Gorilla doesn't even qualify as a good mailman. He can't spell. <laughs> I don't know that a Gorilla could pass the mailman test. <laughs> hey, if he can't spell, how can he read? <laughs> well, he doesn't read. Sure special did. delivery. Are you really going to graduate, you think? I don't want to try. Yeah. yeah. Do you write papers in school? Um, yeah, I guess so. When it, um, when he guess yeah, so. I guess so. He doesn't so. know. <laughs> he doesn't even know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know if they qualify. <laughs> I'm not sure what's a paper. <laughs> what's a paper? Yeah, I write babies. <laughs> I write babies, B A B E R A. <laughs> <laughs> so you write papers, right? Yeah, when it's 
You know, I have to. <laughs> In between resumes. <laughs> I want to know what the teachers think of his writing. Do the teachers ever critique your writing? Well, yeah, I guess When so. they stop laughing. <laughs> 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 I'm like, what kind of grades do you get? Like, you know, um, like B's, I guess. I don't know. I really don't... You I don't guess, even know what grade you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what an average. Like. I have like a B average, so I guess I get B's. So you get B's, so you don't know what you get on the papers. B's it can that? range. Sometimes I'll get C's. Sometimes I'll get B's. Maybe I'll get an A's. Really? You've gotten A's? Does he yeah. know how to use a dictionary? Do you know how to use a well, dictionary? Kathy Tobin he actually. Stands on. Oh. <laughs> he stands on. Can he spell dictionary? For, 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 my, for, my, for my birthday, Kathy Tobin got me a little computer to spell check. Why don't you I, bring in that. bring in one of your papers? You got an A on. I want to see it. If I could find one. Well, you don't know where you keep them. <laughs> if you uh, got I, an I, A, I, I think you should oh, keep that on. paper. I think that's framed. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you're a mailman. Nope. I'm telling you. <laughs> what do you think you're gonna be? I don't know yet. An executive. <laughs> An e executive. 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 I could go anywhere. <laughs> An executive potato goes. <laughs> I say you're going to be a microwave chef. You're going to be a bald civil servant. Oh. That's what I predict. <laughs> Lifelong. <laughs> Are we done? How do you spell occupant? <laughs> Resident throws me. No, sir, all know right, we're we're you're gonna do fine. Don't worry. Where's you're a college grad. He's doing that. fine. <laughs> Professor, you don't know. He has many skills. As Gary said, he has a lot of heart. It's hard. dyslexia. Right. Right. Fun. Right. Where do the occupants? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Professor <laughs> laughing. <as> she just <laughs> 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 Chuckling. Believe me, believe me. Not everyone in this room is such a big genius. So let's you know. Aside from myself, <laughs> uh, right. maybe Robin. Uh, other than that, <laughs> no genius is here. Uh, that's all. I'll oh, listen. You're doing fine. You handle yourself very well. Yeah, yeah. All right, Gorilla. Just don't speak or write. <laughs> right. And you know what? I think Christine's going to go out with you. That's yeah. what I think. I, I think, think she's in love with you. She's yours. No. <laughs> she's yours. Why don't you write her a love letter? Yeah. Dear Grisdine. G R I S T E N. Grisdine. I want to tell you the burning heart I have. Yes. I have a knot in my stomach. I have a burning desire that's eating at me. What is it, stuttering? Uh, I want to talk to a, an, an administrative coordinator of Hunter College who wants to defend Steve. Right. Really? All right. Well, there you go. All right. <laughs> Sir. That takes nerve. Sir, this is, this yeah. is not a real good walking advertisement for Hunter. I know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, okay, I'm an admissions coordinator, an undergraduate admissions coordinator at Hunter. Uh, first, uh, with Steve's permission, and only, I can only do this with Steve's permission, I'll discuss his admissions to All Hunter right. and record. Uh, it's up to Steve. I can't. Steve, would that be okay? That's fine with me. That's fine okay. with Steve. Go ahead. Okay, first, when uh, Steve was admitted, and Steve's doing okay at Hunter. He's doing a lot better than a lot of other students we, we see here. Is he considered uh, Steve a... Was, what, sorry? Is he considered like a special student? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm being serious. Like, no, 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 no. We have a special program for students who uh, are not admissible as regular freshmen coming in out of high school. It's called SEEK, and Steve is not a SEEK student, and that's not the degraded SEEK students either, because a lot of them do very well here at Hunter as well. So he's not like one of the retards? No. I mean, he's considered one of the bright... Uh, no, I didn't say that either. All right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know Steve I know personally. Not, I, I, heard I, him on the I, radio. I, I hate school, and I, I don't... <laughs> no, no, so Steve is doing fine at Hunter, first right. of all. His grade point average Yeah, but what fine. does that say about Hunter? No, well, no, well, when Steve was admitted to coming out of high school... Uh, the Nazareth High School, if I know Steve gave me permission, so I'm going to talk. Yeah. He was admitted in special conditions, Steve. You were originally allocated to, I think it was Kingsboro? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this sounds like Back a special case. Well, no, I, I, you know what? I didn't register at all for Kingsboro. I know, I know. I'm saying no. you were admitted to Kingsboro, but you met with actually my supervisor, the associate director of admissions. Yeah, and I. He, I applied Hunter as a reallocated student, which is fine. And what is a reallocated student? Re well, reallocated just means he was admitted to another college within the City University of New York system. We have 17, 18 colleges, senior and junior colleges, and he was close enough to our regular uh, freshman admissions criteria. He didn't quite make it. He was close enough. He was close enough. He took a chance on him. That we took a chance on him. Exactly. Right. So he, he barely got into Hunter. They rolled dice. So uh, I think I, I think I'll make it. I'll make it even more interesting for you. I got into Hunter because the wrestling, like, the, the wrestling coach got me. Oh, I see. So yeah. I think then oh, that the what you're really coach. saying is. Is that the average Hunter student is a lot brighter than Steve. It's just that Steve got in by the skin of his teeth in his wrestling. No, no, no. Steve has excellent 
exceeded what many students coming in under his circumstances has actually. Oh, really? So, uh, many students. Yeah, but he's in communication. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I was a communications well, no, no. major. Anybody could pass that. No, 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 I took communications courses here at Hunter on the side. Yeah, uh, I don't Jones think you were sweating things. through those. They, well, okay, some of them. Uh, he mentioned about the in-camera edit thing that he did. I actually took that cast. All I know is, uh, let me tell you something. This guy can't even spell resume. Okay, well, that's uh, that's where I got it. not defend Steve. And if I could talk to Steve for a second. <laughs> yeah. Steve, yeah. Hunter College has not one, but two computer centers. <laughs> right. Why don't you, I mean, I don't care if you, you wrote it this was, class, you take five minutes, oh. you run up to the computer center, you sit in front of a computer, you type it in, and you spell check, you spell check. Of course, it, you of course. It. You, if you care, you do that yeah. Kind of I mean, you want to, you want to exceed, you don't, uh, you don't, you want to excel. All right. Rather, not exceed, excel. What's oh, it going to hang around with him. <laughs> you want to excel. You must, you must certainly uh, go in and use the computer. I know. I, I just, I convinced my parents to buy a computer. I got a computer oh, at home, and I'm using it. Well, uh, there's two computers in this here. At <laughs> you had to get it at home. There's also a ten-story. Yeah, but you, you got to also realize that that school doesn't. You don't know about these things. You got to like find them out by accident. They don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you go <laughs> go investigate? <laughs> All right, listen, listen. I had enough I with just him. Found the restroom. You know how it is. You have to go through channels. Yeah, I got it. Please, <laughs> I mean, you, you do have to make a little effort. They, they're not going to just, you know. Send Steve to my office. So I Did you hear Hunter that College speech he gave? Yes, exactly. You know what? With, with your permission, I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to put Steve in touch with you right now, okay. and I would like him to go to your office, and, and you will give him a walking tour of the college? I will take him around to every crook and, and crevice that this college has to offer. All right. And you have my permission to pull his pants down and spank him. I was going to say, he should be caned. <laughs> yes. All right. Hold on. Should be caned. <laughs> oh, All right, now you're gonna have someone who will, like a baby will walk you around and show okay. you where the computer. You is. I know where everything is now, but like when you when you first go into the the school, I see. it's like. All right, thank you. I gotta go now, exactly. Steve. Thank you. Thank yes. you for your uh, your speech. Okay. All right. You're an embarrassment to your school. <laughs> Even this guy. Embarrassment believe it. myself. Go pick up the phone out there with this guy, and I want okay. you to make a scheduled appointment to see him. That's really my, you need help. That's my gift to you. Thank you. I realized as you were talking, you must have had a birthday at some point. I get you get that's my right. gift to you. You can now go meet with this guy. I said the gift of higher education. All right. Thank you, it's Steve. The greatest the, gift you can. The do. greatest gift I can give you is the gift of learning. Thank you. Thanks. Hmm. Leslie West is going to join us for the news, but I got such a funny piece of tape. Maybe I'll save it for Monday. But What's that? This is so great. Want to hear it? Yeah, give me a preview. Okay. Steve Gorillo? Yeah. He's trying to be cool, so like his answering machine now, he keeps designing like special messages on his answering machine. Oh, really? You know how guys are with their answering machine? I think he's trying to be like Ralph. Because, you know, Ralph... Ralph is very inventive with his answering machine. Yeah, messages. and as annoying as the messages are, at least they're a little bit funny. Yeah, they're entertaining. Yeah. So now Gorillo's gotten into it, except he's trying to do outrageous things on his answering machine. And, like, he plays little clips of movies, uh -huh. but they're from movies nobody knows. Ooh. Yeah, they're Look retarded. It's, it's I'm a private convinced. joke, by the way. It's not a private joke. It is. It's about my friend Todd. He's from Canada. And I yeah, but dude, Simpsons. you sound so lame. Oh, he loves the... And then Gorilla afterwards puts a a voice on afterwards, okay? He puts like a cool guy voice, like a, a disc like jockey. Telephone voice. Yeah, like, you know, he tries to lower his voice. <laughs> but you got you to gotta hear this. I can't be goofy on my answer machine. Yeah. Dude, be whatever you want. It's just what do you want to project to people? And who wants to sit through this every and, time they try know, to call you? Well, he doesn't have any business. I sometimes right. think of what if people who are doing business with you are calling. They don't need your little antics. If they're doing business with you, I guarantee you, they hear this, they ain't doing business with you. <laughs> Hey, check this out. Listen to Gorilla. So, what are you in for? I moved here from Canada, and they think I'm slow, eh? I fell off the jungle gym, and when I woke up, I was in here. I start fires. Uh, you don't have to start a fire. Just do me a favor, leave your name, number, and a message, and I'll get back to you. Whoa. Hey, you don't. You don't have to start a fire. What? Just uh, leave your name and message, and I'll get back to you. Uh, you don't have to start a fire. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that cool? You don't have to start a fire. It's the uh, I like. Uh, you don't. Uh, have to start. Uh, yeah, the uh, you don't have to start a fire. Uh, <laughs> you try to be like a cool guy there. I'm uh, being goofy. 
Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, think I, don't think, I think you're cool. trying to be cool. Oh, man. Like, I am cool. You're trying to be cool. <laughs> I am cool. That reeks of a guy trying way too hard to be way too Mr. cool. I, it's, it's, it's over the edge. It's goofy. I like Answering message tells you a lot about a person's creativity and sort of where they're it, at. It, it, it was a per you have no creativity. Uh, yeah, okay. That's the lamest, None. worst it, thing but, I've but ever heard. Why would you understand it if it's a personal joke between me okay. and my friend? Real personal when you go, uh, you don't have to start a fire. I heard the girl on the tape goes... Fire. No, that has nothing and to do with it. You don't no, no, no. Start did, you hear, did you hear the first part of it? It's, who cares? If so nobody I gets care. it. It's my machine. Nobody I gets it. It's, it's my, so you want who, everyone calling and going, what an idiot. This joke? Everyone has to be who, in on the joke? Who calls me but my friends? Yep, so every one of your friends can tell what that joke is? 80% of Oh, I see. How come Gary can't tell what it is? Fred can't tell what it is? Jackie can't? Because Robin? We uh, they're can't? Not my, they're not my personal friends. Who's your personal friend? My friend Todd. My friend oh, Adam. Todd. Julie. Like, oh. everybody knows. Everyone gets that joke. Yes. And they crack up. Yes. And they, they, crack, they, up. And they crack up. Uh, yes. And what? when you say, I, you don't have to start a fire, that drives them wild. That that has nothing to do with it. I see. They're all as dopey as you, is what you say. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, if any of your friends are listening, they call up. They'll tell me that they think that's the suckiest, <laughs> lamest answering message in the world. I've had better. Yeah. Why bother? Why don't you work on I your don't career? Care. It's just an if. You know how long that took me? How long? Thirty seconds. Liar. Thirty seconds. Liar. I queued it up on my VCR. Okay. I put my phone to the thing. You don't and have I did to start a fire. Uh, you uh, don't have um, fire. You don't. Have, um, and I like that. You know, like like all of a sudden he's singing off the top of his head. I'm nonchalant. Um, yeah, yeah, right, nonchalant. <laughs> Um, you don't have to start a fire. Sophisticated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you have, a smoking jacket on? Or yeah. Yeah. And a little pipe. <laughs> when they hear this joke, they laugh. Every one of my friends loves I this. I swear to God, they split his dick in his eyes. 80% of my friends. <laughs> 80%. <laughs> At least eighty percent. <laughs> Julie and Adam, they all know. <laughs> Adam. You're a goofball. All right, oh, fine. God. My I don't got like business people calling. I don't out. got like business people. I got close friends who like the wall. I got machine. my personal friends calling, <laughs> and they know the Jews of that I am. But. So what are you in for? I moved here from Canada, and they think I'm slow, eh? Now, what are you in for? I moved from Canada. They think I'm small, A. Eh? No, slow. Slow. slow My a. friend Todd is from Canada. Yeah. He speaks, you know, A, A. Yeah. A. Of course, everyone okay. from Canada And we get around that he's slow. It was on The Simpsons. I thought so, it was so funny. For that one guy, Todd, you clogged up your whole goddamn machine. Yeah. And you sound like a total retard to everyone else. <laughs> so and what? Julie doesn't understand. The <laughs> Julie. <laughs> Julie's the, uh, Julie's the Julie one who Julie understands it. 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 was Julie's Julie idea. Julie and Julie retard. Julie put it on her answering machine. So, so Julie's yeah. not friends with Todd. I am. Yeah. Right. I'm friends with Todd and I'm a retard. And when I woke up, I was in here. I start fire. What's that? Uh, you don't have to start a fire. Eh, uh, you don't have to start a fire. Uh, you don't have to. Hey, to get in touch with Steve Gorilla, you don't have to start with a fire. Eh, you can just talk right into this machine. Just call my dick. I'll beat it, Dick. Name, number, and a message, and I'll get back to you. Uh, that's a zagzy delivery. If I feel like it. Yeah. I'll give if you a call. If you're lucky enough. If you're lucky enough. This guy who is loosening his tie. Ah, you don't have to start a fire. Yeah, get it. You don't have to start a fire to get in touch with Steve Gorilla. <laughs> well, maybe you do. You just have to enjoy this stupid message. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to tell me the truth. Yes. And if you uh, lie to me, may I God will. strike you down. Absolutely. Don't answer right away. Okay. Tell me the truth. Because okay. your first answer is going to be <laughs> one. Okay? This is going to be his answer. One. But think before you say it. How many takes did you do? Truth. The, the truth. truth. The truth? The truth. One. And you can call Julie right now. Yeah. She was there when I did it. Julie was there when I did it. Dude. She inspired me. <laughs> I want to set that machine on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to start a fire. I swear to God, I've done answer machines like that, messages before. It's taken me six, seven tries. I got that one on the first try. Wow. I swear on my life. Oh, I can't get you God strike that me down. One take like, grillo. Huh? Yeah, great. <laughs> I've got nothing better to do with my time, so. Yeah, I, I got no job, but I guess I might as well just make some answering messages. Uh, going to the market on Todd humor. <laughs> <laughs> God thinks I'm funny. He thinks I'm his dad. Because he's from Canada and they all say A. See, you know, they he's say slow a, from there, but to him, I'm and Gwig. We, and we tease him about being slow. Yeah, so he, he when he heard it, he thought it was funny. <laughs> so you got to sit through that annoying the message. The A part is the funny part. <laughs> a. Yeah, what part of that clip is funny? The, the, just the part with the dude from Canada. The rest I just left in. If you're a Simpsons fan, you wouldn't probably <laughs> get a kick out of it. <laughs>
I, I, I live for the Simpsons. People who live for the Simpsons and Todd get it. <laughs> right. You have to be he personal and Julie Simpsons. has to advise you. Hey, it's a personal joke. It's the Simpsons. It's only been there a week. Who's Julie? That new chick of yours? Yeah. Oh, the one from my movie? Yeah. Yeah, Gorilla picked up one of the girls in my movie. Yeah. He did something right. Mm. <laughs> That's correct. That's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. What? Ra Ralph's on, uh, everybody's best friend Ralph is on line 12. He said that the message before this one was even worse. Oh, really? Oh, I, I took a clip from, uh, what was it, um, A Fish Called Wanda. Oh, and yeah. there was just one part where he's trying to be like Ralph. I know I'm not trying around. to be like Ralph. I've been doing this since I got an answering yeah, machine. Yeah, sure. Please. You're trying to be like we Ralph. We need to get an answering machine before. When I moved out of my house. Before that was two and a half years Ralph. ago. Yeah, two yeah. and a half years ago I it moved out. Ralph's your hero. I like Ralph a lot. Yeah. You're trying to be like Ralph. If I was trying you're to be like Ralph, machine. I'd dye my hair all in weird colors. If I had any. <laughs> if you had one, you would do it. You would. What was his message before? I, what, Steve, what was it? Man? It was from A Fish Called Wanda where Kevin Klein was yelling at uh, John Cleese and he was just cursing. Was and that for Dodd? No, it was for me. And every time my mom called, yeah, but what was your take that goddamn answering machine off if your grandmother calls. Gorilla. What? What was your tagline on that one? You had a tagline on Oh, that. he called him and he said, you are a true vulgarian. I'm trying to think. And, and it was something like, you don't have to be a vulgarian. Leave a message. Oh, it's yeah. the same something each time. Yeah. No, no, that, that, you know what? I just happened to do it that time, and this time uh, I'm You don't have to be a vulgarian See, to get I through. I have a theme. <laughs> a theme. I have a theme. Oh, apologize. It ended it. Now, apologize, you F-face, and then... You don't have to apologize to speak to Steve. Actually, you don't have to apologize. Just leave a message. Yeah. Uh, uh, and start a you don't have to apologize. You don't have to apologize or start a fire. <laughs> or right? listen to this message. Right. <laughs> and you don't got to be a bitch called Wanda. <laughs> but you could talk to me. Aww. You could even be a Bulgarian. You don't even have to be Todd. Yeah. Ralph always has some goofy answering messages that at least he could fast forward to. Right. <laughs> What's on yours now? Hey, now? Yeah, just a just, hey a, no. just a simple hey now. Yeah, that's a little better. Sometimes you have to sit through a half hour of Star I mean, Trek. Hey now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, dude. You know, and I say to him, dude, and I'm not calling you. Heard you heard it once, even, even if it is entertaining. After you've yeah. heard it once, you're done. It just seems like way too much effort to put into something that really there's hardly any payoff. Yeah. And you really have to have a lot of free time to sit there and do that. Yeah. Ralph's got all the free time he wants. I admire people who go. Please leave a message at the beep. Yeah. Boom. I admire that. It shows that they're busy and productive. Just leave a message. Everybody and, knows about that. And they you understand. You have to say that. Hey, Gorilla, haven't you ever called someone's message and sat through it and gone, oh, man, I'm, I'm in a rush? Oh, that's true. You have free time. <laughs> I, yeah, forget. I got I got Sundays off now. But right. you know what the thing and is? Personal you, friends. You know how you can hit the star button to, like, cancel out the message? Yeah. You can't do that with his, and he goes into voice. It's even more annoying because you have to sit through that. Oh. Message. <laughs> and the clips he plays really aren't funny. I know. That's not even funny. <laughs> That's a person. I, I'm not going to keep it personal. That's my you're, personal laugh. You're not from Canada, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, you're not Dodd. Get it? You don't say a. You're not stupid. I guarantee that guy Todd doesn't think it's that funny. Right. No, of course not. It's about him. Oh. I, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in on the joke. All right, thank you. Later. Gorilla doesn't even understand why. I think that's so stupid. So he did it for the guy Todd. Okay. Right. Todd doesn't get it. No one gets it. And so it's just a lame message on his machine. So what? So what? I don't care. It's for so me. What? But you don't call your machine. <laughs> Stupid. <sighs> Do you call my house? No. <laughs> Stupid. I moved here from Canada, and they think I'm slow, eh? I fell off the jungle gym, and when I woke up, I was in here. I got fired. Uh, you don't have to start a fire. Uh, uh, What's up, Doc? Uh, <laughs> that's the best. Uh, <laughs> first of all, and that Simpsons is horrible. Oh. No, I'm sorry. It's only the best only, show on TV next to yours. Only dimwits like the Simpsons. Not you know, true. The biggest dimwit on the planet, Tom Chiasano, tapes every one. You're kidding. No, he right. and he gave me... Because I was going to say... Well, I look at you. No you got a 98 else. IQ. So no it doesn't make else. a difference. I still get to... I like God... I like God Dunes. It's highbrow. <laughs> you read comic books. I like God Dunes. He's about it. writing scripts for them. Oh, yeah, right. Oh. A really bad script <laughs> that even the Simpsons rejects. <laughs> Have That's you sent them your script? You never, you've never... Have you sent them your script? No. He no, always no. says so. I have a great idea for the Simpsons. Well, why don't you send it to him? Why are you writing these ideas? They, just, they don't 
They don't sure like do. any uh, unsolicited material. How do you know? Did you call an ad? No, I've 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 asked a lot of people. Who'd you, know? you ask? Gary? I've asked, no, writers. People I know that write. Yeah, so why don't you call them and tell them you know that you're a young writer and you've come up with a script and would uh, they please read it? Uh, <laughs> rejection. Uh, so he just sits and writes scripts nobody will ever see. So why write the script? I don't get it. It's like the answering machine. Why put it on there if nobody gets it? You know, one day we were driving out to the airport. We were going to Los Angeles, and I was telling him, remember da my friend Danny that worked on our Fox show? Yeah. He's a big, big time writer. Yeah. I was telling him about that, and he and Steve, he just looked at me and he goes, "Dude, I know you're gonna think I'm crazy. I know I could write for The Simpsons." <laughs> Gorilla said that. Yeah. He says, "I know I could." So why don't you do it? Uh, fear. Um, fear. Fear. Um, fear. He's afraid of being successful. Fear. Fear of rejection. Uh, Todd might not like it. But if you know it. you can write for The Simpsons, what's the fear? Fear of rejection. He should be sure of rejection. <laughs> He's going to get it. Why would he want to be a writer if he could be fetching food for someone? Right. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't, something made him sit down and write to us, but he won't write to the system. It was a burning desire. Yeah, why did you, ha why you had no fear of rejection for us? Because <laughs> yeah, you guys are wallpaper for the, wallpaper for the wounded. Wallpaper. Wallpaper for the wounded. I tried to rewrite it. Yeah. Your wallpaper flypaper. Maybe if I put my Simpsons script on my answering machine and tell them the call, maybe they'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your Simpsons scripts? Do you have them? I actually they're probably at my friend's house. For Dodd? Well, no. But it just it's stuff that we wrote. Which the, which that guy you go up to that the mountains no. with and kill animals? No, not, not that <laughs> which guy. guy? Up in the trail. That other friend? It's just a friend of mine and uh it's just most of the stuff is at his house. Kind of <laughs> a lot of unfinished scenes and bits and stuff. You wanna bring that stuff in and read it on the ah, air? That's okay. The Simpsons might hear it here. Yeah. Uh, when you guys don't discovered. listen, you guys aren't fans, you wouldn't get it. Bring so it in on Monday for the new studio. That's okay. I want you to Come do on. the Simpsons. No. Yeah, I want you to bring it in. It, it doesn't make sense. I want to see it. Nope. It's so good, I want to see I, it. I don't even know if he still has it. My he friend. has it. What? He has it. I, I don't know. My Why would you give it to your friend? Why I didn't give it to my friend. We sat together. Wrote a bunch of ideas and put it down. All right, so why don't you bring it in? Because it's it's not in script. Because you're embarrassed and you know it's yeah, absolutely. I don't think it sucks. No. Well, then let's see it. Then why why are you embarrassed? Because it's not it in. in script form. It's just it's a lot of so why don't you bring down ideas. ideas that tell me the ideas. Unconnected things that. that, that but you're not even a fan of the show. You wouldn't get so it. So what? I don't care. I, I'm a fan of good comedy writing. But if you're a fan of comedy, then you're not a fan of The Simpsons. How would that connect? Because I don't think that's good comedy. So then. Then how would if maybe your stuff comedy, is better? The comedy that I have connects to the Simpsons. And you're Look not at how stupid you are. You want to be a writer for the Simpsons? You say your he stuff's great. I'm Simpsons. giving you, yeah, I'm <laughs> giving you an audition. I'm allowing you to get on the air where we reach Los Angeles, and obviously people who run the Simpsons listen. Maybe you, you do have. You're, you're, you're a loser. Go ahead, try it. What do you got to lose? See. He doesn't realize if the stuff would appeal to Simpsons people, it doesn't right. matter if it appeals to you. Right. Because he's trying to appeal to them. Did you, you, you wonder why I was discouraged? The first person I ever brought it up to yeah. said, you know, he, this guy is a writer and he does a lot of other stuff. And I, I said, so, like, how do you go about, you know, like, presenting something to, say, a popular TV show? He goes, well, everybody writes scripts for The Simpsons and Seinfeld. And I went, oh. And yeah, I just so, that was it. So and that it. was, like, after all the ideas I put together and stuff like that. And so tried to outline well, bring a, it in. a plot line. Bring and it in. What are some of the plot lines? Do you remember one I, of the I plot don't know. lines? It was, it was like a year and a half ago. You don't ago. remember one plot line you wrote? Nope. Right. I may, I, maybe it's centered around... really perfect. What? He said one of them I, I, This is all... I, I, I he told you even, that? Yeah. I haven't even... I haven't even, I haven't even thought... I just... I, What's your great I, idea? I... I I don't remember. You know it. I lie. I swear. Liar. 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 Home liar. against the job cooking potatoes. There you go. Home against the job cooking potatoes. Cooking potatoes. And smoothies. And <laughs> More ice, Mrs. For Simpson. A For a pain in the ass he radio dish. Uh, he forgets to turn uh, uh, off the blender when he plugs it in. Yeah. Oops, I'm Oma, sorry. Oma makes a blender and then he turns it on when the, the katab is on. And then Oma <laughs> does writing scripts for a show and he doesn't connect the door. <laughs> you got to bring it in on Monday. I want that's your assignment. All right. It's gonna, it's going to be a lot of. Crappy, Bring scrappy, it in. Want to hear your crappy, scrappy garbage? Your good idea. If that's if my friend still has it. He has it. I hope he does. Don't lie to me. I, you remember your idea too. No, I don't. Oh, Liar. Why? You know what? I couldn't tell you how long ago it was. Now you disappointed me. I don't. Dude, you don't forget a great idea. You. you don't forget a great idea. Uh, well, Sorry, uh, dude. It's a lot of different ideas. I have stuff scrapped. Tell me one of them. Okay, one of the scenes centered around a pet fair. A pet fair? Yeah. The Simpsons go to a pet fair? Yes. Okay, and what happens? There's a lot of different animals that I'm just I wrote all oh, these ideas. There's down. a gaga's manual. Let's bed him. What did you say? A 
And you think he just wrote the Simpsons go to a pet fair? Yeah, a pet fair. And I wrote down a lot of different ideas that different characters oh interact with different animals and stuff like that. And wow. You are a simpleton. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. All righty. I'll take that. You are. I don't even believe your IQ is 98. What do you think of that? All right. I think it's lower. Thank you. I think it was a fluke. I think there's a decimal point in there. <laughs> 9.8. Oh, yeah. Tell Mr. Ten. And then he writes these scripts so you don't send them to anybody. It was yeah. ne it was never fully formatted out. It was just oh, I, see. I just I scrapped what the idea. I just got I just you I don't know, it just I guess Why don't you and your friends come into the show Monday and act out your Simpson script? Yeah. I, if 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 there's enough there to do it then I will. Right. What does your friend do? He's a disc jockey on this station. <laughs> what? He's a disc jockey on this station. Your friend is a disc jockey on this station? Who's that? Matt Sager. Matt Sager's on this station? Yeah. And he wrote the Simpsons script with you? Well, he, he participated in the ideas that we did. We sat together and we wrote down a bunch of the stuff. Unconnected <laughs> ideas. I tried to avoid it, but. Unconnected. We connected, guys. but we were unconnected. They were unconnected ideas. <laughs> unconnected. It just sort of fell flat, the whole idea. We did it for a while, right. and then it just didn't go anywhere. And <laughs> like everything got, else you're involved in. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. This guy's a radio personality. <laughs> I just didn't want to bring his name up. That's right. Med Cigar. <laughs> Why should I bring him down with me? be anonymous. <laughs> I don't blame him. I, I got to be on a writing his, session. His grip was as flat as my hey. head, so Matt didn't want to have any gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you want to know something? The Simpsons could go to an animal fair. Yeah. What's an animal fair? Hey, like a pet yeah. fair, you a know. Like, fair. Yeah. Oh, a bed fair. <laughs> an expo. My schnauzer <laughs> has worms. Yes, <laughs> Homer. Good oh, idea. Mod, get a wee wee bed. Exactly. Stay still. <laughs> Jackie just pretty much. Jackie just hit the nail on the head. What do you got there, Jackie? It's a good idea. Roll another joint. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sell nothing yet, but soon. <laughs> as soon as I connect the ideas, I think Mad Cigar's name on there would say something. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Mad Cigar's name means quality gummity in Hollywood. Oh, Mad Cigar, uh, at least, is a disc jockey. He opens doors. That day, right? <laughs> he wasn't a disc jockey back then. He wasn't even working. Mad Cigar. But he has evolved. <laughs> now that he's a disc jockey, these ideas might be more valuable. His name might have cachet. Are we done now? <laughs> <laughs> How does an answer machine come into a half an hour bit? I don't get it. This is John. John, you're on the air. Hi, how you doing? Uh, Grillo, who are you fooling over there? With that bad grammar and your stupid ideas, your bald head and your buck teeth, who are you kidding? How could you I'm, I'm kidding right? your mother. How's that? How's your mother? I get on top of your father and your mother. Oh, yeah? Well, I guess you're a freaking homo. You're a homo? You're a homo. First of all, you have to learn... Hold on, hold on. You, you're at home and you're dialing a, a radio show. Who's, who's, who's like, desperate? Desperate. I'm desperate? Yeah. Who? I make more money than you do in a month. Who's desperate? Everybody makes more money than I do in a month. Yeah, jackass. Month. So you watch The Simpsons, so now you're a professional writer. Police with no handle. Would you like to be a collaborator? What about you and Matt Cigar? I'm a good metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you kidding? Who hey, you stop kidding? bigging on me. You could be a collaborator. Slow That's down, right, slow down. I'm Police without their handles. That's a good one. First I'm going to put that in the home script. First, you're an actor. Yeah. Okay. Now you're a writer. What do you do? I'm an I'm electrical engineer. Oh, an electrical engineer. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> okay, so why don't you have a cable and shove it right they're up there? What are you going to do about that? They're going to name a, four, uh, they're gonna name a, a highway gonna... after you. I-98. Okay? Because of your I stupidity. Too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. You know it's funny. Down, police. I'm watching that. I'm watching Gorilla like trying to come back with a comeback, and I watch him sinking. The wheels are turning. Oh, the yeah. smoke I is coming. I can't do it here because I know you're looking at me. I know you can't because you don't know how to talk. This is so like. funny. <laughs> what are you doing for it? I'm an electrical engineer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Go to the electrical so what engineer do you want to joke. Do? You want to compare which you you broken down the lease with no handles? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. John. Thank you, sir. Oh, All right, Mike. You're on the air. Yeah. Yes. Gorilla is a big dork. <laughs> He's misrepresenting you. What do you mean? Well, he, you know, he does these shows at night. He comes to Tequila Joe's. He's supposed to be representing you. Instead, he instead of hanging out with the crowd and everything, all he does is he comes up, tells a couple of stupid jokes, throws a couple of CDs out to the crowd, and then goes back on the dance floor with a, with a bunch of would-be followers. What are you talking about? Do you appear with this guy saying? I've done an appearance for K-Rock at Tequila Joe's, and there have been... You're a big 
Oh, and let me tell you something. You're off my stage for two minutes. <laughs> and guess what? I'm doing what they I'm doing what they asked me to do, sir. Who's kid's name? What do you do? Right, what do you do? You tell yeah. jokes? I don't tell jokes. They, they K Rock had me go and do an appearance there. And Did anybody tape this? I dude, I you've taped my appearances before. Really? I do really good at it. What do you do? Will you get up and say what? I do, it depends. I, I'll go up there and I introduce you're myself as Steve Gill from the Howard Stern Show. I'm not mind. supposed to say anything. You're sitting there drinking at a bar. Why do you want to listen to me? I give out some free I'm not CDs. At a bar. I, I'm in the pit waiting for you to come out so I can knock you on your ass. So go ahead and do that, you jackass. I'll what do you do for a living? <laughs> I like when Steve stops himself, you know. Why? Because I'm, I'm going to curse. That's you have nothing why. to say. No, I'm going to curse. Wait, uh, gorilla? You mean you can't okay. talk without cursing? No, it's I really hard. No. That's a sign of low IQ. There you go. <laughs> you can't talk oh, without cursing. You barely passed that test. You got lucky. Going to Puerto Rico. You're lucky. Going to Puerto Rico. You're lucky. See you in You're Puerto downy. Rico, pal. You're one step above a downy. What do you do? What do you do on stage? What do you do? You just I just go up. I introduce myself. I just... Blah, blah, blah. And I, they, they, K-Rock wants me to give out, like, what was CDs Jack, and concert what was things. Jackie's first tape? Somebody gets her No, I never said yeah. that. I never said that. Sometimes, I but I do whatever K-Rock wants me to do. If they want me to give out CDs, maybe... I can't hear this guy. I, what, do you want to listen to me? You're looking at yeah, me. Or do you I want to hear, hear this him? guy. What'd the guy's say? lying. What do you say? It's, you, you, instead of hanging out with the rock and roll crowd downstairs, he throws a few CDs out, and he goes upstairs with the disco crowd hanging out on a dance floor. Right. Okay. Yeah, they, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm learning a lot about you. <laughs> what else you want to Jay, know? you're on the air. Listen. Listen to me. This is the guy, when, even if he does pass, and he does, and he says he could do this, or he, when he goes to Puerto Rico, we're going to tear him a new hole. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? How did the people Jeez. turn on Gorilla? Like? <laughs> you're not a popular figure, are you, Gorilla? Oh. That's okay. Listen, when, is, when is he going to Puerto Rico? When are you going? Uh, I'm going next week. When? Uh, Monday. When Monday? When Monday? What time are you going to Monday? I'm going at 8 o'clock in the morning. And you, how long are you going to be there? For a whole week? 10 days. 10 days for a whole day? Yep. Get out. And where are you, where are you staying at? Oh, I'll just, I'll just give out the address. Huh? I'll just give out the address. Well, why don't you say that? You're staying in the condado. I'm going to find you. Okay. You're right. That's exactly where I'm staying. Wait, I don't understand that, though. What's there to understand? Yeah, how, how a dope like you can win a trip to PR. I don't understand this. <laughs> okay. What's the matter with you? <laughs> All right. All right, you had enough abuse today. Yeah. <laughs> don't like you. What an audience. Yeah. I <laughs> don't like you. Well, listen, I love you. Why, thank you. That's all I can. I just think your answering message is goofy. Ah, oh, big deal. Ah, uh, big deal. You don't have this daughter, Vaya. <laughs> 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 good evening, Tequila Joes. Here I am. I'm Steve Grillo. Yeah, I, I do a good job, my Good parents. night. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. All right. That's Steve Grillo and uh, his answering message. Thank you. <laughs> I got to take a break. We'll do the news. Leslie West is going to come by. He's involved in rock and roll camp. Rock and roll camp? Yeah. What's that? I don't know. We're going to find out. Oh, wait. One more gorilla call. There's a guy. Oh, yeah. oh, Hello, real quick. Come on. Yeah, I was in a deli on the Upper West Side about a couple of months ago during the summer, and I'm standing in line. There are about 20 people in line, and I hear this voice saying, you know, I don't know. Why did, I don't know if I'm going to do that or that. But I turn around. It's Gorillo. I said, excuse me, aren't you Gorillo from the Howard Stern Show? He looked me up and down like I was scum and said, what the F? Do you want an autograph? Bull. 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 I've never, ever, everyone's done that in my Lying. entire life, and I hope you die because you're lying. You did the same thing. That is bull crap. I've never, ever, ever done that in my yes, entire life. Have. You could ask anybody, anywhere. I've never I done that to anybody. You were standing on line with them. Where? I don't even live on the west side. You're hanging on every... I, I don't know what huh? you're doing what? up there. What do I what? care what you're doing well, It doesn't make a difference. You're lying. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Well, there I you go. I never, ever would do Ball that. Ball-headed creep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay. You got your right time, sir. All right. Well, obviously there's some controversy. That's wow. not true. I've never, I've never done that to anybody. No, I hope not. I don't know why I, you wait, I've never seen you. Do I don't know why I've you think you, you do that to anybody. Why would I do that to anybody? I don't know. You're not me. <clears throat> you know, maybe exactly. That's exactly why I wouldn't do it. Star who does blow off his fans? You know. <laughs> maybe you're the type of star who blows no. off his fans. I, I, I was just talking about that last night. Uh, you're the type of star that doesn't blow off his fans. No, 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 no I, I, I was saying that the other day that. How could I ever look at somebody that comes up and recognizes me for being on the show and lo lo look down on them for them recognizing me when I've never even seen you? What do is that, that Jackie? You're not being fair. He might have been very busy that day. Right. You might have been fair and you didn't have time for your fans. Yeah, it could have. I don't have fans. You, you have, have fans. <laughs> he has time. I'm sure.
I'm sure when you're not when you're relaxed, you have plenty of time for your fans. That I would it could have been that, they, that you were in a rush that day trying to get a sandwich. If I was a rush, if I was in the biggest rush of my life, and someone said that to me, I would never might have turn a around and do that. Idea to get a race home and write down you for know? the Simpsons. Yeah, that's true. I could interrupt Please. with a great thought, yeah. No autographs. You're pushing the ideas out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> not now. Not now. Yes, Joe, you're on the air. Hi, Howard. How you doing? I'd like to agree with the other callers, Howard. You know, Grillo is a real knucklehead, to say the least. Why know? do you say that? Be fair. Well, you know, when I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the show, and I call there uh, from time to time for things. And uh, when I get him on the phone, he, you know, he's like, he, he doesn't help. And uh, he's he really got a negative attitude, and he's just downright nasty to people. That's wow. not true at all. All right. And I'm not lying. What does he say to you? Well, you know, if I ask to speak to someone or something like that, uh, I can't talk right now. Uh, I'm busy. Uh, call back later. No, you know, okay. no, I would never say that. He's just rude. You know, that's not true at everybody all. Everybody else is cool, like John and everybody else that calls. Yeah, they're very polite. So how do you know it's you me? Know? How do I know it's you? Because well, I've been listening to the show for okay. seven years. Okay, then how come when people call up and they always think I'm John? Huh? How come people always call up and think I'm John? Because or they think I'm Ganji? Yeah, okay. You're lucky that Howard has who's, you on the who's show. Who's in the studio there. and who's on the other side of the phone? Ah, uh, you're a knucklehead. Yeah. Greg, you know, he's not the only guy who's complained about you, though. Gary gets his complaint all the time about you. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. That's true. That is true, Joe. Uh, what's your name again? Steve. Joe Mario. Steve. No, not Joe. Steve. You, you, I've heard that you're rude to the listeners. Um, it's Gary. Gary, you get this complaint all the time? Yeah, it's not always me. Oh, I, 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 absolutely. Really? Absolutely. It's, uh, are you I'm just a liar think, and I don't make think up I'm Angie, People think I'm John. It's not a, I'm not the only person. What is it, Bobo Boy? No, you know, Steve, not to, not to make you bad, but you, you're, oh. you're quick. You have a quick... He's got like a... He's got a short fuse. You know, I've spoken... You know, remember we did that show a couple months ago and he got all... Maybe that. answering the phones is too much? No, 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 because he has a quick fuse because even some other people that say work here, Steve can sometimes be inappropriate. He gets like... He gets upset quickly yeah. for little things. Absolutely. That hits it right on the head. Gary just said it. Right. All I, right. You got to work on that. I feel bad, but it's, you, you, know, you know how you get sometimes, you know, you'll say, Gorilla, could you do this? Or uh, I won't say it, but somebody else will. And they'll go, I'm busy. You know, he gets upset quickly. That's, yeah. that's it. Is that true, that's Steve? Uh, that I can agree with. All right. Okay. Well, and that sort of translates over to the phone. No, you but, work but when you, when, it's you a skill. Oh, you have to develop, yes. That answering machine message is, a, is, is really stupid, too. You should I'm not that. asking you to call my house and listen <laughs> to it. You, it. you know, that's really stupid. <laughs> no one I, asked you to call it. It's, it's not funny. Stupid. These are guys I, right. I never it's said it was stupid, funny. stupid, you know. Howard's got a point. Right. All right, thank you. All right, Howard. Right, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Joe. That's Joe. <laughs> okay. All right, now you, better got, hurt and run out of the <laughs> now you got something to think about. Yeah. Now you got something to think about this weekend. <laughs> a new answer machine. Right. <laughs> Why don't you put something new on there? Like, hello, my name is Steve. Call me back if you can. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Steve, I'm busy. <laughs> he's, just, he's busy right for the Simpsons. Right, i got to take a break. Leslie West is here. we got the news to do, Robin. We're running late. Let's get yes, to everything. We well, you had a, you wanted to hear Steve's take. What a great way to end the last like day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my next machine message will be from Mad. <laughs> from what? From Mad. From Mad? From Mad. For Mad, uh, Mad Cigar, my partner, oh, my Mad writing Cigar. partner. Oh, okay. Mad Cigar. <laughs> my, <laughs> my writing partner. Isn't he a dish jockey? He's my muse. <laughs> <laughs> want to hear one more guy wants to talk to girls? Oh, oh come on, dude. Talking. I got to get your lunch, dude. Oh, I got to get your lunch. It's going to be cold. <laughs> is this Frank? Yeah, this is Frank. <laughs> Every guy who calls oh, in about girls is the same guy. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but I met him in Staten Island. He was a little nasty, a little nasty uh. punk. Yeah, uh, okay. All right. And yeah. this is Timmy and Kat. Jackie, you killed me. <laughs> I was trying to get through one. <laughs> All right. All right. You go uh, get lunch. Yes. And I'll um, I'll hold down the fort. Okay. Leslie West will be in about uh, space camp or something he's involved Rock in. Rock camp. Rock camp. Uh, he can sit in on the news. We'll have fun. All right. Right after these words. Thanks. Hmm. Leslie West is going to join us for the news, but I got such a funny piece of tape. Maybe I'll save it for Monday. But What's that? This is so great. Want to hear it? Yeah, give me a preview. Okay. Steve Gorillo? Yeah. He's trying to be cool, so like his answering machine now, he keeps designing like special messages on his answering machine. Oh, really? You know how guys are with their answering machine? I think he's trying to be like Ralph. Because, you know, Ralph... Ralph is very inventive with his answering machine. Yeah, messages. and as annoying as the messages are, at least they're a little bit funny. Yeah, they're entertaining. Yeah. So now Gorillo's gotten into it, except he's trying to do outrageous things on his answering machine. And, like, he plays little clips of movies. Uh -huh. But they're from movies nobody knows. 
Ooh. Yeah, he'll, he'll be it. it's, it's I'm a private convinced. joke, by the way. It's not a private joke. It is. It's about my friend Todd. He's from Canada. And I yeah, but dude, Simpsons. you sound so lame. Oh, he loves the Simpsons. And then Gorilla afterwards puts a, a voice on afterwards, okay? He puts like a cool guy voice, like a, a disc like jockey. Telephone voice. Yeah, like, you know, he tries to lower his voice. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta hear this. I can't be goofy on my answer machine. Yeah. Dude, be whatever you want. It's just what do you want to project to people? And who wants to sit through this every and time they try know, to call you? Well, he doesn't have any business. I sometimes right. think of what if people who are doing business with you are calling. They don't need your little antics. If they're doing business with you, I guarantee you, they hear this, they ain't doing business with you. <laughs> hey, check this out. Listen to Gorilla. from Canada, and they think I'm slow, eh? I fell off the jungle gym, and when I woke up, I was in here. I start fire. Uh, you don't have to start a fire. Just do me a favor, leave your name, number, and a message, and I'll get back to you. Whoa. Hey, you don't, you don't have to start a fire. What? Just, uh, leave your name and message, and I'll get back to you. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to start a fire. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that cool? You don't have to start a fire. It's the, uh, I like, uh, you don't have uh, to start a fire. Uh, yeah, the, uh, you don't have to start a fire. Uh, let me try to be like a cool guy there. Uh, I'm being goofy. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, I think, I don't think, I think you're trying to be cool. cool. Oh, man, I am cool. You're trying to be cool. I am cool. That reeks of a guy trying way too hard to be way too Mr. cool. I, it's, it's, it's over the edge. It's goofy. I like Answering message tells you a lot about a person's creativity and sort of where they're it, at. It, it, it was a per you have no creativity. I, yeah, okay. That's the lamest, done. worst it, thing but, I've but ever heard. Why would you understand it if it's a personal joke between me okay. and my friend? Real personal when you go, uh, you don't have to start a fire. I heard the girl on the tape goes... Fire. No, that has nothing and to do with it. You don't no, no, no. Start did, you hear, did you hear the first part of it? It's, who cares? If so nobody I gets care. It. It's my machine. Nobody I gets it. It's, it's my, so you want who, everyone calling and going, what an idiot. This joke? Everyone has to be who, in on the joke? Who calls me but my friends? Yep, so every one of your friends can tell what that joke is? 80% of Oh, I see. How come Gary can't tell what it is? Fred can't tell what it is? Jackie can't? Because Robin? We uh, they're can't? Not my, they're not my personal friends. Who's your personal friend? My friend Todd. My friend oh, Adam. Todd. Julie. Like, uh, everybody knows. Everyone gets that joke. Yes. And they crack up. Yes. And they, they, crack, they, up. And they uh, crack up. Yes. And when you say, I, you don't have to start a fire, that drives them wild. That that has nothing to do with it. I see. They're all as dopey as you, is what you say. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, if any of your friends are listening, they call up. They'll tell me that they think that's the suckiest, <laughs> lamest answering message in the world. I've had better. Yeah. Why bother? Why don't you work on I your don't career? Care. It's just an if. You know how long that took me? How long? Thirty seconds. Liar. Thirty seconds. Right. Liar. I queued it up on my VCR. Okay. I put my phone to the thing. You don't and have I did to start a fire. Uh, you uh, don't have um, fire. You don't. Have, um, and I like that. You know, like like, like all of a sudden he's singing off the top of his head. I'm nonchalant. Um, yeah, yeah, right, nonchalant. <laughs> Um, you don't have to start a fire. Sophisticated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you have, a smoking jacket on? Or yeah. bang. Yeah. And a little pipe. When they hear this joke, they laugh. Every one of my friends loves I this. I swear to God, they split as big in his eyes. 80% of my friends. 80%. <laughs> <laughs> At least 80%. <laughs> Julie and Adam, they all know. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're a goofball. All right, oh, fine. God. My I don't got, like, business people calling. I don't out. got, like, business people. I got close friends who like the wall I got machine. my personal friends calling. <laughs> and they know the Jews of that I am. But... So, what are you in for? I moved here from Canada, and they think I'm small, eh? Now, what are you in for? I moved from Canada. They think I'm small, A. No, slow. Slow. slow My a. friend Todd is from Canada. Yeah. He speaks, you know, A, A. Yeah. A. Of course, everyone okay. from Canada And we get around that he's slow. It was on The Simpsons. I thought so, it was so funny. For that one guy, Todd, you clogged up your whole goddamn machine. Yeah. And you sound like a total retard to everyone else. <laughs> so and what? Julie doesn't understand it. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> Julie's the, uh, Julie's the Julie one who suggested it. Julie understands it. It was Julie's Todd idea. Julie and Julie retard. Didn't put it on her answing machine. So, Julie's yeah. not friends with Todd. I am. Yeah. Right. I'm friends with Todd, and I'm a retard. And when I woke up, I was in here. I got fired.
What's that? Uh, you don't have to start a fire. Eh, uh, you don't have to start a fire. Uh, uh, hey, to get in touch with Steve Gorilla, you don't have to start with a fire. Eh, you, uh, you can just talk right into this machine. I'm being a dick. Name, number, and a message, and I'll get back to you. Uh, that's a zagzy delivery. If I feel like it. Yeah. I'll give if you a If you're lucky call. enough. If you're lucky guy enough. guy who is loosening his tie. Uh, 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 you don't uh, have to start a fire. Yeah, get a, you don't have to start a fire to get in touch with Steve Gorilla. <laughs> well, maybe you do. You just have to enjoy this stupid message. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to tell me the truth. Yes. And if you uh, lie to me, may God strike you down. Absolutely. Don't answer right away. Okay. Tell me the truth. Because okay. your first answer is going to be <laughs> one. Okay? This is going to be his answer. One. But think before you say it. How many takes did you do? Truth. The you, truth. You, the, truth? the truth. One. And you can call Julie right now. Yeah. She was there when I did it. Julie was there when I did it. Yeah. She inspired me. <laughs> I want to set that machine on fire. <laughs> you don't have to start a fire. You don't I swear to God, I've done answer machines like that, messages before. It's taken me six, seven tries. I got that one on the first try. Wow. I swear on my life. Wow. I can't get you God that strike me down. One take, like, Grillo. Huh? Yeah, great. <laughs> I've got nothing better to do with my time, so. Yeah, I, I got no job, but I guess I might as well just make some answering messages. Uh, going to the market on Todd humor. <laughs> <laughs> God thinks I'm funny. He thinks I'm his dad. Because he's from Canada and they all say A. See, you know, they he's say slow a, from there, but to and, him, I'm and Gwig. We, and we tease him about being slow. Yeah, so he, he when he heard it, he thought it was funny. <laughs> so you got to sit through that annoying message. The magic. A part is the funny part. <laughs> a. Yeah, what part of that clip is funny? The, the, just the part with the dude from Canada. The rest I just left in. If you're a Simpsons fan, you would probably <laughs> get a kick out of it. <laughs> I, I I live for the Simpsons. People who live for the Simpsons and Todd get it. <laughs> right. You have to be he personal, and Julie Simpsons. has to advise you. Hey, it's a personal joke. It's the Simpsons. So I've been there a week. Who's Julie? That new chick of yours? Yeah. Oh, the one from my movie? Yeah. Yeah, Gorilla picked up one of the girls in my movie. Yeah. He did something right. Mm. <laughs> That's correct. That's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. What? Ra Ralph's on, uh, everybody's best friend Ralph is on line 12. He said that the message before this one was even worse. Oh, really? Oh, I, I took a clip from, uh, what was it, um, A Fish Called Wanda. Oh, and yeah. And there was just one part where... He's trying to be like Ralph. I know I'm not trying around. to be like Ralph. I've been are. doing this since I got an answering yeah, machine. Yeah, sure. Please. You're trying to be like we Ralph. We need to get an answering machine before... When I moved out of my house. Before that was two and a half years ago. Yeah, two yeah. and a half years ago I it moved out. Ralph's your hero. I like Ralph a lot. Yeah. You're trying to be like Ralph. If I was trying you're to be like Ralph, I'd dye my hair all in weird colors. If I had any. <laughs> if you had one, you would do it. You would. What was his message before? I, what, Steve, what was it? Man? It was what from you? A Fish Called Wanda where Kevin Klein was yelling at uh, John Cleese and he was just cursing. Was and that for Dodd? No, it was for me. And every time my mom called, yeah, but what was your that goddamn answering machine off if your grandmother calls. Gorilla. What? What was your tagline on that one? You had a tagline on Oh. He called him and he said, you are a true Vulgarian. I'm trying to think. And, and it was something like, you don't have to be a Vulgarian. Leave a message. Oh, it's yeah. the same something each time. Yeah. No, no, that, that, you know what? I just happened to do it that time and this time uh, I married You over. don't have to be a Vulgarian See, to get I through. I have a theme. <laughs> a theme. I have a theme. Oh, apologize. It ended it. Now, apologize, you F-face. And then... You don't have to apologize and speak to Steve Gorilla. Actually, you don't have to apologize, just leave a message. Yeah. Uh, and start a fire. You don't have to apologize. You don't have to apologize or start a fire. <laughs> or right? listen to this message. Right. <laughs> and you don't got to be a bitch called Wanda. <laughs> but you could talk to me. Oh, you could even be a Bulgarian. You don't even have to be Todd. Yeah. Ralph always has some goofy answering messages that at least he could fast forward through. Right. What's on yours now? Hey now? Yeah, just a just, hey a, no. just a simple hey now. Yeah, that's a little better. Sometimes you have to sit through a half hour of Star Trek. Hey now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, dude. You know, and I say to him, dude, and I'm not calling you. Heard it once, even if it is entertaining. Have you yeah. heard it once? You're done. It just seems like way too much effort to put into something that really there's hardly any payoff. Yeah. And that you really have to have a lot of free time to sit there and do that. Yeah. Ralph's got all the free time he wants. I admire people who go. Please leave a message at the beep. Yeah. Boom. I admire that. It shows that they're busy and productive. Just leave a message. Everybody and, knows about that. And they you understand. You don't have to say that. Hey, Gorilla, haven't you ever called someone's message and sat through it and gone, oh, man, I'm, I'm in a rush? Oh, that's true. You have free time. <laughs> I yeah, forget. I got, I got Sundays off now. But right. you know what the thing and is? He's no friend. You know how you can hit the star button to, like, cancel out the message? Yeah. You can't do that with his, and he goes into voice. It's even more annoying because you have to sit through that. Oh. Message. 
<laughs> and the clips he plays really aren't funny. I know. That's not even funny. <laughs> That's a person. I'm not going to keep it personal. That it's my you're, personal laugh. You're not from Canada, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, you're not Dodd. Get it? You don't say a. You're not stupid. I guarantee that guy Todd doesn't think it's that funny. No, of course not. It's about him. Oh. I... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in on the joke. All right, thank you. Gorilla doesn't even understand why. I think that's so stupid. So he did it for the guy Todd. Okay. Right. Todd doesn't get it. No one gets it. And so it's just a lame message on his machine. So what? So what? I don't care. It's for so me. What? But you don't call your machine. <laughs> you stupid. Do you call my house? No. <laughs> stupid. I moved here from Canada, and they think I'm slow, eh? I fell off the jungle gym, and when I woke up, I was in here. I got fired. Uh, you don't have to start a fire. Uh, Just uh, what's up, Doc? Uh, <laughs> that's the best. Uh, <laughs> first of all, and that Simpsons is horrible. No, no I'm sorry. It's only the best only, show on TV next to yours. Only dimwits like the Simpsons. Not you know, true. The biggest dimwit on the planet, Tom Chiasano, tapes every one. You're kidding. No, he right. and he gave me... Because I was going to say... Well, I look at you. No you got a 98 else. IQ. So no it doesn't one make a difference. Else. I still get to... I like God... I like God Dunes. It's highbrow. <laughs> you read comic books. I like God Dunes. He's about it. writing scripts for them. Oh, yeah, right. Oh. A really bad script <laughs> that even the Simpsons rejects. <laughs> Have That's you sent them your script? You've never... You've never Have you sent them your script? No. He no, always no. says so. I have a great idea for the Simpsons. But well, why do you send it to him? Why are you writing these ideas? They, just, they don't. They don't sure write they do. any uh, unsolicited material. How do you know? Did you call an? No, I've 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 asked a lot of people. Who'd you, know? you ask? Gary? Asked, no, writers. People I know that write. Yes. Yeah, so why don't you call them and tell them you know that you're a young writer and you've come up with a script and would they uh, please read it? Uh, <laughs> rejection. Uh, so he just sits and writes scripts nobody will ever see. So why write the script? I don't get it. It's like the answering machine. Why put it on there if nobody gets it? You know, one day we were driving out to the airport. We were going to Los Angeles, and I was telling him, remember Dan, my friend Danny that worked on our Fox show? Yeah. He's a big, big-time writer. Yeah. I was telling him about that, and, he, and Steve, he just looked at me, and he goes, Dude, I know you're going to think I'm crazy. I know I could write for The Simpsons. <laughs> Gorilla said that? Yeah. He says, I know I could. So why don't you do it? Uh, fear. Um, fear. Fear. Um, fear. He's fear? afraid um, of being successful. Fear. Fear of rejection. Uh, Todd might not like it. But if you know it. you can write for The Simpsons, what's the fear? <laughs> fear of rejection. You can be sure of rejection. <laughs> He's going to get it. Why would he want to be a writer if he could be fetching food for someone? Right. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, he didn't. Something made him sit down and write to us. But he won't write to the it Simpsons. It was a burning desire. Yeah, why did you? Ha why you had no fear of rejection for us? Because <laughs> yeah, you guys are wallpaper for the wallpaper for the wounded. Wallpaper, right. wallpaper, wallpaper for the wounded. Wallpaper. I tried to rewrite it. Yeah. Your wallpaper flypaper. Maybe if I put my Simpsons script on my answering machine and tell them the call, maybe they'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your Simpsons scripts? Yeah, I'm. I actually they're probably at my friend's house. For Dodd? Well, no. But it just, it's stuff that we wrote. Which, the, which that guy you go up to that, the mountains with no, and kill animals? No, not, not that <laughs> which guy. Which guy? up in the trail. That other friend? It's just a friend of mine. And uh, it's just most of the stuff is at his house. Kind of <laughs> a lot of unfinished scenes and bits and stuff. You want to bring that stuff in and read it on the nah, air? That's okay. The Simpsons might hear it here. Yeah. Uh, when you guys don't discovered. listen, you guys aren't fans, you wouldn't get it. Bring so it in on Monday for the new studio. That's okay. I want you to Come do on. the Simpsons. No. Yeah, I want you to bring it in. It, it doesn't make sense. I want to see it. Nope. Oh. It's so good, I want to see I, it. I don't even know if he still has it. My he friend. has it. What? He has it. I, I don't know. My Why would you give it to your friend? Why I didn't give it to my friend. We sat man? together. Wrote a bunch of ideas and put it down. All right, so why don't you bring it in? Because it's it's not in script. Because you're embarrassed and you know it's yeah, absolutely. I don't think it sucks. No. Well, then let's see it. Then why why are you embarrassed? Because it's not in script form. It's just it's a lot of so why don't you bring down ideas. ideas that tell me the ideas. Unconnected things that. that, that but you're not even a fan of the show. You wouldn't get so it. So what? I don't care. I, I'm a fan of good comedy writing. But if you're a fan of comedy, then you're not a fan of The Simpsons. How would that connect? Because I don't think that's good comedy. So then. Then how would if maybe your stuff comedy, is better? The comedy that I have connects to the Simpsons. And you're Look not at how stupid you are. You want to be a writer for the Simpsons? You say your stuff's great. I'm Simpsons. giving you, yeah, I'm <laughs> giving you an audition. I'm allowing you to get on the air where we reach Los Angeles, and obviously people who run the Simpsons listen. Maybe you, you do have. You're, you're, you're a loser. Go ahead, try it. What do you got to lose? See. He doesn't realize if the stuff would appeal to Simpsons people, it doesn't right. matter if it appeals to you. Right. Because he's trying to appeal to them. You, 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 you wonder why I was discouraged. The first person I ever brought it up to yeah. said, you know, 
he, this guy is a writer and he does a lot of other stuff. And I, I said, so like, how do you go about, you know, like presenting something to say a popular TV show? He goes, well, everybody writes scripts for The Simpsons and Seinfeld. And I went, oh. And yeah, I just basically, so, that was it. So and that it. was like after all the ideas I put together and stuff like that. And so try yeah. to outline but bring a, it in. a plot line. Bring and it in. What are some of the plot lines? Do you remember one I, of the plot I don't know. lines? It was, it was like a year and a half ago. You don't ago. remember one plot line you wrote? Nope. Right. And may, I, maybe it's centered around... One really perfect. What? He said one of them I, I, This is all... I, I, I he haven't told you even, that? Yeah. I haven't even... I haven't even, I haven't even thought... I just... I, What's your great I, idea? I, I, I don't remember. You know it. I are lying. I swear I'm lying. Liar. Liar. Home against a job cooking potatoes. There you go. Home against a job cooking potatoes? Cooking potatoes. And smoothies. <laughs> More ice, Mrs. For a, Simpson? For a pain in the ass he radio forgets, dish act. He forgets to turn off the blender when he plugs it in. <laughs> yeah. I'm Oma, sorry. Oma makes a blender and then he turns it on when it, the katab is on. And then right. Oma does writing scripts for a show and he doesn't connect the door. <laughs> you got to bring it in on Monday. I want that's your assignment. All right. It's going it's to be a lot of. Crappy, crappy. Bring it in. Want to hear your crappy, crappy. Garbage. Your good idea. If that's if my friend still has it. He has it. I hope he does. Don't lie to me. I do you remember your idea, too? No, I don't. Oh, Liar. Why? You know how I couldn't tell you how long ago it was. Now you disappointed me. I don't... Dude, you don't forget a great idea. You. you don't forget a great idea. Uh, well, Sorry. Uh, dude, it's a lot of different ideas. I have stuff scrapped... Tell me one of them. Okay, one of the scenes centered around a oh. pet fair. A pet fair? Yeah. The Simpsons go to a pet fair? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and what happens? There's a lot of different animals that... I'm just... I wrote all oh, these no, ideas there's down. There's a gaga's manual. <laughs> Let's bed him. What do you think? You think he just wrote the Simpsons go to a pet fair? Yeah, no, pet fair. And I wrote down a lot of different ideas that different characters Home interact on. with different animals and stuff like that. And well, you are a simpleton. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. All righty, I'll take that. You are. I don't even believe your IQ is ninety-eight. What do you think of that? All right. I think it's lower. Thank you. <laughs> I think it was a fluke. I think there's a decimal point in there. <laughs> Nine point eight. <laughs> Oh my God. So Mr. <laughs> and then he writes these scripts, so you don't send them to anybody. It was yeah. ne it was never fully formatted out. It was just oh, I, see. I just I scrapped what the idea. I just got I just you I don't know. I just I guess. Why don't I you and your friends come into the show Monday and act out your Simpson script? Yeah. I, if 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 there's enough there to do it, then I will. Right. What does your friend do? He's a disc jockey on this station. <laughs> what? He's a disc jockey on this. station. Your friend is a disc jockey on this station. Who's that? Matt Sager. Matt Sager's on this station? Yeah. And he wrote the Simpsons script with you? Well, he, he participated in the ideas that we did. We sat together and we wrote down a bunch of the stuff. unconnected <laughs> ideas. I tried to avoid it, but... Unconnected. We connected, guys. but we were unconnected. They were unconnected ideas. <laughs> unconnected. It just sort of fell flat, the whole idea. We did it for a while, right. and then it just didn't go anywhere. And <laughs> like everything else you're involved in. <laughs> yeah, and... <laughs> This guy's a radio personality. <laughs> I just didn't want to bring his name up. That's right. Med Cigar. <laughs> Why should I bring him down he with me? He wants to be an <laughs> I don't blame him. I got to be on a writing script. session. His grips were as flat as my hey. head, so Matt didn't want to have any gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you want to know something? The Simpsons could go to an animal fair. Yeah. What's an animal fair? Hey, like a bed pet bed. fair, you a know. Bed like, bed. Yeah. Oh, a bed fair. <laughs> an expo. My schnauzer <laughs> has worms. Yes, Homer. <laughs> Good oh, idea. look, Mod, get a wee-wee bed. Exactly. Stay still. <laughs> Jackie just pretty much, Jackie just hit the nail on the head. What do you got there, Jackie? It's a good idea, roll another joint. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sell nothing yet, but soon. As soon as I connect the ideas. I think Mad Cigar's name on there would say something. Yes. <laughs> Mad Cigar's name means quality gummity in Hollywood. Mad Cigar, Mad Cigar at least is a disc jockey. He opens doors that day. Right? <laughs> he wasn't a disc jockey back then. He wasn't even working. Mad Cigar. But he has evolved. <laughs> now that he's a disc jockey, these ideas might be more valuable. His name might have cachet. <laughs> 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 uh. Are we done now? <laughs> <laughs> How does an answer machine come into a half an hour bit? I don't get it. This is John. John, you're on the air. Hi, how you doing? Uh, Grillo, who are you fooling over there? With that bad grammar and your stupid ideas, your bald head and your buck teeth, who are you kidding? How could you I'm, I'm kidding right? your mother. How's that? How's your mother? I get on top of your father and your mother. Oh, yeah? Well, I guess you're a freaking homo. You're a homo? You're a homo. First of all, you have to learn... Hold on, hold on. You, you're at home and you're dialing a, a radio show. Who's, who's, who's like, desperate? Desperate. I'm desperate? Yeah. Who? I make more money than you do in a month. Who's desperate? Everybody makes more money than I do in a month. Yeah, jackass. A, so you're watching The Simpsons, so now you're a professional writer. Police with no handle. Would you like to be a collaborator? 
What about you and Matt Zagal? I'm with Metaphor. Who are you kidding? Hey, stop digging on me. You could be a collaborator. Slow down, slow down. Police without their handles. That's a good one. I'm going to put that in the home as grip. First, you're an actor. Yeah. Okay. Now you're a writer. What do you do? I'm a I'm an electrical engineer. Oh, an electrical engineer. Oh, okay. that's right. <laughs> okay, so why don't you have a cable and shove it right they're up there? What are you gonna do about that? They're gonna name a four. Uh, they're gonna name a, a highway way. after you. I ninety eight. Okay, because of your I stupidity. Too. Oh, okay. okay. You know it's funny. Down police. I'm watching that. I'm watching Gorilla like trying to come back with a comeback, and I watch him sinking. The wheels are turning. Oh, the yeah. smoke I is coming out. I can't do it here because I know you're looking at me. I know you can't because you don't know how to bug dick. It's so like. funny. <laughs> what are you in front of? I'm an electrical engineer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Go to the electrical so engineer, Joe. You want to compare which you you broken down valise with no handles? <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, All right, Mike, you're on the air. Yeah. Yes. Gorilla's a big dork. <laughs> He's misrepresenting you. What do you mean? Oh, well, you know, he does these shows at night. He comes to Tequila Joe's. He's supposed to be representing you. Instead, he instead of hanging out with the crowd and everything, all he does is he comes up, tells a couple of stupid jokes, throws a couple of CDs out to the crowd, and then goes back on the dance floor with a, with a bunch of would-be followers. What are you talking about? Do you appear where this guy's saying? I've done an appearance for K-Rock at Tequila Joe's, and there have been... You're a Tequila. Oh, uh, let me tell you you're up on stage for two minutes. <laughs> and guess what? I'm doing what they, I'm doing what they asked me to do, sir. What is his kid's name? What do you do? Right, what do you do? You tell yeah. jokes? I don't tell jokes. They, they, K-Rock had me go and do an appearance there. And Did anybody tape they, this? I do. I you've taped my appearances before. Really? I do really good at it. What do you do? What, what you get up and say what? I do, it depends. I, I'll go up there and I introduce you're myself as Steve Bill from the Howard Stern Show. I'm not right. supposed to say anything. You're sitting there drinking at a bar. Why do you want to listen to me? I give out some free I'm not CDs. At a bar. I'm in the pit waiting for you to come out so I can knock you on your ass. So go ahead and do that, you jackass. I'll what do you do uh, for a living? <laughs> I like when Steve stops himself, you know. Why? Because I'm, I'm going to curse. That's you have nothing why. to say. No, I'm going to curse. Is there a gorilla? You mean you can't okay. talk without cursing? No, it's I really hard. No. That's a sign of low IQ. There you go. <laughs> you can't talk oh, without cursing. You barely passed that test. You got lucky. Going to Puerto Rico. You're lucky. Going to Puerto Rico. You're lucky. See you in you're Puerto downy. Rico, pal. You're one step above a downy. What do you do? What do you do on stage? What do you do? You just I just go up. I introduce myself. I just... Blah, blah, blah. And I, they, they, K-Rock wants me to give out, like, what was CDs Jack, and concert what was things. Jackie's first tape? Somebody gets her No, own I never said TV. that. I never said that. Sometimes, but, but I do whatever K-Rock wants me to do. If they want me to give out CDs, maybe... I can't hear this guy. I, what, do you want to listen to me? You're looking at no, me, or do you I want, want to hear, hear this him? guy. The guy's say? lying. What do you say? It's, you, you, instead of hanging out with the rock and roll crowd downstairs, he throws a few CDs out, and he goes upstairs with the disco crowd hanging out on a dance floor. Right. Okay. They, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm learning a lot about you. <laughs> what else you want to Jay, know? you're on the air. Listen. Listen to me. This is the guy, when, even if he does pass, and he does, and he says he could do this, he, when he goes to Puerto Rico, we're going to tear him a new hole. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? How did the people Jesus. turn on Gorilla? Like? <laughs> you're not a popular figure, are you, Gorilla? Oh. That's okay. Listen, when, is he, when is he going to Puerto Rico? When are you going? Uh, I'm going next week. When? Uh, Monday. When Monday? When Monday? What time are you going to Monday? I'm going at 8 o'clock in the morning. And you, how long are you going to be there? For a whole week? 10 days. 10 days for a whole yeah. day? Yep. And where are you, where are you staying at? Oh, I'll just, I'll just give out the address. Huh? I'll just give out the address. Well, why don't you say that? You're staying in the condado. I'm going to find you. Okay. You're right. That's exactly where I'm staying. Wait, I don't understand that, though. What's there to understand? Yeah, how, how a dope like you can win a trip to PR. I don't understand this. <laughs> okay. What's the matter with you? <laughs> All right. All right, you had enough abuse today. Yeah. <laughs> don't like you. What an audience. Yeah. <laughs> don't like you. Well, listen, I love you. Why, thank you. That's all I can. I just think your answering message is goofy. Ah, <sighs> big deal. <sighs> God, big you don't deal. have this daughter, Vaya. <laughs> <laughs> good evening, Tequila Joes. Here I am. I'm Steve Grillo. Yeah, I, I do a good job, my Good parents. night. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. All right. That's Steve Grillo and uh, his answering message. Thank you. <laughs> I got to take a break. We'll do the news. Leslie West is going to come by. He's involved in rock and roll camp. Rock and roll camp? Yeah. What's that?
I don't know. We're going to find out. Oh, wait, one more gorilla call. There's a guy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Hello, real quick, come on. Yeah, I was in a deli on the Upper West Side about a couple of months ago during the summer, and I'm standing in line. There are about 20 people in line, and I hear this voice saying, you know, I don't know. What is, I don't know if I'm going to do that or that. But I turn around. It's Gorillo. I said, excuse me, aren't you Gorillo from the Howard Stern Show? He looked me up and down like I was scum and said, what the F? Do you want an autograph? Bull. 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 I've never, ever, everyone's done that in my entire life, life, and I hope you die because you're lying. You did the same thing. That is bull crap. I've never, ever, ever done that in my yes, entire you life. You could ask anybody, anywhere. I've never I done that to anybody. You standing on line with him. Where? I don't even live on the west side. You're hanging on every... I, I don't know what huh? you're doing what? up there. What do I what? care what you're doing well, up there? It doesn't make a difference. You're lying. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Well, there I you go. I never, ever would do that. Bald headed creep. Yeah. Oh, yeah? You got your ad time, sir. All right. Well, obviously there's some controversy. That's wow. not true. I've never, I've never done that to anybody. No, I hope not. I don't know I, why you. Wait, I've never seen you. I don't know why you think you do that to anybody. Why would I do that to anybody? I don't know. You're not me. <clears throat> you know, maybe exactly. That's exactly why I wouldn't do it. Star who does blow off his fans, you know. Maybe you're the type of star who blows no, off his fans. I, I, I was just talking about that last night. Uh, you're the type of star that doesn't blow off his fans. No, no, no I, I, I was saying that the other day that. How could I ever look at somebody that comes up and recognizes me for being on the show and look, look, look down on them for them recognizing me when I've oh. never even seen you? What do is that, that Jack? You're not being fair. He might have been very busy that day. Right. You might have been fair and you didn't have time for your fans. Yeah, it could have been. I don't have fans. Yeah. You have fans. <laughs> yes, time. I'm sure. I'm sure when you're not when you're relaxed, you have plenty of time for your fans. That I would it could have been that, they, that you were in a rush that day trying to get a sandwich. If I was a rush, if I was in the biggest rush of my life and s someone said that to me, I would never turn around and do that. Might have had a script idea to get the race home and write down. You for know? the Simpsons. Yeah, that's true. I could interrupt with a great thought. Yeah. No autographs. You're pushing the ideas out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> not now, not now. Yes, Joe, you're on the air. Hi, Howard, how you doing? I'd like to agree with the other callers, Howard. You know, Grillo is a real knucklehead, to say the least. Why know? do you say that? Be fair. Well, you know, when I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the show, and I call there uh, from time to time for things. And uh, when I get him on the phone, he, you know, he's like, he, he doesn't help. And uh, he's he really got a negative attitude, and he's just downright nasty to people. That's wow. not true at all. all right. And I'm not lying. What does he say to you? Well, you know, if I ask to speak to someone or something like that, uh, I can't talk right now. Uh, I'm busy. Uh, call back later. No, you know, okay. no, I would never say that. He's just rude. You know, that's not true at everybody all. Everybody else is cool, like John and everybody else that calls. Yeah, they're very polite. So how do you know it's you me? Know? How do I know it's you? Because well, I've been listening to the show okay. for years. Okay, then how come when people call up and they always think I'm John? Huh? How come people always call up and think I'm John? Or well, they think I'm Ganji? Yeah, okay. You're lucky that Howard has who's, you on the who's show. Who's in the studio there. and who's on the other side of the phone? Ah, uh, you're a knucklehead. Yeah. Greg, you know, he's not the only guy who's complained about you, though. Gary gets his complaint all the time about you. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, That's true. That is true, Joe. Uh, what's your name again? Steve. Joe Mario. Steve. No, not Joe. Steve. You, you, I've heard that you're rude to the listeners. Um, it's Gary. Gary, you get this complaint all the time? Yeah, it's not always me. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Uh, people think, people people think I'm Gangy. People Ooh. think I'm John. It's not a, I'm not the only person. What is it, Bobo Boy? No, you know, Steve, not to, not to make you bad, but you, you're, oh. you're quick. You have a quick... He's got like a... He's got a short fuse. You know, I've spoken... You know, remember we did that show a couple months ago and he got all... Maybe that. answering the phones is too much No, for no, no, because he has a quick fuse because even some other people that say work here, Steve can sometimes be inappropriate. He gets like... He gets upset quickly yeah. for little things. Absolutely. That hits it right on the head. Gary just said it. Right. All I, right. You got to work on that. I feel bad, but it's, you, you know you know how you get sometimes, you know, you'll say, Gorilla, could you do this? Or uh, I won't say it, but somebody else will. And they'll go, I'm busy. You know, he gets upset quickly. That's, yeah. that's it. Is that true, that's Steve? Uh, that I can agree with. All right. Okay. Well, and that sort of translates over to the phone. No, you but, work but when you, when, it's you a skill. You have to develop, yes. That answering machine message is, a, is, is really stupid, too. You should I'm not that. asking you to call my house and listen <laughs> to it. You, it. you know, that's really stupid. <laughs> no one I asked mean, you to call it. It's, it's not it's funny. Stupid. These are guys yeah, right. I never it's said it was stupid, funny. stupid, you know. How it's got a point. Right. All right. Thank you. All right. Howard. All right bye. Bye, bye, bye. Joe. That's Joe. <laughs> okay. All right. You better hurry up and run out of the studio. <laughs> now you got something oh, to yeah. think about. Yeah. Now you got something to think about this weekend. <laughs> a new answer machine. Right. right. <laughs> Why don't you put something new on there? Like, hello, my name is Steve. Call me back if you can. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Steve, I'm busy. <laughs> he's, just, he's busy right for the Simpsons. Right, i got to take a break. Leslie West is here. we got the news to do, Robin. We're running late. Let's get yes, to everything. We are. Well, you had a, you wanted to hear Steve's take. Well, a great way to end the last like day. That. Yeah. <laughs> my next machine message will be for Mad. <laughs> from what? From Mad. From Mad? From Mad. 
For Manda. Mad Cigar, my partner, oh, my Mad writing cigar. partner. Oh, okay. Mad <laughs> Mad. <laughs> my writing partner. Isn't he a dish jockey? He's my muse. <laughs> <laughs> Want to hear one more guy wants to talk to girls? Oh, oh come on, dude. I got to get your lunch, on, dude. I got to get your lunch. It's going to be cold. <laughs> is this Frank? Yeah, this is Frank. <laughs> Every guy who calls oh, in about girls is the same guy. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but I met him in Staten Island, and he was a little nasty, a little nasty uh, punk. Yeah, uh, okay. All right? And then yeah. he gave me a cat. Jackie, you killed me. <laughs> I was trying to get your lunch. <laughs> All right. All right. You go uh, get lunch. Yes. And I'll um, I'll hold down the fort. Okay. Leslie West will be about uh, space camp or something. He's involved Rock in. camp. Rock camp. Uh, he can sit in on the news. We'll have fun. Right. right after these words. I just want to ask you a question. We do a story on tax collect I'm collecting overdue bills for the city. Uh, you notice the number of councilmen haven't paid their water or sewer bills yet. Cash flow problem. Is that why you haven't paid yours? I didn't know it wasn't paid, but this... well, it's about about a year since you paid a water or a sewer bill. It's almost five hundred dollars. Long way from two thousand. I would at one time. So you say you are paying off your bill? No, I didn't say that. But it says here you haven't paid your bill in a year. That's what you said. I'm not aware of that. No big problem, you know. City ain't gonna go bankrupt. Well, don't you think it's a bad example to set? No, I do not. I don't have the money. You don't have money to pay a four hundred dollar water bill? I do not have the money, okay? Did you hear me? Well, in time of austerity, Wait, minute. don't you think it's... Uh, How much uh, do you owe? We owe $440. I do not have the money. You say you don't have money to pay your bill. Did you hear me? But your water, your, your water's still on, though, isn't it? Yeah. Well, should, don't you think your water should be turned off if you're not paying your no, bill? No, it should not be. You know... One of these days, you're going to call me, and I'm going to kick your ass. Okay? And one of the days, you're going to corner me, and I'm going to kick your ass. Well, don't you think that's a legitimate question, George? I mean, you're not the and only I counselor. Gave you, you're not the only counselor. Wait a minute. I gave you a legitimate answer. You asked me about my water bill. What did I tell you? You said you didn't have the money. But your water is still on, isn't it? Now, that was uh, my fucking answer to you. But I don't think everybody has that luxury of uh, having their water... Tough shit. Things. Okay, now, one of these days you're going to corner me and I'm going to kick your ass. Now, keep, keep fucking with me, okay? Now, I'm telling you, keep fucking with me. Now, one of these days you're going to grab me with the wrong fucking minute. No, I gave you my fucking answer, okay? Okay. We got to meet. I ain't bullshitting with you. We got to meet. Now, you scared him, but I'll kick your goddamn ass, bro. I ain't bullshitting with you. Son of a bitch. You are the so-called king of all media? I'm not impressed, Howard! Oh, uh, let me tell you something. I am the king of all media. I'm asking the questions around here, you decrepit piece of petrified crap. I can't even figure out why Beth sticks with you, you old bag. But I'm in charge here now. Get down on the deck and crank out 25 for me, darling. Wait a second. There's a funny guy. Are you a comedian, fat buddy? I'm talking to you, Artie. Now what did I do? What are you picking on me for? <laughs> Why am I picking on you? Excuse me, Miss Sensitive Nancy. <laughs> Should I give you a dress to wear? Aren't you the cokehead who lost his job on Mad TV for not knowing how to put down a dollar bill? Weren't you the guy who pooped his bed when he was drunk? Farty! That rhymes with farty. Do you fart? <laughs> no, sir. Bull feathers, I bet you fart like a big fat Mexican at a chili contest. <laughs> Do you gamble? Yes, sir. You know what I bet? What? I bet you drop dead of a heart attack before you turn 40. That's what I bet. Looking at you makes me want to vomit. Can I vomit on you? No, sir. Why? It could only improve your disgusting looks. Hey, no offense, Sergeant Hartman. Yeah, you're coming tough. in. You're a really tough guy. You come in here and you insult my people. Why don't you get a grip on yourself, please? I ought to rip off your ball so you cannot contaminate the rest of the world. Oh. Hey, there's Casey Armstrong. Hey, Casey. Oh, who's that hey, guy? Hey, aren't you the girl who played the gay chicken? Yes, I am. 
Shut up. Hey girl, want me to paint your testicles green and shave you with a K bar? Ha <laughs> ha! What the hell is wrong with you? Are you a queer, KC? Dude, I'm a bad guy. You better shut up because I'll kill you. <laughs> well, what do oh, we no. have here? That's Stutter and John, Sergeant Hartman. Look who we have here, Private Stupid. Bend over, crack a smile, and show me what you have for brains, Private Stupid. Hey, my name is John Melendez. <laughs> oh, that's right, the stuttering freak who don't know how to speak. Hey, I'm a funny guy. Who told you that, defective mutant, your mommy? <laughs> the best part of you ran down to crack your mama's butt over 40 years ago. I ought to know because I was behind her at the time. Hey, hey will you shut up, man. I'll kick your ass like I kick Crazy Cabby's ass. I'll bet the Martian could kick your ass. Ain't that right, Fred North? Could you kick Private Stupid's ass? I have no idea. That's right, you have no idea. <laughs> Clueless Martian freak. Hey! Ain't it time for you to crawl back into the mothership and fly to Orion? <laughs> hey, douchebag. Say hi to Mr. Spock for me. Oh, my. Any damn time you feel like beaming up, feel free to do so. Good you ahead, nothing Peter. more than an unorganized pieces of monkey crap to me. <laughs> Speaking of monkeys, where is that missing link producer of yours? Bababoonie. I'm right here, Sergeant Harbin. I'm Bababoonie. Bababoonie. What is your major function? I'm nuts. <laughs> oh, let me guess. You were born with a fat ass. That, that's not nice. Stand up to him, Gary. That's not right. I was just kidding. That fat roly-poly ass of yours is nothing compared to those green tombstone teeth in your mouth. Holy Christ. Your mouth looks like a toilet. I'll bet that I could unscrew your head and poop down your neck. Is that why your breath smells like an overflowing cesspool on a hot day in Georgia? Man. I have never seen such scary teeth on one individual in my entire life. Do you have mood teeth? Do they turn green when you you're nervous? I think you're nervous right now, aren't you? Are you shaking in your Puma's pizza boy? Or do you want Star Jones over there to come to your rescue? Star Jones? That's right, Whoopi. I'm talking to you. Robin, Robin, you Sergeant Hartman is talking to you. It was funny until he started talking about me. Uh, listen, she was a captain in the Air Force, and you should know that. I outrank you. You were a captain in the Air Force? Yeah. What were you, captain in charge of the Jelly Donut Brigade? Go oh, get spit down it out, on the Lida. floor and give me twenty. Ah, oh, forget it. With those Charlies on your chest, your arms probably couldn't even possibly reach the ground. I'll tell you what, king of all media, I'm going to leave now. All right. Can you handle that king of all media now? Shut your goddamn mouth, Beaker. Oh, Beaker. <laughs> beaker. What's that, What's that about? Is that my nose? That's exactly what it is. Of course I'm referring That's to your nose. That's exactly what it is. To breathe in here. You're sucking all the oxygen out of this room. <laughs> You're sucking up all the air, Beaker. Whee! All right, guys. Hey, welcome. Sorry, we got a little late start here. Uh, again, a DoorDash mishap. Mishap. Got them DoorDashes over there. Got it done, get it. But uh, everyone first, you know what we have to do. That man, his name is Coach. He needs to be welcomed. And if you don't do it, you're not his friend. Everyone, welcome, Coach. Do it now, please. Welcome, Coach. Walter Adams, you are awesome, by the way. That is my brother right there. I love that guy. I'll tell you a story about him in a little while. Hey, Kevin got him. And uh, Dan got him. Oh, Dom DeLuise, hi. And Johnny. And the farmer. And Abraham. And stay humble. Woo! Wee! And, and Pauly. No, Pauly. Um, I got, uh, I never tried it before. Is three guys burgers and fries any good? I bet it sucks because I'm a food snob and I hate everything. 
But I got three guys burgers and fries. I got a, a goddamn cheeseburger. Oh, and we didn't do Crypt Keepers. Sorry. Uh, everyone knows about the Crypt Keepers. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got three, uh, four burgers and fries. Three guys, four guys, whatever the hell it is. It's outside right now. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, oh, and I got to tell you about this. I was trying to find something. And uh, this came up, and it's funny. I'll tell you about that. Steve Grillo, who hasn't shown up yet in the thing, he um, was supposed to be out here, but he'll be on the show tonight. And he seems to think that I I'm going to, like, ambush him with John. Like, why are people afraid of John? Like, he's going to be mad at you. What? If you don't do what he says, he'll be mad at you. What different? What is that? fucking do to you in your life? What do you care? What? <laughs> Five Guys sucks, Father? Really? Oh, no. What do you mean? They humble charge your phone ASAP? What do you mean? No, I do. Uh, logging Road King, listen to me. Guess what I got in the fridge right now? Yeah, uh, I've been uh, not doing it correctly. If you do it correctly, it's supposed to be outside, but it's not cold enough. In my refrigerator right now, and I should do the refrigerator uh, test for farmer, but right now there is a Sauerbraten soaking in my refrigerator. It's got the celery, it's got the carrots, it's got the juniper, it's got the bay leaves, it's got the vinegars. Uh, it's been soaking, serenading for the longest time. I got a friend tomorrow who's never had Sauerbraten. You'll get to meet her. And uh, so uh, I'm making it uh, for my friend. She'll be here tomorrow uh, on the show. Her name is Natasha, and you'll like her. So I got a Sal Broughton serenading in the fridge right now. Um, I got Grillo. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Make me, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm doing my own foods. And what the hell is Grillo doing here? Uh, I want you to know that Muck Mead uh, dropped off my order. And there it is in front of the station. There it is. It's front of WMAP Radio. So I got to go next door and get it. It's not that cold out, right? See, like, I fucked myself because I'm going to be doing the show. I'll be here for an hour. And burgers, you can't reheat. They're not reheatables. So I fucked myself. And, and, and I'm right. And I, I normally don't do this. But uh, I, I want to prove to you what I'm doing. I'll just do it. Uh, here. Uh, because Grillo hasn't popped in yet. What is this douche doing? Yo. Grillo, did you get the link? Hold on a sec. Dude, you're on the air. Yo. You're on the air. Did you get the link yet? Uh, give me a second. All right. We'll, we'll just, uh, we'll, when you get a chance, get on there. I sent it to you. Yes, Grillo. Yeah. Did you get the link? Yeah, I did. I'm trying to get the lighting right. Okay. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. Take your time. When you gotta when you gotta call a guest on the air, it's just it's very unprofessional. Like you think I'm professional. <laughs> so I I had planned to do my Opie show tonight because I mean the guy is such a douche. Uh, it takes a, it takes a lot to set me off, but this guy is just horrible. I don't know why he's not. He doesn't have a statue at his Hamptons house or his New York City apartment. A guy's probably worth multi million dollars. Why he doesn't have a statue like Buddha of Anthony? That's how you got it, pal. God, and it's it's just narcissism at the worst. He really thinks he had a. Uh, 
He had a part in it. Everybody's got a part in it. But he didn't like being the straight guy. He didn't like saying, Anthony, what next? What next? None of those comedians respected him. I'll show you some clips later. It'll make you sick. But let me bring in my friend, uh, Steve Grillo, who's going to hang out with us tonight. Steve Grillo. Hey, buddy. What's going on, Casey Armstrong? How are you, sir? Much better now that I see you. All right, man. Hey, what, what, are we, what were you talking about? You think uh, I'm, like, setting you up? Do you think I would ever set you up for anything? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I just start, like, I just, if I'm going to get stuck in a, in a situation like that, I just want to be prepared. That's all. Like, what, what are you afraid of? Oh, it's not, a f I'm not good with confrontation. I think maybe it's you, not, uh. Who do you have a beef with? What's that? Who do you have a beef with, man? Oh, I don't have a beef with anybody, but people have beefs with me. Who does? Well, I I, I just think that uh, our good old friend, uh, Mr. Controversial Stuttering John, <laughs> might be not too happy with me. Why? Well, because, you know what? I, I I don't exactly approve what uh, goes on on Shuli's show as much as I do love Shuli and everybody over there, Bob Levy. But, you know, they, they do uh, um, make a concerted effort to just uh, harass John on a daily basis. And <clears throat> John asked for it. But I, I think, you know, at some point, some of their trolls and everything like that have taken it a little bit too far into John's personal life and, and disrupted his own personal life and his way of making a living. And when it comes to that point, I kind of have a little problem with that. Uh, John's my boy. And, you know, I kind of, um, he gave me an ultimatum about not going on Shuli's show. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I, you know, I respect John's friendship and everything like that. Uh, very much so. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I also mean? respect Shuli's friendship. What do you mean ultimatum? What did he say? It was basically like, uh, 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 the guy's ruining my life. Stay away from his show. I, oh, okay. So. If you go on Shuli's show, then you're not his friend. Yeah. Well, you know how that is with John. But, you know, he said by me, if I go on his show, I'm just getting him more listeners and he's making more money. And um, and I, I, I kind of like, you know, Shuli has been nothing but good to me okay. over the years. Every time I went up to Sirius, whether it was for just to say hello or I was in the neighborhood, Shuli always made it a point to put me on Howard 100 News. Yeah, and interview yeah. me and find you're, out what's going you're on. You're, you're you're an ass eater from way back. You're a you're a a, a guy that uh, you can't mention the Howard Stern show without Steve Grillo. For God's sake! Well, I, I would like to think that, but uh, I want to get this mic. Oh no! Sorry. Yeah. No. I can, I just I can hear you. I just like to hear you a little better. Okay. Anyway, um, I I just basically, uh, you know, when Shuli called me and asked me to do the show, I. I first said, oh, I, I, I can't. And then I went, wait a minute. I'm a grown-ass fucking man. Why can't I do this show? Because John is going to get upset. <laughs> I'm not going on there. To, you know, I guess that that whole show is about bashing John. Well, it's not about and bashing. I'm not going, I didn't go on there to bash John. I went in there because Shuli asked me to come on and talk. And then when it got to the point after we had our pleasantries and they started turning the show to John, I bowed out. And I just wasn't going to be a part of it because I, 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 I'm not there to bash John. I was just there because Julie asked me to come on as a friend. Okay, uh, uh, Grillo, you said so much right before. I mean, there's so much to unpack, uh, as as they say here. But uh, in the beginning, you were talking about you were you were you were worried about being ambushed. So. Uh, and I believe that has to do with John. So if I had John on right now, and by the way, uh, John doesn't like me. Um, oh, I, I don't know. What, I, I I haven't been caught up on your recent friendship. You know, yeah, John goes John friends, John goes dude. through friends and stuff like that. He loves controversy and he loves to argue, and that's one of his favorite things. Yeah. Um, and which which causes to him to get in the situations that he's in right now. And but but he's always he's been back. like that. He's back. He's back on the air and. and Hey, hey, have you ever? Uh, I'm gonna get back to this, but have you ever got five burgers and fries? Or five guys burgers and fries. Have you ever? Eaten five that? guys gives you more fries than you could eat. <laughs> uh, no, they 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 pack their fry bag. They fill your fry bag up to to the top. Yeah, uh, um, Gaguli uh, says uh, having trouble finding. 
it's I, I see it. It's right on the the doorstep of the station over there. So why is why is Gagouli still contact contacting me? Uh, we'll we'll get it when I when I, uh, I I go to break. But um, so let's just go let's go back because there's so much and I and I've been a bad host so far because I haven't uh, stopped you and wanted to ask you about everything I was going. But you said that you got an ultimatum uh, ultimatum by John said. Hey, you go on Shuli. You're not my friend. You're not my friend. That's that's what it was. Yeah. But and and, and I, I am his friend. And when when it when it turned to start the, ba the John bashing, I I I said I'm not here no, to bash you John. Right. You said no, I'm not into this. I don't want to bash John. You were very <laughs> adamant about hey, he's my friend. I'm not bashing him. And and I said I don't necessarily agree with how things are going with this whole thing. It's one thing to keep it in the media, but you know when you're 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 trying to um, affect someone's a way of living and who, trying to take money out of their pocket. Who who is taking money out of out of who's? Uh, I'm not saying Shuli uh, or, or anybody like Levy, but you know they incited. You you know how the fans are. When, when you incite them and you get them rolling, they will go at no expense to dig deep and find your personal life and put it out yeah, there well, now I, I can see that but uh, but i would argue steve that by going on there and by doing the rico show and all those other shows that they're making john money he's relevant he's got uh well um, well according to john that you know they were calling uh comedy clubs that he was making money from and they were uh you know getting oh, him canceled like trolls and stuff yeah they were getting him canceled um, from comedy clubs they were also um well, whatever means he has to make in his personal life, that's, that's um, they were they were they were attacking his personal um, his personal life and, and his ways to make money. Yeah, that's and, uh, you know none, I, of, none of none of Shuli, none of none of anybody on the air would be doing that stuff. That would just be a couple fucking douchebags. Uh, yeah, nothing nothing better. No, no, I, I I'm not saying Shuli or anybody there told anybody he to do what they the did. Gig, Steve, he wouldn't have had the gig unless they were talking about him. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, the, he got fired from a couple of stand-up gigs. I don't know if it's because he's not funny or because you know the trolls kept calling. <laughs> uh, because the, the trolls kept calling the comedy clubs, but hey, hey, Steve, um, wait, hold on, people don't know that you're actually very funny. Uh, you did when you did stand up um, at, at the gig we did out in uh, at Long Island years ago. You were very, very funny. You you you, you did a great job and. Uh, it's 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 weird to me that you didn't continue doing stand up after that because you proved that you could do it. I just I, I have two reasons for that, and I I could explain it right now. Uh, I have no problem getting up in front of a, a ten thousand people and giving me the microphone and talking. Uh, I'm more of a storyteller than a joke teller, but most of my stories always wind up being funny anyway. But no one comes to a comedy club and wants to hear me tell a goddamn story. Uh, <laughs> B, I'm 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 not good at figuring out how to be a stand-up comic and, and and the other thing is it's like all my friends that are stand-up comics god bless them but they're just miserable <laughs> fucking people <laughs> you know i i see them every night and god that they are tenacious sons of bitches they're out there every night doing every open mic putting themselves out there getting laughs figuring out what their shit is and there's so many of them there's so yeah. many of them and they're yeah, out there yeah. night after night sitting there and they're trying to make something out of the stand-up and who, who, who chose a career in which you go out every night and make people try and like you unless you got something that uh you 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 know you lack inside i get it i you know i, I, I did it for, for the longest time i got no self-esteem uh i don't believe any comic is uh, I don't know any of them that are very healthy, to be honest with you. Like oh, you yeah, you know, but it, it was cool to see someone, like two people that I saw that were tenacious over the years, like uh, Sherrod Sh Small and uh, Rachel Feinstein. I, I was there when I used to work at a restaurant called Brunelli's, and they were roommates, and they lived at the block. And the owner, Russ Brunelli, was very, very uh, gracious that he saw their talent. And he... Uh, he used to like help them out because he knew they were struggling comics and they'd come and they'd eat for free and we'd do little comedy shows at a Italian restaurant would never ended up very well because there was a mafia there and they almost died okay. but like but I, it was uh, they never gave up and now Sherrod Small is uh, headlining at the comedy cellar every night and, and Rachel Feinstein is like uh, one of the hot pretty Jewish comics hey Steve I want you to watch this this is Dice watch this 
Let's talk a little bit about uh, where your career has <laughs> yeah, been. I can't even believe it. You, you know of course, I mean? you were you were a headline guy, I'm and still then a headline guy. You know what I mean? For a while, you popped out. Now you're coming back. I for a while, back, for a while, you were actually do, you, were you know running. I mean? You were running a gym. Tell us about that. Running a gym? Weren't you Why running you a gym at some point? You're supposed to be a news guy. Where you getting your fucking That's our information? Research. You aren't. You this aren't. This is ridiculous. I come on CNN, and the guy don't even know what he's talking about. Go ahead. You at no point were you running a gym? Um, no, no, running a gym. No, what, you, you need to work out or out? something? Jesus fucking Christ with these guys. I come on the news for two seconds and, and you want to say, every All time right. I do an interview, a guy wants to open his fucking mouth. Can't All right, even Andrew. Do a little thank you very much. We here. thought that you, you could know, hold back. Go fuck yourself. You know what? All I'm right. Fuck the whole fucking network. We'll go. We wanted to know exactly what was going on up here, so last Monday we rented a van, covered up all the windows, and placed I-Team cameraman Greg Meyer inside that van with his video camera. At about 9.30 in the morning, we parked it right here, sitting just down the street from Mr. Rizzo's house. It should be noted that the van was parked on a public street in broad daylight. At no time did any of our people go on Mr. Rizzo's property. What you're looking at is what cameraman Meyer saw through the lens of the hidden I-Team camera that morning. Not much happened for about three hours. And then around noon, several police officers became suspicious of our vehicle. If you look closely, you can see some of them in the van's rear view mirror. Now in just a moment, we'll show you the unedited tape of exactly what happened when one of our IT members opened the truck door. But before we do, we want you to know that when the door was open, cameraman Meyer immediately handed over this official Philadelphia police press pass in order to clearly identify himself to everybody on the scene. And also remember, as you watch this, that Frank Rizzo is not a member of the Philadelphia Police Department, and this is supposed to be an official police matter. Here we go. All right. That was, uh, that's Frank Rizzo. Um, like the guy from the Jerky Boys? He's unbelievable. I would play the whole thing, but everyone's seen it a million times. Um, do you want to see the end of it? Uh, well, no. Obviously, you had to go take a leak or something. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, no. I would love to go. What, what, what was so? I, I, I would not mind watching the whole thing. I just didn't know what the point of it was. Oh, I, I, the point was I had to go get my uh, four guys um, outside, but uh, we can get back to that later. So now, you, now uh, I'm going to be a better host. I'm sorry, Steve Grillo. Everyone knows Steve Grillo as man uh, that was on the Stern Show for the longest time. He uh, then went on to work for this um, uh, bright shot uh, lighting, where all the movies that you see have these uh, these lights that his company. So he's very successful in that. And um, what's well, how does it affect you with this strike, man? Anything? Well, here, well, you know, since you know, uh, Bright Shot, you know, everything sort of leveled out with Bright Shot, and uh, well, that they've evolved into um, battery generators, like you know, like the, the big gas generators you see anywhere you are. That 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 you know, you need gasoline to get uh, you know, circulate electricity. Bright Shot now has generators that are battery cells that can do the same thing without gas. And they last just as long. So we've evolved into the the, the battery generators. Um, that so like if you're on location or you're anywhere and you need a generator, like we now have battery generators that can you could take, and uh, they will run electricity just as efficiently and quietly. Okay. Um, instead of the big gas generators that make a lot of noise and then cause a lot of pollution. Everybody's green these days, yeah, yeah, uh, which yeah, I don't yeah. buy. But anyway, uh, they, they are very um, convenient if you're on location or anywhere and you need uh, electricity. Um, the, the, the Bright Shot battery generators are amazing. But yes. uh, I've also evolved into um, being a, a local 52 grip and also a local one stagehand. And uh, basically, this, the, the, the writer's strike and the actor's strike have crippled uh, everybody. I know at least <laughs> 100 yeah, so people. It's, so it's tough, but now you're getting back to, you're getting back to work now, and it's, uh, it's all going to come back. No, I'm not getting back to work because these goddamn fucking pretentious, rich asshole actors can't figure out to get a goddamn contract. All they can think about is, like, piling on their millions, and, you know, there's a... A, a, a good bunch of people in Local 52 and a lot of other unions that have been in solidarity with the writers and the, and the SAG union uh, where our contract is fine, but we've been out of work since for six months. Uh, that's, that, that sucks, man. All right. Because these people are squabbling over bullshit. 
Yeah, yeah. It it it's it, it seems like there's a there's a lot on both ways. Now, um, let, let's get because I know what these uh, the, the people uh, that are watching you, and I appreciate everyone who's come in here and everyone um, who who uh, uh, who tuned in, and I, I see you guys in there. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, people want to know. Uh, I don't know if you're uh, privy to any of the information about what goes on. John said he was going to leave about three days ago. I think this is the third time that he left. And then yesterday, I see the motherfucker. He's he's back uh, uh, on air. Um, do you think that he needs... Can he ever live a life, Steve? You know him better than me. Can he live a life without this attention? I, I obviously not. I really haven't. I, 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 I kind of follow the saga of John very lightly. <laughs> but whatever I see um, being posted, maybe on X or Twitter, whatever they call it now, or right, right. Um, I, I'm not like uh, on a day to day uh, thing. I just I, I check in just because I, to be honest, I, I, I just want to see if John's OK or if he's gotten his shit straight. I just get a Wait, lot of you feedback. You worry about his. Uh... Yeah. I, I worry about him because um, it, it, it's it's I don't know it's if, if it's the John that I know or you know it's someone else it's the different level oh. of John and I don't know why he continues to put himself out there like that and cause so many people to hate him and just yeah. be I get controversial Howard was controversial but Howard was controversial in a way where it made sense. John's controversy just seems like he's just angry and wants to make people mad at him or he wants to pick fights with people, which he's done since I've known him since 1991. Or, yeah. You know as well as I do. How many times do you get stuck in an argument with John in the office for, <laughs> for 40 minutes? Yeah, but do you think uh, that he has a sense of entitlement where he thinks he's a celebrity? Um, well, he is. Not for nothing. Let's get get it straight. Um, I mean, there's I mean, always, I mean the dabble verse. Th this... This is a very small uh, picture of 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 our entire society. There, very small. There, there's there's grades, Casey. A B C D E. There's A list. There's B list. John's. Uh, I would say John's a close C plus, okay. whereas you're probably a, a solid C, and I'm down like an E minus. <laughs> so you know, like it's, if you want to grade, so I, I don't consider hey, myself a celebrity. Yes. <laughs> I consider myself someone that just a lot of people happen to know who I am. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, we, we did stuff like 20 years ago and, you know, now we, we're, we're making a living. But the difference between that and John, I believe, is that John still thinks it is 20 years ago. And well, that's, that's my problem with it. It's not a problem, but it's just my observation about him is that, you know, it, he thought that he was a celebrity but howard was the celebrity we worked for yeah. this celebrity. Well, i always understood that you did i know you did yeah yeah it would, but um john had a different you know a, a different bit of um a higher level celebrity where he was interviewing celebrities all the celebrities knew him and then he also not for nothing that the, the the jay leno writing uh announcer shit is major street cred oh, that's he's, the he's goddamn done tonight show than, he's done better than any of us to get that yeah. job, you can you know you can dissect how he got it or why he got it, but the fact is he was on the Tonight Show for a couple of years. No, no yeah. matter why he was there, um, that trumps anybody. Um, you know, uh, myself. Uh, I'll just I can't I can't speak for you, but I'm going to say myself. I mean, he's trumped me. Uh, uh, you know, made a lot more of himself after the Stern Show than I did by leaps and yards but now i think it's like uh you know he'll get mad if you say john stop you're not you're not on the tonight show you're not on the stern show you're a podcaster in a small uh niche audience you're not a celebrity so stop acting like you're entitled that's all i gotta say and uh, well yeah. here, here here's the real case and i, I think you know I, I don't know if you, i don't know if you know this but i'm not a doctor or a psychiatrist you so but I, I you know i am astute to a lot of weird things and 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 as much as i you know as long as i've known john and so have you we both know that john is extremely intelligent he's a very smart guy like he's very smart his brain works on a, a level that's probably why he stutters uh, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not kissing his ass. I don't buy that. 
Well, I, 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 I've always known him to be like smart and like, you know, in, in a certain way, which I think, I think at a certain level of that intelligence also becomes, uh, also comes along with a certain sense of self entitlement and narcissism. Okay. And, and, and John, there's no doubt in my mind, just like a lot of people that are on that level that are that kind of smart in my mind are, are narcissists. Okay. And you can't tell them that they're wrong and you can't tell them that they, 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 they've done something that offends you uh, because they, they don't think they're ever wrong because they think that they're that smart. And it's a level of narcissism that makes their life a lot difficult because Good they point. can never see well anything said. else but are they being right. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Um, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, you know who loves John? Who? John. <laughs> <laughs> uh totally man and you you hit it before you said look at how many relationships uh that you know just all uh they they go away they come back do you have relationships like that i mean do you war with people one day the next day that you're you're friends with them uh, uh it's weird right yeah i don't i don't oh, because a i don't like conf i hate confrontation uh b I, I don't think that much of myself where I think I'm always wrong. I'm, I'm always like, I would be more than like, knows you're a good guy, but you know, but you do me wrong. And I, you know, I'll wait two years and get back at you. But, you know, <laughs> you won't know it's me, but I'll definitely get back at you. But the wrestler um, in you, man. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I, um, I don't like feuding, but, but here's the deal. You always, you'll always, you know, water finds its level and sort of assholes. <laughs> and you'll always figure out at some point when those people aren't your friends and they're dick bags and they're using you or they're just they're just a complete another narcissist that, that they're just out for themselves. Yeah. And that's that was what uh, uh, my big problem with this guy, Opie. Opie. Do you know who Opie uh, from Opie and Anthony? Uh, you know what? I met Opie once. Uh, we did like a remote broadcast from a bar. I did. You know, um, he I don't know him at all. I just I've I've seen a couple of videos that he posts every once in a while. Um, you know, I always respected Opie and Anthony for what they did. I never listened to the show because I didn't have a car and I never listened to the radio. Like I would people like when you left Howard, you didn't listen. I went, Yeah, because you wanna know why? I, I was sleeping and when I get up I turn on the TV and not the radio. You were a human being. You didn't get yeah. up four in the morning. Yeah. This isn't the nineteen thirties, the fireside chat. I don't get up and listen to the radio or put a TV on. I got so, but I get the people like when I listen to Howard is because I was commuting all the time. Yeah, and and I had the headphones and I was in a car or uh, uh, on a bus, coming back and forth to do whatever I had to do, and I was up that early. But after I stopped working there, like you know, and he went to Sirius, I just I didn't have the time nor the ambition to listen when I came home from work or, you know, I it, I listened in certain circumstances, and I did just, but that's why I never listened to Opie and Anthony either. Yeah. But I respected them greatly because they were up against uh, Howard and Howard is being a hypocrite and trying to censor people when Howard's being censored his whole life anyway, which I always thought was the worst thing ever. Right, right. You know, um, I had a, like a, a bunch of clips and you are on this thing, this vice thing. Oh, and by the way, uh, I, I need to show you this, uh, Steve. Um, I, uh, I don't think I ever showed it to you, but um, one of my biggest failures in life and there are many, uh, <laughs> but one of the biggest failures is I put out a fitness uh, video uh, that was about to come out, and you wonder why this didn't take off. Look at it, Steve. <laughs> Ten points. Ten points for jumping jacks. Ten points for jumping jacks, Steve. <laughs> Sorry, I, I fell asleep for a second. What was that? Why didn't it work? You yeah, because uh, guess what? You learn how to do jumping jacks when you're in kindergarten, <laughs> KT. <laughs> I thought you would laugh at that. So yeah, uh, no. Well, listen, uh, I'm sure you had a lot, a lot of people saying, "Can you hand you a couple of bucks when you didn't have any?" And uh, they're going to give you a video, and they're going to make you. Everybody says they're going to make you a million dollars, and of course, why wouldn't you listen? How many people really know how to do jumping jacks? Okay, I mean, come on. Well, no, it's push-ups. <laughs> jumping jacks is one thing. Push-ups. People don't know how to do push-ups. <laughs> people can go like this, Casey. 
Right, but right. push-ups, you know, push-ups are a specific technique. Right, but this, and, if you could say I was doing wrestler jumping jacks there. Where, you, oh, it, yeah, hold on a second. You know, what, you know what's right here, Casey? I have hanging on the wall. Oh, boy. My headgear. Oh, look at that. Is that why you have those nice ears? Right there on the wall. Look at that. My head's too fat now. It doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, I was just wondering because you did this thing, uh, Vice. Uh, they did something about the shock jocks or something like that. And um, this Opie guy was uh, Opie from Opie and Anthony um, was on it too, and he is just as big as a narcissist as uh, John is. Um, listen to this, man. Uh, this I I didn't want to do. I know you got to get up. You got a big job tomorrow. But, but I just I, I want to preempt the fact that I I have not seen it. I seen a couple of clips of me. You were on it. What the hell? I'm not, not seen the whole thing. You looked like a, a retarded leprechaun. A leprechaun? Yeah, were you wearing like a some kind of fedora or some shit? I don't know. Maybe Who, I, me? Maybe I was just. Wait, wait. You said I look like a retarded leprechaun? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, who else said that? I don't know. Just you? I think so. What I do you mean you think so? Well, Opie, you wait, did Opie like say that? You were wearing a hat in a like something green. You were like, wait. Yeah, but I, I was wearing this. It's right here. Yeah, that that, I, that that was the first and last time I wore it. That's I saw that in Leprechaun Four, and that's what he wore. Yeah, well, because you you want to know why? Because I, I normally I'd be in a, a cut off shirt and a bandana, and Probably. I said, you know what? Let me fuck people up and wear something completely outside of the box, <laughs> which was a green V neck sweater, which you I haven't know, wore since like grammar school, you and just to fuck with people on golf club or some shit like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. I did it on purpose. I know, and you, you you brought up good points, and I thought you were effective in it. But listen to this asshole. If you're really going for it, you should simulcast with Ant. The show would be huge. No, no thank you. This is, no, what? No! Holy crap! It's been ten years. No. I wished uh, Anthony well again last night on the Twitter. I hope he heals and mends. I hope he gets back to a hundred percent. I hope he gets to go and do what he loves doing with his thing. And that's it. That's it. Going for it doesn't mean go getting back with Anthony. Going for it just means that I got an idea, a concept that I'm pretty excited and happy about. <laughs> and we will continue doing that and see how far we can take it. Uh, it would be almost impossible to get to the height of Opie and Anthony with anything I do. Uh, as a solo person. And and the same is true for Anthony. That's just how it is. Bullshit. Bullshit. He should, I tell you, he should be having a statue like Buddha when you walk into his Hamptons uh, place and his place in the city of Anthony and it just says, thank you for my career. Thank you. I don't, uh, you know, I don't know the guy, and I, I never heard anything like that. I, thought he was say, I know what I fucking see, and I know what I heard, Steve. So, would you, uh, so he doesn't want to be with Anthony anymore. They're, 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 their 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 egos clash, and then they're they're done. I, I can't, I can't speak, man. He, he just, it's I, I, you know what though? I, you know, I don't, I don't know that whole situation between them uh, well enough to have an opinion. He sucks. He's horrible. I, I don't, yeah, I, I listen to him every Anthony's once in a while. Funny. He's on a balcony someplace beautiful. Isn't Anthony funny? What's that? Isn't Anthony hilarious? He I love Anthony. Anthony. He, like, I, you know, he, 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 he welcomed me with. Anywhere. And they were popular, Steve. He, he welcomed me with open arms. And I, I, oh, I'll, I'll never forget that because when I did his show, I thought I was about to get hammered, and he was really cool. And he would, he, he knew more about me than I thought he did. Do well, you, you know that I, uh, I started a fight between him and uh, John Stewart. You started a fight between him and Which, John Stewart. Yeah, uh, I, I went to go see uh, Artie at uh, Caroline's, and Anthony was in the, the audience. Who I I, I, have, I had met him before, okay. and so but after the show, Artie was like, "Come on, girl, you're coming with me down to the comedy cellar." I was like, oh, "Okay." So hey, like Artie grabbed me, and we jumped in a taxi, and we went down to the comedy cellar, and of course, everybody else followed, and. We get to the, you know, have you been to the comedy cellar? Everybody, all the comedians used to hang out upstairs in the Olive yeah. restaurant or whatever. And in the back, there was uh, Aziz Ansari and someone else, like Sarah Silverman and then John Stewart. 
And now I knew John Stewart like way back in the day when he had like a little show on Channel Nine. A friend of mine was a writer on there, and I had hung out with John a couple of times, and I hadn't seen him, but I know he knew who I was, and I think he had just retired from the Daily Show, and I, I, I saw him, and he, he when he got up, I said, "Hey, John, I just want to say congratulations on your retirement." Uh, it's Steve Grillo. He goes, hey, Grillo. Now, Anthony sees me talking to John Stewart. And unbeknownst to me, I guess they've been pretty hard on John. You know, Anthony been pretty hard on John over the years. And uh, but Anthony, of course, being Anthony, was inclined to introduce himself to John while I was talking to him. Okay. So uh, as when I kind of just said, OK, and I was walking away, Anthony stepped in and goes, hey, John, how you doing, Anthony? Kumia, uh, Opie and Anthony. And John Stewart goes, get the fuck out of here. I'm not shaking your hand, you fucking low life piece of shit. Oh, my and God. Like, oh, whoa, 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 wait. I, you know, it's a, it, this is an entertainment business. You know, this is what we do. He goes, he goes, you know what? I'll never shake your hand because you and your fucking guy are pieces of shit. Heard what you had to say about me over the years. You can go fuck yourself. And now, and he's getting in Anthony's face. Wow. But now all of a sudden, two of John's friends stand up like they're going to do something. Now, I don't really know Anthony, but one-on-one -on -one fight is fair. A three-on-one -on fight is not fair. So now I stand behind Anthony like, uh-oh. <laughs> What's going to go down? You know what I'm saying? John and Anthony want to go out. If that's cool. But two big goons stand up behind John. I'm like, uh, you know, I'll roll around on the floor if I have to. Not that I'm a that good of friends with Anthony, but uh, to Anthony's credit, um, he wound up sh talking John down off the ledge, and they wound up sitting and talking, and they wound up shaking hands. All right, well that's good. No one needs to, to do any type of nonsense fighting. Hey, Star Mountain's a friend of ours here. He goes, "Hey, Casey, cheers, Grillo. Don't get me started on John. Thanks, Star Mountain." Uh, that was Star Mountain, and then then you got um, uh, Michael Diane goes Grillo. Who was funnier on Stern, John or Shelley? Shelley. Um, yeah. Well, you know, you can't you can't ever top John for the interviews. But John, that was a fifty fifty thing because John was being John, which was funny, but John didn't write the questions, which were even funnier. <laughs> um, so that's kind of like a 60 40 thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 being yeah, John. Hold on, Steve. Hey, if you motherfuckers touch my hamburger, you're fucking not eating for a day. You're talking right. to your cats? Yeah. You're yelling at your cats? Yeah, I know what they're doing. Uh, well, yeah, they're my cats. Eight. They're already eight. No, I saw a yeah. little guy. He was up there before. He's jumping around. He's doing. Oh, are you, oh wait, my guy? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's up there. I just made uh I just he's gave them um look, I just made this for them. All the uh shelving oh, on the nice. walls and stuff like that. They must love that. No, he just I just I can put that shelf up. He's up there. Oh cool. he's chilling. Right. He's, he's watching you, Casey. Nice. What's oh, his he's name? up in the corner? That's yeah. great. That, that's upgrade. Upgrade. All right. Hey, upgrade. Upgrade. Hey. Uh, let's, let's go to, uh, last one, Star Mountain, because Steve's got a big gig tomorrow, which is going to be awesome. Star Mountain goes, hey, maybe John medicates and drinks more because of being made fun of 24-7. He still deserves it. What do you think? Man? Well, I don't know about that because I don't think his ego allowed him that he's got, he's, he's upset about being made fun of because mm -hmm. I never saw anybody make fun of anybody else the way he did. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. John, John is relentless. Yeah, yeah, but uh, let me ask you something because my my whole take on John is he's a different guy if you were just hanging out one on one with him, but if he gets in around a group, it's a different John. The John one on one, that's a guy I like. That's the guy I would uh, have over for Sauerbraten. Uh But you bring someone else around, and then he's got to you know uh, you know push people down and tell how great he is and. You know, all that nonsense. What do you think about that, Mr. Grillos? Uh, I think that John is going to find the most important person in the room or the most uh, the one person that uh, is going to do something for him. And he was going to find him and he was going to uh, she chirps, by the way. Yeah, I like I like that. Uh, yeah, this, this is big Shirley. Hello, Mr. Shirley. Miss Shirley. Yeah. So um, John will find the most important person in the room who he thinks can do the most things for him and he will become his best friend by the end of the day. 
and 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 I admire that he's he's good at that because people love him. But you know, uh, as soon as that other person that's more important than you in the room is there, then you don't exist. Hey, Steve, that is a great take, man. Some people call that being a a great businessman. Some people yeah. call it being a user. Well, you know what? It got John on the Tonight Show. Listen, he, he said, I, I admire the fuck out of that. You don't succeed unless you have that kind of mentality, and John did. Yeah. And much respect. Did, but, but, you know, the he, he was always good at that. Like I say, he knew who was the most – he knew how to use his, his – uh, Howard he Stern. Use people. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, so he knew how to use his Howard Stern. He, he, he knew celebrity. how to use his Okay. Yeah. He you want to call it boy. using? It is using. Yeah. But maybe that's what this business is. Great fucking point. You are right on tonight here, buddy. Uh, Woo, look at me. Wee! Lance Malone's got a super sticker. Thank you, buddy. Hey, Steve Grillo, you're an awesome guest. You fucking snuck out on a bowling beating tonight. So we got to replan that uh, because I, I think it's 1 0 this guy. I beat your ass soundly last time. Oh, gave- yeah. Jesus, dude. You know what? Uh, well, because, hey, listen, you, you have always been the superior athlete and you're, <laughs> you're a competitor no matter what. And you're going to figure out a way to win. Uh, you know, I just <laughs> you thought your ass was just going to be like a regular bowler. But you have a technique. See, you know, I, you know I, I'm just more of a straight bowler. You actually don't even put your fingers in the hole, which is why you're gay. And, uh, <laughs> but you hold it and you palm it and you have a perfect curve. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I just tried. Yeah, no, you know, I, I, Casey, I didn't go in there thinking I was going to beat your ass well, because I, I know you're, you're an athlete. You had a good time. That's what we do. We, every time me and you get together. It was a good time, but we only played like a, one game and then your ADD kicked in and we had to leave. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what happened. Uh, <laughs> Star Mountain, uh, last word goes to Star Mountain. He's a great, uh, he's awesome. He's a guitar player. Uh, he, uh, here's the thing John was around when there were only a few staff members. Surely managed to be a player with 50 plus staff writers uh, that's that's a tribute to surely that's true uh right i mean you were gone i was gone i don't know how that happened what what say you mr grillo to star mountain well i i wasn't there all i know is that again surely has been nothing but awesome to me uh, and nothing but a good friend. Anytime I called him or whatever, he went out of his way to help me like promote whatever I was when I was there. Um, I, and he was in the, the trenches with some of the best writers in the country and he managed to survive longer than anybody else. So props to Shuli. Like, you know, he just wasn't, you know, like he, he was lucky enough to have the, the Howard 100 news and get on air and stuff like that. But, you know, his contributions behind the scenes kept him there. And that's why Shuli was so successful. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Grillo, you've, you've been right on point tonight. I appreciate it. I know you got a big day tomorrow, so I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get out of here to see if the, the cats are eating my dinner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so wait, hold on a second real quick. Um, if anybody's on my Facebook page or my Twitter page, it's uh, I'm at Grillo, uh, Steve Gorilla on X, Twitter, whatever. Um, Grillo Vader on Instagram. Somehow or another, I got myself, and then, you know, Steve Grillo on Facebook. I got myself in this weird competition of uh, if you go to Supreme Sneakerhead and vote for me, that'd be great. You could find me somewhere, but most of the links are on my uh, X page and my Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. I hate doing or asking anybody to do anything for me but vote. But it's a free vote. And um, in the second place, I have a chance to win 10 G's. And uh, more importantly, um, I get to design my own sneakers. Oh, so if you go to awesome. Yeah. So Supreme Sneakerhead on Facebook.com, whatever. Um, you can find me. I'm one of the contestants. Uh, I'm in second place. If anybody can go and vote uh, or find the link on any of my social media, uh, I'd appreciate that. That'd be cool. If I don't make it, I, you know, I don't know what I got myself into. But when you're uh, let's on let's strike and out of work, let's, let's get him to. Uh, he makes his own sneaker. He's gonna get ten. Come on, he's like one of us. The the if he wins, we all win. So let's do this, everybody. Yeah. Well, when you when you're bored and you're and you're uh, got nothing else to do, uh, all of a sudden you find yourself in online contests. So it's uh, <laughs> no, until no, I start working. Second, this, second is, place, this, is, this is this is this I'm bored. This is what I'm playing with. Awesome. Everybody, let's let's go down there and let's vote. Where where uh, where can they go? SupremeSneakerhead.com. There it is. SupremeSneakerhead.com. There's a contest. You can you can find me or just go to by my Facebook page again. Grillo Vader on Instagram. Uh, Steve oh, Gorilla on X. Just give him one thing. One thing, because they'll remember it. 
to win the contest, so, it's what again? Supreme Sneakerhead. Dot com. That's it. Steve, I love Cheers, you. Cheers, Dave. And uh, you're awesome. Uh, good luck uh, on your big gig tomorrow. And uh, everyone, uh, thank you guys for coming in, all of you. I see you. You guys are great. Tomorrow, you'll meet Natasha. I still haven't gone through my uh, Opie rant. Uh, and then uh, Thursday, you're going to see Jay Jade. Uh, no, Thursday, you're going to see um, – what's his name? Oh, God. Uh, what's what's the gentleman's name? Oh, I'm having a fucking brain fart. Larry Schwartz? Uh, n uh, him, too. Uh, but uh, the, the guy that walks around, he, he, he Dave Cushing. No, he walks around his his house. He's got headphones on. He's a handsome. I'm sorry. I, I'm I really. I'm just concerned at Brett Weir. Uh, Frank Rizzo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, Steve, I want to thank you, and I can't wait. Uh, maybe next week you come out, and we could do it. Live. No, I, next week definitely. If I'm not, dude, uh, unless they fix this strike, I'm not doing a goddamn thing. I'm trying. I, I got. I had to dig up my bartending resume, bro. Oh, you geez. know, I, like, like they keep saying it's gonna, it's gonna be fixed. It's gonna be fixed. It's been going on for four months. i like, I didn't want to commit to a job because I keep thinking it's gonna end. I want to go back to being a grip and a stagehand. And uh, oh, yeah. unless these Fran Drescher gets her shit together. Well, we're all screwed well, because I'll, if they don't fix this, you'll win this. If they don't fix it by tomorrow, we're, we're screwed until after New Year's. All right, we'll end it on this. Edward Murphy wants to say, Casey, you're the man, bro. Stern isn't the same. Miss the old days. Edward Murphy, that is a very nice thing to say. I really appreciate that. You're a good dude. And uh, I, uh, oh, and, and uh, we'll end with Leo Gunn. Why don't you read this, Mr. Steve? Top shelf liquor. <laughs> and on that, Leo Gunn, your sauce is coming. Steve, uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Love you all. Love, Love you, Chase. You. Love you, buddy. Oh. Gunga Din, I'm starving. <laughs> Gunga Din. Gunga Din, come here. You going on for a food run? Yeah, I'm up for it. All right, let me take a... Uh, <laughs> let me take a... <laughs> I'm up for it. Anybody else hungry? Sure. He should have to say, yes, Sahib. <laughs> yeah, can you call me Sahib? <laughs> sure. All right. Yes, Effendi. You don't... Uh, Effendi. <laughs> <laughs> can you call me Effendi? <clears throat> whatever you want, man. No, whatever no, you no. want, Effendi. Effendi. All right. There you go. Effendi. Effendi. Can you wear a turban? <laughs> you know what? You know what Gunga Dean wore? What? <laughs> he wore one of those little diapers. A diaper. And a turban. Loin yeah, come on, man. Why don't you get a loincloth and a, and a turban every day? All right, everywhere. Ralph, get him a turban and a loincloth for tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to see him in normal clothes. And I a want a real Gunga Dean. Garbage. Yeah, a basket. Yeah, Gunga Gotta carry Dean. the food in a basket. Yeah, and always look down. Never look at me. Yeah, like that. And a little bugle. Yeah. You have to have a little bugle. <laughs> Gunga Dean. That's how Gunga Dean saved everybody with his bugle. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> I thought Gunga Dean was just this guy who served. Well, well, he always wanted to be a soldier, though. Oh. So he got trapped with these guys, and, you know, they were going to uh, massacre the troops. So he got up on this thing and started playing his bugle. Because mm. he used to sit in the back and play the bugle. Man. Yeah. So he could be a soldier. He's a regular Branford Marsalis. <laughs> <laughs> was he bald? No. Uh, he no. had a turban. <laughs> a Durban. All right. I got you some hot water already. Oh, did you? Yeah. Fendi. You call me a Fendi. A Fendi. All right. <laughs> Here's your hot water, a Fendi. Yeah, that's how you got to talk like. Here's your hot water, a Fendi. Will you be wanting more, a Fendi? Any hot water, lady? <laughs> Look, he's stretching after he does that bad impression. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. I'll order some lunch. Can you get lunch this early, Gunga Dean? Yes. <laughs> yes, a Fendi. A Fendi. Yes, yes. A Fendi. Long. <laughs> Come on, man. What's the matter with you? He Sorry. doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. No, I'll do it. Do you don't want to get into your role? <laughs> no problem, a Fendi. Right. Yes, a Fendi. Okay, a Fendi. <laughs> if I ever get to make a movie and you're my Gunga Dean on the set, I yeah. want you to say yes, a Fendi to everything. And yes, bow. Fendi. Right, and bow all the time. And bow to my co stars. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be really impressed. <laughs> yes, Effendi. Have I offended Effendi? <laughs> I don't mean to offend you, Effendi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a uh, break. Gunga Dean. <laughs> and then I can give Gunga Dean his uh, orders. Gunga Dean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break and we'll be back right after this. You gonna get uh, yogurt and stuff for seven o'clock? Absolutely. All right. I'm just hungry. That's why. You want me to get it now? Nah. I'll wait. You wait. Mm. 
Yeah, I'll wait till seven. Seven? I should. I, I can't keep eating constantly. I have to watch my figure. Yeah, all right, seven. But yeah, like quarter of seven. <laughs> All right. All right. Six thirty-ish, quarter of seven. All right. All right. What are you ordering? I was talking to Gunga Dean about my food, my first food order of the day. What? I got that outfit for Gorilla. Oh, you do? Oh, go get it. <gasps> go get it. Go get it. <laughs> hey, Gunga Dean. Oh, no. I got a turban and a whole. Uh... Gunga Dean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh no. Oh, oh. I was afraid of this. <laughs> Just try it on. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Have him go out and get the food order show. with him. Yeah, and then uh, take the camera, follow him, and get the food order. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes, no. yes, 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 no, yes, yes, no. yes. You've been complaining about the heat. This is a cool <laughs> outfit. Oh, I didn't complain at all. <laughs> no, come on. All right, put, the, put your turban on. I refuse come to. Come on. You Don't be no a pussy. Fun. Go ahead. Take your, you want to be in show business or not? I'm not going to have you on a movie set if you're uptight. Now get off your, get off your headphones. This is a movie set outfit. It's because uh, David Letterman has one of these guys. Just kidding. Oh, does that look good on you? Oh, oh Gunga it Dean. It's a perfect fit. It hurts. He's worried it's about his hair's going to fall it out. Oh, it hurts. It's My, a rough hat. It hurts. It hurts. You'll get used to it. Oh, All right. You don't need headphones. Take off those break headphones. It in. Gotta I got it in. here. I got it. No, you don't. I'll tell you what happens. Robin says something important. I'll let you know. Yeah, he wants to hear sandals. all the. Ears. All right, put on those sandals. Well, he's got to take a shirt off. Yeah. yeah because yeah. I, I got like we got to put a. What do you got on. over there? Like a, you know, like a little wrappy for the bottom. But it's I got a wrap. I got to pin it on him and stuff. So. Yeah, let's see. Oof. What is he making him a skirt? <laughs> hey, he's in pretty good shape, Robin. Good shape. Oh, he was showing she's me yesterday. <laughs> hey, she's got a really nice body. Mm, Gunga a, little, a little hairy, but. <laughs> Sucks. Oh, just oh, put it on. You are such a little baby. Gunga Dean's a baby. Gunga Dean. Gunga Dean was brave. Yeah. All right, now put on his little serape. <laughs> you have to take your pants off. <laughs> yeah, take off your pants, will you? <laughs> Come on, what's the big deal? Are you wearing underwear? <laughs> yeah, he's I got boxers on. Hey, in front of Ralph. Oh, 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 come on. Did you ever go to a locker room? Jack what's the matter with you? Jack Jack please. Mm. You were a wrestler. Give you us a break. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Close up your boxer shorts. <laughs> I just saw your meads. <laughs> hey, look, he looks like Gunga Dean already. You're taking yeah, on a whole new persona. <laughs> you look better like that. You know you look bad in your regular clothes? <laughs> <laughs> All right, wrap him up in a... Hey, man, hold that up there. All right. Oh, good. Took like a diaper. <laughs> I'm not going outside. Like yes, you so. are. Yes, you are. Do you have training pants with that? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think he's carrying a load. <laughs> hey, Ralph, you do that good. Yeah. I think Ralph has worn this outfit penis. before. Yeah, you wish. No, he didn't. A little homo. A little homo. <laughs> Look at that. That Perfect. looks terrific. Perfect. Tuck his wow. shorts up underneath the diaper yeah. so you how don't see How did Ralph the... know how to do that? He probably worked it out last night. He probably's worn it. Headphones off. Here we got bees. Some money. <laughs> Take the headphones off for me. Go ahead. I want money. I put it off. Uh, you ain't getting no money. You're always looking for money, yeah, you man. You cheap bastard. Go ahead. Let me see. Oh, it's Gandhi. <laughs> yeah, it's good like that. Gorilla's in a Gunga Dean outfit. He's got a turban, a Move diaper. Right. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> Happy. Gunga Dean, I need. Uh, it's bad enough. I gotta get your food. You gotta do this to me. <laughs> I think Gunga Dean blew a bugle, didn't he? Yes, stand in the hall and blow the bugle. bugle. You got a little plastic bugle? He can blow the bugle when he has some uh, food in the hall. <laughs> yeah, you can blow the bugle so I know my food's coming. I'm sure we can find something. <laughs> this isn't fair, man. Hey, it sure it is. <laughs> it sucks. All right. Oh, I'm trying come to... on. Everybody will like that. Well, you're a college boy. I'm trying to teach you a, a, a lesson. Life sucks. This is acting. Your role. I know that already. Gunga Dean, what I need is. Uh, <laughs> A uh, yogurt, raisins. <laughs> if you haven't had your assistant on the movie, you'll have to have him. He's going to be it. As long like as he that. wears that, he's in. <laughs> Look at that. That looks cool. Imagine him running around the movie oh, like that. Man. Oh, I could just imagine him running You're hired, the street man. like that. He's hired. I got to see him pick up food like that. Oh, boy. You're hired, man. You know how funny that'll be on the movie set? <laughs> It'll be comic relief for you anytime you get intense. Yeah. I'll be like, Gunga Dean. Right, let's get this movie going already, man. Water. <laughs> this is fun. You can make me do this for a long time. Gunga Dean. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Go uh, let the camera follow you when you go to the store just as Gunga Dean. Go ahead. Come on, I see people every day. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, come on, Gorilla, it's Halloween. Come on, come on fix it. go pin him up, Ralph, and take yeah, his clothes I'll away so he, so he doesn't rely on his old clothes. I don't want you to rely on your old clothes. <laughs> no, don't take my clothes away. Yeah, of course we I got are. money in there. So what? So, so who's going to I'll take it. the money. How much could you have? Not much, but... $2. <laughs> yeah, I got money in there. We'll reimburse you. <laughs> it's $2 It's all it. I had in the world. Gunga Dean, go ahead. Go ahead and have a good time. I know, I love that tension. 
He looks good in his turban, you got to admit. Mm. <laughs> a lot of guys can't carry it off. Can I just wear sunglasses? <laughs> No, you should, I try to look you should like paint uh, brown stains on the back of his diaper. Oh. Oh. I'll put some, I got some chocolate fudge back there. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Alright, Gunga Dean, go ahead. Gunga Dean, hurry! Go ahead. Come on, Gunga Dean, put that back on. I want my clothes. <laughs> Ralph, give me the clothes. I gotta I got pin you up, man. Just I hang there. You have to, man. That's what Howard just said. Yeah, but I'm not sitting in my underwear all day. Girl. What? Have, um, I hate to bother you while you're being young and dead, but have, did you call John? Oh, no. Hold on, man. I'll go get a pin. What are you doing? I, dude, I'm not. I, I got work to do. Yeah, you could work in a diaper. No, I could work in my jeans. Okay. Steve, you look great. Oh, stop. <laughs> you look great. You gotta go to the store that way. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. Don't put your jeans on. I'll put it back on, you, got, you, you, you have to go to the store that way. What? You gotta go to the store that way. You're really funny. Alright, but I don't want to walk around in my underwear all day. No, I don't want you walking around your underwear either. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Look at that. You wish you had that stomach, man. Yeah. So what didn't you like about the outfit? The hat hurts. Was it too tight? Yeah, no, it, it's kind of rough on the forehead. Steve, I'll, I'll put it on when I go out. But you should just leave it on. Otherwise, he's just gonna. If you just I, I, I'm not being a bad sport about it. I just. But if you it just if you John, don't, it's pretty late. I left him a message. All right, bye. I'm saying. I, I, I'm the, not being a bad guy. Listen to me. It. Leave the whole outfit on. Because if you do, it'll just go away. And if you resist, it's just going to be the whole no, morning. No, but I, 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 what did I, did I do something bad? Yeah, you should have left the outfit on. Oh, no, I, I, Gary, I'm just saying, I got, I got to do the news and stuff. I got to sit around and do the news in my underwear. That's the joke. That's the joke. Uh, if they want me to go down to the store. That's, that's the, no, they want you to wear the outfit the whole morning. Howard told me to come out here, Howard told me to come out here and deal with you. I'm, I'm telling him I'm not being a bad sport about it. I just, how am I going to sit around and do news and I run around? You could, if you can sit around like that, you can sit around with the, with the Serapi on. I got my underwear on. So? Time to change again. What's the big deal? <laughs> okay, Genj. What's the big deal, man? Just put the stupid thing on. You going to go down to the store like that? Do I have much of a choice? <laughs> I will be hosting the Hawaiian Tropic Beauty Contest next Thursday at Faces in Brooklyn. Don't worry, that part will be edited out. Thank you. Where's Rel? Come on, you have nice you have nice beads and everything. Look how nice they are. I know. I, I, nice I, I don't feel like like going around the office all day in like a serapi. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know what that was called until two minutes ago. Shut up. <laughs> Serapi. <laughs> Let me see it. It's kind of loose. I got like I don't have. Is it just on. like? Is it just like a? It's just like a bed sheet you almost made, right? Yeah, it's not a big deal. I just don't feel comfortable walking around in my underwear. Um, <laughs> you're making me wear this stupid outfit. <laughs> so what? I know, I just, I, I got like my underwear on. I don't feel like sitting around. They want me to wear it like all day. It's not, I mean, it's only gonna last for a day. I know, it's not like, that's, I, I just don't feel like walking around when like everybody comes in in my underwear. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, but you have like a little like thing to wrap around. Yeah, and my underwear like sort of stick out. <laughs> Take your underwear off. <laughs> so what's, so, so they want you to wear it? Yeah, I don't care. They want me to go down to the store, so I'll just go down do it, to the store. Do it. I will. Trust me, you know, is it worth the fucking fight? No, but I, I don't care about it. I said I'd do it. I'm not, like, fighting it. How, how was Fred's band? No one went. You didn't go? Nobody went. Richard didn't call me. Yeah, but he, he said, if I don't call you, that means that uh, I'm going golfing. Yeah, but he went golfing, but he didn't go. I mean, he said he was going. Oh, really? What's going on? I don't know why you would really care. Hey Ralph, you want to give him a hand? Are you going to put it on now? Oh, if he's not going to say nothing. Did he tell him what that was? Hey, everybody. What's up, Jack? So, so, 
Amen. Turn around. Uh-huh. Come on, no, no. Put, just Come on, put man. it on. I really don't want to sit in this fucking thing. Just put it on. Right? Just put it here. T- t- take this and tuck it, tuck it into your the top of your boxers. I do it, but I know you're a little uptight. People touch you. Gay. Oh man, spread them. Work with me here. Work with me. Is it comfortable, man? No. Look, look, it looks like you got a big dick. No, don't, don't smash it, man. Leave it out. Ralph, what would happen if you like unfolded one more thing there and made it a little longer? It would, be, it would be more like a skirt. Why you don't think it looks good like that? Turn it. You just keep turning. <laughs> Who who came around the other time? What Gary's talking about? Are you listening? The guy John Dockery. Who is he? Fucking asshole. Who is he? Some fucking dick used to hang with like that. Is he that lawyer guy? Yeah. I always hated him. What? Fucking asshole. Some weird sleaze bag. Yeah. Okay. Now take your. Like tuck him up higher because you're gonna fall down. Whatever. Turn around. Ref, why don't you just cut them? No. Cut his shorts, man. That's not nice. Oh, Rochester. Yes, you're on the air. Honestly, that is fucking annoying. Okay, but. Ralph, did you buy, buy that? Yeah, but you know what's really weird? Like, we tried to get, like, uh... Go to an actual Indian shop to get one. This is an actual... This is, like, a, from a costume shop. Right. Did we, like, called some Indian shops, and they said, uh, we have them, but we're out of them right now. And then we asked, like, some cab drivers, and they were real evasive. Like, nobody... They're, like, afraid, I think, that you're going to buy this stuff and goof on it. Well, like, you know, what? and what are you doing? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's it's weird, you know? They're very protective. It's their religion. I don't know if it's religion. Is your hair going to be three different colors when it grows out? Maybe. Don't worry about my hair right now. Let's see if that's more, a bit more comfortable. Yeah, it's a little This material's on my forehead, and it sucks. The, what, this right here? Yeah. Kind of. Trying to make you comfortable here, man. Trying to work. It's better not forget the diaper. That's good. I gotta do things. Get up. Hold on, man. Get back here. There's Robin. Will, Robin, a waiter cup. She'll be happy. Where you go, man? I gotta get. Drunk Dean. He's supposed to call me a Fendi. Yeah. That's right. He always screws that up. He wants to be in the movies, but. Gunga Dean. Can't remember his line. Did you do something bad? Nah, it's just fun. <laughs> You're just Gunga Dean. You look terrific, man. Look, you got your diaper on. Now it's all put together. Ralph Pena. Yeah. yeah. Gorilla today is wearing because he's going to Dean. He's got his Gunga Dean outfit on. He's got a diaper, beads, and a turban. But you know what? He won't leave it on. Like why? He just puts it on when he comes in here or when he walks by. Well, if there's no dressed. camera on me, what's, why do I have to have it on? Just wear it. Funny. You're going down to get my food now, aren't you? Unfortunately. Yeah. So we could be wearing Gunga Dean outfit. <laughs> You say, yes, Effendi. After everything, yes, Effendi. Or just after every sentence, Effendi. Can you remember that? Think of it as a movie role. And no bowing. He's, He's got to do that. Yeah, come on, get into it. You're Gunga Dean. Have fun with it. And you say you were in a movie or something? You, you want to be an in... actor. What kind of actor are you? Uh, <laughs> a tense one. <laughs> when he gets tense, he like, he starts like, he, 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 go, he goes like, so stretching, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gets all nervous. It's not easy to walk around in this. Why? It's like Why? a bathing suit. You're acting. You're not in your uh, role. This I is what your problem you're saying. You're Gunga like Dean. It's not like you're fat or anything. What do you care? Yeah, what do you care? Ralph walked around in a dress. Yeah, Ralph paid off a bet. But he liked it. So what? You're Gunga Dean. 
Gunga Dean, can you go get my food now? I Gunga guess. Dean! Gunga Dean! Do you want a bell or something? I got a uh, big Water. bell you can read. I think clapping is what they do. Yeah, that's probably better. A gong would be nice. <laughs> yeah, ding. <laughs> you know what to do, Gunga Dean? You need money? Yeah. There you go. There you go. You, you know have, what he needs? You should a have him barter. <laughs> yeah, he should barter with something. Yes, offended. <laughs> Womp him. Take his beads and trade the guy beads for yogurt. Will you take these beads? Here's my beads. Hey, Ben, do you need more than 10? You want something for yourself? Yeah. All right, get something yes, for yourself. He wants yeah. a new set of clothes. Want a rope to hang yourself? Yes, Effendi. Why don't you say yes, Effendi? Yes, Effendi. Oh. Yeah, yeah, always say Effendi <laughs> after everything. Effendi. Every sentence is Effendi. Yes. No matter what. He's supposed to be Effendi. really humble as Gunga Dean. Yeah, Gunga Dean. He's smug. <laughs> yeah, he's uptight. Are you uptight, Gunga Dean? It's not easy walking around in this, man. Gunga, De Gunga Dean, you're supposed to say, it's not easy walking around in this, Effendi. Uh, Effendi. And yeah, come bow on. after Effendi. you say everything. Yeah, look down. <laughs> oh, look at him. Don't do you anything. get into his role. Keep tap dancing on a landmine. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Effendi. Effendi. <laughs> Right. That's what you gotta oh. say. No, you just gotta keep saying Effendi. That's your role. Look, here's how you bow. No, show him. Keep tap dancing on a landmine, Effendi. Right. <laughs> I am sorry, Effendi. Yeah, you wanna be an actor. This is a great <laughs> thing. But he can't even time. handle this. He's all nervous and red, all sweating. The camera's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just remember to say Effendi. That's your line. <laughs> Effendi. He's so red. I know. Great. All right, you're gonna go down now and buy the food, uh, Gunga Dean? <laughs> Yes, Effendi. <laughs> yes, Effendi. <laughs> all right, very good. Together, Ralph, take back. a hike, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Ralph. <sighs> Ralph made sure to get that diaper just right. Yes. Good right. work. All right, go buy yogurt, Gunga Dean. Yes, Effendi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> you're you're going to lose this role. This is a I'm going to give it to Ganji. Bring <laughs> water. Ganji did. <laughs> We get gay rich in that diaper. Uh, I don't think he'd have a problem. He'd love it. Yes. <laughs> yes, I win. Yes, Effendi. Yeah. Well, you know what, Ralph? Try and get some, like, olive kind of skin tone makeup so we can paint them olive. You Just want a red face. dot? Yeah, so he looks like an Indian. <laughs> Gunga Dean brought me my yogurt and my raisins. I want to ask him oh. what happened when he went into the deli. Bring water. Bring water, Gunga Dean. Bring water. Gunga Dean, what happened when you walked into the deli dressed as Gunga Dean? Everybody laughed. <laughs> they did. They were laughing at you. Put a red dot on your head and see if Ralph can make you an olive color. And get a rubber snake and see if you can walk around with a rubber snake and a little basket and a flute. Yeah. You ever see those guys that got like a snake in a basket? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, play it up a little. Will you get into it? What's the matter with you? Nothing offended. Nothing offended, right. Yeah. <laughs> no bow yet. He's come on. Get into it. Into yeah, it. Come on. All right. Very good. <laughs> Yeah. So you walked into the deli and everyone was like, oh my god, look at this. I just went behind the counter and got my stuff and left. <laughs> I see. All right, very good. I'll have to okay. see that on the e-show. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Soon you're going to be, you're welcome, Effendi. Come on. Come on, get, in, well, get on mic and say, welcome, you're welcome, Effendi. You're welcome, Effendi. All right. Soon you'll be riding a camel. I feel like I did something bad to you and I have to repay you. What, what's the matter with you? You're my, I, I just you're <laughs> Is that how I feel? Gary, get a water bucket and let Gunga Dean feed people water as they walk by in pictures. <laughs> and all up and down the hall, we'll hear yeah. Gunga Dean, water. Gunga Dean, water. <laughs> you should like leave the room like bowing and stuff. You know those guys like bow out the yeah, room. Yeah, bow out without ever yeah. turning Exit your back backwards. on your mask. Practice doing that. Go ahead. Look at him. He's the worst. Now come on. No, commit. Uh, come back here. You didn't do it right. <clears throat> Show him how to bow out backwards, Ralph. That's right, that's there that's you that's go. And then, and then you stand up when you get out the door, not till you get... Right, until a boss's eyes are avo averted. Gorilla, let me see you do that. Leave Bow out of a room. Out there. Leave he the knows how to down. do it. Leave your yogurt down and get... get yeah, yeah, that's it. Good morning, Effendi. Right, there you go. 
<laughs> he ain't getting into the part. You needed to be in the costume. Uh, gorilla, uh, our intern Gorilla, who is in charge of getting me my food throughout the show, I have re renamed Gunga Dean. <laughs> and uh, he is in a uh, diaper this morning with beads and a red dot on his head. And we try to give you uh, olive skin, but... Uh, uh, least, Ralph made me to a Martian. Ralph made you green. Yeah, I didn't think you wanted him green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you look a little more Indian in the green skin. And you uh, have a big turban on your head. Very nice. Very yeah. good. And where's your sandals? Show, show everyone your sandals. Look at that. There they are. <laughs> Offendi is not offended. Very nice. Is there a statute of limitations on this outfit? Oh, why, man? People are going to want to hire you for appearances as Gunga Dean? Offendi. You know, he keeps saying, I want to get money. I want to get money. So here, now you're interesting. You run around in a Gunga Dean. You should, you should wear this 24 hours a day. People who run Manhattan would start to notice you. <laughs> it's not a bad look for you. Right, Ralph? Great. What? Chicks love it. Do, do you not like it? Do you want me to do them darker? Like more tan? Yeah, more tan. He's a little too green. Take okay. him back yeah, in the uh, room. Ralph said that olive is a color, and he didn't know that there are olive-colored skinned people. You know how you were looking for a... Nice try, Robin. You know how you were looking for a publicity photo? Um, That was a long time ago. Yeah, well, like this. Maybe we'll put you up on an elephant <laughs> and, and make a publicity <laughs> photo for Gunga Dean. With a big sword on his side. and Yeah. Sword. <laughs> I don't know why sword. Gunga Dean did he? I trumpet. Yes, yeah, no, Snake I, bass. You carry one of those? What is funny about a sword? Ralph, Ralph get out of here. It's part Just of the costume. <laughs> Could you tell him that there there is a term olive colored skin? Yeah, olive colored skin. That's a term. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not what you pointed out to me. It's not black. It's an a Indian Asian people. They're called olive colored people. I don't. I don't mind the green. I thought the green looked funny. Sort of Herman Monsterish. But he thought me. you. He didn't know what you I were know going what he, for. I know what he meant. I was no I idea. I didn't know what he meant. I'm a makeup artist, right, don't be. Right, right. What do right. you know? He comes in and says, Olive is green, Robin. With your fake hair. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> olive is green. He doesn't know what olive means. Olive skin <laughs> people, like, I'm considered olive. See? It's a tone. It's a, it's a tone. tone that's a not distinct. green. It's a gr Olives are green. It's a greenish tone. All right, let's take him back and doll him up, will you? You want him darker. No, nah, it's a little it's bit darker. Funny like that. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Very good. Don't spend like too much time on it. Where's his water pail? I, I couldn't find a pail. Yeah, you can't find so a pail? He's got a, like a little kind of bucket he can fill up with water and hand it out in cups. Yeah, yeah. D dip it yeah, in. Let him walk around and everyone go, Gunga Dean! Gunga Dean! Gunga Dean! Water! Gunga Dean! Bring water! Bring water! <laughs> 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 All right, don't flip me the bird, Gunga Dean. That's not... You have offended me. Uh, up yours, what Gunga Dean would do. <laughs> you know, I think he has a problem because he's like he's back there drinking and stuff. Are you drinking? I had yeah. a beer. Why? You had oh. a beer? Why? Are you, are you stressed out? Really? <laughs> are you all stressed out? Yeah, I'm a little humiliated. You shouldn't turn to alcohol. Wow. Man. Well, that's how his family deals yeah. with stuff. Yeah. Come on, back off. <laughs> back off. I'm a distress, Vandy. <laughs> Ooh. This well, is I figured silly. I didn't. Is that what your mom does when she gets all upset? She has a beer. No, when she's upset, she goes for the vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Beers when she wants to be happy and have yeah. fun. Right. I'll never forget one time I I did something really bad, and she, she opened up the closet, brought a gallon of vodka, put it on the table. <laughs> Look what you made me do! Yeah, <laughs> you. She, 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 she poured like a half a cup of vodka to drop an orange juice. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Instead of hitting them, she... <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You made her do it. Oh, she was shaking. Yeah. Well, we made you drink a beer. What is it? Kanji said they were videotaping Gorilla while he was drinking the beer, mm. and they wanted to take the beer just so they could take the label off, I yeah. guess, you know, for whatever legal reasons. Yeah, I never understand that. Why can't on TV, why can't you show a beer? I have no idea, but Gorilla wouldn't give up the beer. I guess he thought that if he gave it, he wouldn't get it back. Yeah. No, I, I, was like, I, I was gonna call it the, call it the, the uh... Gant said he was, like, holding on to it. He wouldn't let go. Like a baby with his bottle. Yep. <laughs> it's my nipple. Alright, alright, go ahead. Ah. Go ahead, Gunga Dean. Drunk it in. Dr <laughs> Do you know how to leave a room, don't you? <laughs> Say yes, Effendi. Yes, Effendi. Yes, Effendi. All right, go ahead. No, no. Oh. Don't wave. He's supposed to bow out. He thinks he's Abbott and Costello. <laughs> he's walking around in sandals and a diaper and a turban. And green skin. <laughs> and that stupid red dot that nobody knows what it means. I've been drinking beer, too. Oh, I got Gorillo dressed as Gunga Dean today. He's downstairs now, right at the deli. Now it's rush hour. It's, you know, done. Oh, and it's, is it time to get your lunch? He's down there getting my lunch in a diaper. There's a big dot in his head in the turban. <laughs> and sandals. Green skin. And Ralph darkened up his skin a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like Gunga Dean.
Here is your lunch, Effendi. Thank you. You are wearing a diaper today and green makeup. Very good. You stooped me to an all-time low. Really? Yeah. You stooped me to an all-time low. Worse than low. shaving your head? It's right there. Yeah. Right. Except I don't, get, I don't get no cash. <laughs> I don't get no cash. Uh, well, it's great living in New York because not one person takes a double look take. <laughs> really? No, 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 no. No one lifted a head. You went out there on the street. Yeah, walked to the deli, yeah. walked right in, got your lunch, walked right out, and right. not one person looked at me twice. All right, well, there you go. So then what are you upset about? The gorilla's in charge of my lunch. Yeah. You know, gorilla wants to help me on my movie. He wants, he wants to, to be your personal assistant on the movie. But he is inarticulate. He can't articulate my needs. I want Gary in charge of my lunch. Gorilla, let me ask you something. What did you tell the guy? Tell, uh, pretend I'm the guy at the uh, restaurant. What did you tell him? I said I would like steamed rice with steamed vegetables and grilled chicken. And I said, can you steam the chicken? He said, yeah. I said, fine, then steam the chicken. All right, look. This rice is covered in butter. I told, I didn't tell, I told him just steam it. I said nothing. I said, what, no Why grease? can't the guy, you, I think when you go down there, you can't communicate with people. Well, this I'm is the second you. time, though. I'm telling, this is a different place. A different place? Yeah. So this is two places you can't communicate in. Do you keep your brain in a pail? Or is it installed in your head? Are you sure you're not just I, checking the rice yourself? I told him nothing. I said no grease, no nothing. It's I just want to steam. covered in butter. I can't eat this. I'm trying to lose weight. If I eat this, you know, this is a hundred pounds. It's covered in butter. I, I, I told him. I, I said nothing. From now on, Gary has to go with you. Evidently, you can't communicate. Were you daydreaming about Tawny Katane? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Why do you keep switching places? Because none the of them get place... right. I don't understand why they can't do it, Robin. Robin, you saw this. It's covered in butter, right? Yeah. It's globs of butter. Well, I don't know if it's globs, but there's definitely butter on the rice. How do they make it? Can't you just... St I go, go home and Sometimes steam rice. Sometimes they boil rice, and in order to keep it separate, they add oil. Some places add butter because it flavors the rice. Yeah, I don't want and any flavor. people come back for more because they like the rice. You got to say to the guy like this. Can you, I told you to grill the chicken without anything on it. No oil, no butter, no I, nothing. I said that several And you did even times. better. This is steamed. This is beautiful. Yeah. Vegetables are beautiful. Steamed. But the rice, tell the guy, just boil rice and then stick it in a pail. Yeah, he can't take it from that trough he sets up for everybody else. Boil some rice and don't do anything to it and put it in a bowl. I would buy lunch from anyone who could make that for me every day. I want to I pay money for lunch. I can't get the lunch I want, <laughs> and my assistant, Steve Garillo, cannot make it happen. I want you to taste the food. Well, I don't want. I want you to stand there while he cooks it. Yes, that tell I him, do. Bring me the rice. Let me taste it. My lunch is the, you know you know Gary. My lunch is the most important thing to me all day. I, I don't even care if the whole office blows up. <laughs> I just want to eat a lunch with no grease in it. I'm trying to stay thin. Who wants to eat butter? <laughs> my lunch is a top priority. In fact, you Gary was funny. hired to get my lunch. He pawns it off on other people. I never pawned it you off. You are on now it. in charge of my lunch. That's fine. Tomorrow I am having lunch and you are in charge. That's I don't fine. want. Gorilla is off the case. He's off the he's case. He's given. He's been given twenty shots already. You now have a chance. Ugh, Gorilla, you just got fired. Then he got me uh, steamed chicken the other day with uh, hairs in it. <laughs> oh. I, well, that he can't be responsible for. I don't know. It looked like his hair. I know. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, lunchtime is a red alert. Okay. Uh -huh. Meaning you're in charge. You're the man. I understand. You're going to go down to the guy. You're going to discuss it with him. Hello. All right, Whatever seriously. You want. You're in charge of lunch. That's okay. all. That's what I hired you for, for lunch. When I met him at NBC, I said, I need a guy to grab me lunch. Can you do that? And I did. I did it well for you. Yeah, so what happened? Why are you promoted? You said, I never promoted you. You said you didn't want me to have to leave the show to get lunch. You said have one Now of you can leave. It seemed like, it seemed like an easy Gorilla task. will do whatever it, it is yeah. you do, if, and then you go get lunch. Uh, you get Newsday, and I'll go get the food. Right. Can I bring a camera down with me next time? A what? A camera. A camera? To make sure that I, that I, I, I will... You're not going another time. All right. Gary is in charge of no my problem. lunch. You've been given enough chances. Now you'll get butter on your Newsday. Yeah.
Maybe you should go with Gary, see how he does. You want to go with Gary? Yeah, I'll bring him to the guy. And right, Gary can tell right. it to the guy. All right, we'll go to tomorrow. We'll go together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I How's swear that? to God, I, mean, I that told doesn't the guy work out. Whatever Gary does while you go for lunch, you'll do now, and Gary will go for lunch. So, Gorilla, you'll cure cancer, and Gary will get the food. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. I got. I got it. Listen, the butter is killing me. I'm I putting understand. On weight. That. I can't I, put on weight. I have a. Um, I have a public to impress. He has a, a role to play in a big I'm, movie. I'm tried. I'm in training. What's the matter? With you? <laughs> there was a stove here. I cook it myself. Well, hey, well, you know, there's an idea. Yeah. That's gold. Just two of you get out of here. Heckle yeah. and check. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's gold. Gorilla once again failing me. I don't understand why I can't communicate this problem to the man. I tried. I tried. I tried. <laughs> he just doesn't understand me. What can I say? So he's deemed the vegetables, no hair. <laughs> Easy on the hair. Easy on the hair, maybe a little hair. Um, yesterday it was a little problem with the rice. I don't know, the rice is a little greasy. You didn't steam the rice today. You steam got the it. rice with everything else. You got it. I don't, like I said yesterday, no grease. You no got nothing. it. Steam chicken, steam rice with a lot of broccoli, tell a lot of carrots. Tell how what I'm sorting, you got it today. Okay. Okay, fellas. Uh, Louis? Yeah. Tell him no if we... Even right? smart scared to tell him. So that, that chicken is not raw, right? No. Okay. There you are, partner. Alright, take care, guys. Right. Thanks a lot.
Ban Mr. Blood Clot. Well, never mind, you can't ban him. I'm just not gonna read it. Oh. Now you can ban Mr. Blood Clot. If I see more trolling, it's gonna go up to five years.